Meanwhile, further round. That's a move and a half, isn't it? Round the outside of the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket Porsche. And that's the EBM Giga car of Reed Harker being caught. And up to the inside, it's a big dive on the absolute Audi. The highlights of the Sepang 12 hours so far. Check this out. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff between the EBM Giga car and the absolute Audi. Just a slight nudge on the left, uh, sorry, on the, rep, on the right rear quarter. Great wheel-to-wheel -wheel duels. That's the beauty of this race. We've not got many cars in it, but the quality has just been exemplary. And there, just a short while ago, Moo diving up the inside there. A new fight on the inside of the R&B Lamborghini of uh, Bajin Long. These cars now settling into a fine rhythm here at Sepang for this 12-hour classic, which has been resuscitated and reborn for the 2023 season. Jake Sanson and Sean Hesselwood with you all the way through the coverage of this uh, great event. And it is turning into a really great event. Peter Cox battling away with the AMAC Porsche. Once he got behind the wheel, he's just been carving his way through the field fairly rapidly, actually, picking them off one at a time. Meanwhile, that was a little bit too close for comfort as far as uh, the crew at Absolute Audi were concerned. But they've always been trying to push their way further forward. That's third position so far for you quite in the Absolute Audi. So, with just a little under six hours to go, it is the AAI BMW battling away in the lead of the race with Jesse Kroon at the wheel. Reed Harker is only a second back, and that's where I'd really like to be looking. Because those two cars having a terrific duel for the lead of the race. There is the R&B Lamborghini, I do believe. This is the number four of Bao Jin Long. Going through the first hairpin, it is indeed Bao Jin Long. Ye Hong Lee and Alec Yazid, also the drivers in that race, in that particular car. Alec Yazid did a fantastic job to start. Really got himself into a prominent position and has been making steady and consistent moves throughout the race. Never anything too untoward or kamikaze or questionable or whatever you might want to call it. So, Margin Long, car number four, sixth overall, fifth in class. Still every chance of a podium, the way this race has got to continue. So still the duel very much in its infancy around the course here in Malaysia. We got to see a couple of very interesting happening out there, uh, happenings out there on the course. Some good overtakes. I'm sure we've already seen a couple of them. Good run so far for the number four of Bao Jin Long in the R&B Lamborghini, having taken over from Akiz Yassid. And still the jail not far away, only about two streets in your rear. So still, Bao Jin Long trying to get the Lamborghini of R&B racing back into consistency. They've always been tried when the invitation has fell flat on deaf ears. Track limits, second warning for Reed Harker. That is the man in second place trying to close up on Jesse Kroon. So again, that shows you not only how, Jesse, uh, not only that uh, Jesse Kroon is under intense pressure, but also that the future is safe with the young generation. They're going to have a great race of it today. But still, Bajin Long, sixth position in the R&B Lamborghini. Just chipping away at this, minute by minute. Trying to close up a little bit now on Liang Jaitong in the Craft Bamboo Mercedes. It's actually going to be touch and go as to which crew comes out in front of the other once the musical chairs of motorsports stop ringing out in the ears of everybody. Certainly a fascinating insight into what happens in Charlie's culture. They get a little bit of a band out of it.
Meanwhile, on the racetrack, that is the Ferrari, about to be shaken off by the Resurian and the resurgent Dominic Ang, who has got behind the wheel of the Viper Nisa Aston. They've got time to make up, but the Harmony Ferrari is about to get a rude awakening here. Chen Wei-An is going to have to accept the fact that Dominic Ang, a former double winner of this event, don't forget, trying to charge his way back into contention. No resistance put up in the end by the Ferrari team. Always an absolute pleasure for r &B. On the far side of the course then. And still the battles rage as Betty Chen, I believe, has come into the pits in the AAI Motorsport BMW. Indeed she has from the lead of the AM category. So she is now in pit road. She's done an admirable job in this stint of keeping the fortunes of the AAI 91 crew favorable. Still a long way to go here in Sabang. The Ferrari looks like it's actually losing a little bit of early initial velocity. Looks as though that car is bogging down a little bit in the exit of slower corners. That could be a dump of anywhere between two and three tenths of a second, but it affects the whole car. It affects the fact that we're in it. The water changes temperature because we're in it. How far in miles is the many? All these incredible questions start to uh, battle away in the mindset of the race driver as they get distracted by other things they start talking about the interesting and unique challenge of I've learned now it says we battle still raging on come through now that is the Porsche coming through out of the final turn and that is the Porsche, I believe, at Modena. As into the pits comes the FM Motorsport rocket car, the silver rocket, Chan Sai Wei. Going into the pits to join Betty Chen as we watch the Modena car. Now, let's go back down into the pits and you'll see the leading crew in the AM category, the AAI Motorsport number 91. BMW is in pit road, having been guided in there by Betty Chen. She has done a phenomenal job, in my opinion, keeping the car up in the top five and keeping it fairly close to the cars in front it's still a fascinating duel and a great run for positions continuing on here but reed harker has got into the lead i didn't see where that actually happened but now that the lead has swapped and the ebm giga racing team have got through past the aai bmw of jesse Kroon. so there is the battle on track the closest battle on track that we have at the moment and that is the absolute Audi closing in on the R&B Lamborghini of Baojin Long. Peter Cox has really hammered home the advantage as AAI Motorsport have made their pit stop. And it's now Pitti Bidambakti who has got into the car. All three drivers then have taken their turn in AAI BMW number 91. Interesting come through. This is a great little duel that's uh, cooking up here. R&B Racing, battling away to try and shake off the Be Quick Absolute Audi of Peter Cox. Peter Cox, who has been there and done it all in racing, worked his way through the junior ladder. Peter Cox, who's had so much success over the years, he's one of the most exciting of the drivers taking part in uh, this particular race and certainly one of the most recognizable of all of the names of the drivers here he won the Sabang 12 hours in class back in 2016 he was the adac gt masters champion in 2010 and he won the spa 24 hours all the way back in 1995 look at him hustling 
hustling Baojin Long, trying to force the Lamborghini driver into making a mistake. He doesn't want to ruffle feathers when he gets through. He just wants it to be the easiest overtaking move in history. And so puts Baojin Long under some pressure. That was intense, is what that was. Really exciting run. And still, Peter Cox is all over the back. He's got a better run of acceleration as Bao Jin Long now has to respect the track limits at turn six. See that car getting as wide as a Buick. Francis Jaya must also respect the track limits to avoid a turn at the Fedum. down the straight. This battle doesn't appear to be over yet. Peter Cox still all over the back of Bao Jin Long. Goes deep into the braking zone with the opening hairpin. And Vancor Lauch again. Still sweeping to try and get through. Trying to dive in for the inside line. No chance. Bao Jin Long was ready for that. No cheap overtakes today as far as they're concerned. You're going to make the overtake, you better do it properly as uh, Chen Wayan has come into the pits in the Harmony Ferrari. And look, Bao Jin Long has been instructed. He has to respect the track limits at turn six. That's the first warning. Bit of a run wide there from Bao Jin Long. Has to move across to the middle of the circuit to stop Peter Cox from getting through. And Jesse Kroon now has to respect the track limits at turn six. That's the second warning for the BMW mishap. Dating off the earth. Excellent battle continues. Here they come again. You can see, look, once more, Bao Jin Long just moves the car over to the middle of the circuit. He doesn't hug the inside, doesn't hug the outside. Just places the car in the middle of the road so that it doesn't matter where Peter Cox finds the power. He's going to be able to hold on to it, but this time he's done it too much. And that's perfect for Peter Cox. He just drives around the outside of Bao Jin Long and takes the lead in that battle. Beautifully done by Peter Cox. Just read the situation masterfully. Fifth position is now where the car resides. Meanwhile, AAI Motorsport have now brought the third car into the pits. And Jesse Kroon is now pit lane bound. So with Jesse Kroon, having dropped to third position, temporarily, of course, although that is for your mark. And the way it, the way it continues, the way the battle moves on, we can see just how intense it is further back as well. The duel going on between the BMW and the Mercedes. This is Jesse Kroon versus the Ang Tong. So Jesse Kroon, and they haven't come into the pits. It just looks as though Jesse Kroon has had a very tricky couple of laps trying to keep the car on the straight and narrow, so the BMW has actually fallen back. So a really exciting run. But Jesse Kroon and the AAI Motorsport BMW team, Jesse Kroon actually struggling. They haven't made a pit stop. I thought they had. We can see, look, Jesse Curran, I think maybe they're just burning the tyres a little bit too quickly. As Reed Harker has got through into the lead, the absolute racing Audi has got through to second place. That battle is not far away from uh, heightening up. But this is Pitti Bidambakti trying to shake off their nearest challenger. Pitti Bidambakti now, is now second position in the AAI Motorsports and category. Having allowed Francis Jar to come through. Francis Jar, of course, has not made the requisite pit stop to even up the score. Now, this is the Audi of Peter Cox having lapped the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket of Chantong. As they come through on the far side, Peter Cox and the Be Quick Absolute Racing Audi. Still with plenty of time to get back into it. It's the Craft Bamboo AMG that's up the road from them in fourth position. So Liang Jai Tong. Very good race of it. Jai 
through down the back straight once again. Great battles everywhere you look. Reed Harker currently leads the way for the EBM Giga Racing team. Yu Kwai has moved up into second position. 5.8 seconds is the deficit. But Jesse Cruen and the AAI Motorsport BMW are dropping about three seconds a lap at the moment. As Liang Jiatong is going to get that gap down quite quickly. 210.8 for the Absolute Racing Audi. 211.9 for the EBM Giga Racing car that leads the way. And a 214 consistently for Jesse Cruen as he just pushed the car as far as it can go in these current conditions. Andre Heimgartner must respect the track limits at turn 14, the number 51 car of AMAC Porsche getting its first warning in the hands of Andre Heimgartner. But the Kiwi obviously wanting to go out there and stretch his legs. So what is the situation for the AAI motorsport team? What is it that Jesse Kroon is not managing to find in the car? that's dropping him back in terms of raw pace because that car has definitely seen better days as far as the raw one lap pace of the car is concerned they haven't really been able to find as strong a balance as they would like so it's definitely going to be an interesting challenge for them all as they continue to make progress in this one but the Sepang 12 hours continues with 5,044 remaining in this GT race of attrition and big challenge there is Sean Thong in the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket the 12th car in this 13 car race unfortunately the AAI Motorsport car number 90 driven at the last count by Shishi Wei is not going to go any further I'm afraid it certainly doesn't look as though it will at this time and there is the Ang Jai Tong fourth position for the Craft Bamboo team the gap was about half a minute, but it is steadily coming down. The gap's now down to 21 and a half seconds. And Peter Cox is going over two seconds a lap faster than the Craft Bamboo. So Peter Cox in the B Quick Absolute Racing Audi is catching up with everybody in the top four. But there across the line, that is the 91. This is Bitti Birambakti trying to close up on the modern Porsche of Francis Jaya. Francis Jaya leading the race in the AM category although he has not made requisite pit stop to even up things a little bit the Bidiki Berenbakti the tyre driver definitely watching the bonds of a terrific and very, very talented young American if he wants it is the AMAC Porsche Andre Heimgartner at the wheel and of course he now must respect the track limits at turn 14 he's already had his first warning on that particular incident and we've seen a couple of drivers struggling to remain within track limits it's not easy once you find yourself having to fight the front end of the car on turning having to fight the back end on weight transfer through each corner the elevation changes and the core air temperature and the humidity are definitely going to be a challenge that a lot of these teams were not able to anticipate quite so easily. They've done a lot of practice going into this weekend, but certainly none of them have done the post-battle with three or four other drivers where there's a chance to potentially pick up some pace on raw carrots towards the end. There's the Ferrari out in front of the Porsche. So this is the Harmony Racing Ferrari of Wu Ruwa that is obviously now trying to make up for lost time. Andre Hangartner in the AMEC Porsche is actually behind them, which uh, is very indicative of how tough it's been for the Harmony Ferrari team because that's the AMEC Motorsport of Andre Hangartner running in ninth and the car in front of him is the car running in tenth. So for Andre Heimgartner, the Kiwi can be very satisfied knowing that if he manages to get past that Ferrari pretty quickly, he will be a lap ahead of his nearest opposition. Pretty solid position to be in, and you can see how hungry Andre Heimgartner is to get the job done, so he can just disappear away from Pitti Birambakti. Not just yet. Big late breaking into the hip in for Andre Heimgartner. 
trying to close in. But still the duels rage on, but the AMAC Porsche is about to lap the Harmony Ferrari. These cars are ninth and 10th. Now that looks like a driver change imminent there in the Porsche. to me as though there's going to be an opportunity for young Asman to get his run. This is his first GT race, don't forget. This is a nice situation for him to be in. Right, Reed Harker must respect track limits at turn eight, and that is the third warning. Flirting with disaster, the EBM Giga Racing team, they are. They can't afford to lose any more time because they don't have a massive amount of distance over the absolute Audi of you quite. 3.8 seconds and they're currently losing about a second per lap to that particular car so things are about to get spicy at this point of the race by the look of things as we watch Pitti Bidambakti in the AAI BMW running in second place in the AM category trying to chase down Francis Jar in the Modena Porsche the BMWs are running fairly close proximity to each other now Jesse Cruen still looking at third and uh Pitti Bidambakti, likewise. So into the pits now, we have... Now, who is that in pit lane? That is Reed Harker, the race leader. Jesse Cruen looks like he's going to come into the pits as well, and that's fairly overdue as far as Jesse Cruen is concerned. Into the EBM Giga racing car, replacing Reed Harker comes uh, Nazim Asman. The Malaysian single-seater star now hoping to get his first proper taste of the Sepang 12 hours. He's done the qualifying, he's done the practice session. But this is where he really gets to shine. And as the shadows get longer over the Sepang International Circuit and the dusk is coming in thick and fast, you can see there the AAI motorsport car as well of Jesse Kroon. So Kroon is going to get into that car. And this all allows the absolute racing out to stretch out in front for you quite. The pit stop crew going to work here on the EBM Giga Racing car. Reed Harker having now given over the car to Nazim Asman. It'll be fascinated to see what the Malaysian can do. Is he going to be able to stay at similar sort of pace to what we saw in Val Valencia? So the pit stop race going on down there in the Sabang pit lane. I wonder how long it's going to be before Liang Jai Tong manages to come through into second position in the Craft Bamboo. There was a sizable gap between the two competitors as they came through. Now it looks as though there's been some adjustments made to the number 88 down there in the pits. I should say actually the number 15. So Jesse Kruen is going to leave the pits after Nazim Asman, who takes over the EBM Giga racing car that briefly led. But there goes the absolute Audi past the pits, and they have been lapped. But let's not panic, because Yu Kwai, the absolute Audi, also needs to make a pit stop. Also needs to pit in for tyres. Also, 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 also. There's still time to turn things around. We're still in the middle. And we'll take this away. So the absolute racing Audi of Yu Kwai has now managed to work his way back into the leaders. Out onto the circuit goes Jens Klingman in the AAI BMW number 15. Well, we should see some really feisty lap times coming in from Jens Klingman now as the competitors work their way further forward. But this is probably a good opportunity to look through the order of the field at this point. Yu Kwai driving the absolute racing Audi. He's currently a race leader, but the gap between himself and Liang Jaitong is currently at 39 seconds. Craft Bamboo in second position. Now, in the, a couple of seconds ahead of the Be Quick Absolute Racing Audi now of Peter Cox, the Dutchman, who is definitely making big strides. Then in fourth position, the R&B Lamborghini of Baljin Long in front of the EBM Giga Racing Machine of Nazim Asman and the AAI Motorsports car of Jens Klingman is going to need... The 
Oh, through the gum. And still, the time takes on. Five and a half hours to go here in Sepang. Jake Sanson and Sean Hesselwood taking you through the action all the way through this fabulous encounter. The first Sepang 12 hours since 2016. And it has been changing quite a lot. Several teams have had their turn at the lead. And speaking of several turns, this is for second place now as Peter Cox has caught and closed in on Liang Jatong in the Craft Bamboo Mercedes. He would dearly love to make it a 1-2 for the team. He's just taking his time. He's in video game mood as he tries to get alongside the Yang Jaitong to move up past the Mercedes up front. And then there was a black and white flag for the Yang Jaitong. Black and white flag for abusing truck limits at turn 6 and 14. Uh, it's got to be in response to the car behind trying to get their way through. Up to the first corner. Now here comes the dive up the inside from Peter Cox. He has to think about it. He wants to intimidate Liang Jaitong into making the mistake. And so far it doesn't come, but a black and white flag has already come for Liang Jaitong in the Craft Bamboo Mercedes for abusing track limits at both turns 6 and 14. Now, watch Peter Cox. Is he going to go left? Is he going to go right? He will dive for the inside line. He doesn't commit to the move. In fact, if anything, he bails out of it quite early. Allows Liang Jaitong to get ahead again. But now the chances creep again. It's again. Peter Cox cannot get through past Liang Jaitong in the Craft Bamboo MG car. Still, they battle away for position. Second place is up for grabs between these two cars. The R&B Lamborghini of Baojin Long. Fourth position ahead of the modern Porsche of Francis Jaya. And the EDM Giga Racing car of Nazib Azman, ahead of the second place car in the M category, the AAI BMW of Pitti Birambakti, ahead of the former GT car, NDSC Motorsport. Still, these two cars duel away for position. Watch Peter Cox. He has read every situation there is to read. He knows the book. He knows the score. He knows that just by throwing things into the rearview mirror of Liang Jaitong, the mistake could well come. Here's the chance for Peter Cox to get a better run off the hairpin. Liang Jaitong able to shut that move down before it even gets started, really. So many great comeback drives in this last hour. Many competitors that we thought were actually slowing to retire. There's the move. Took him long enough, Peter Cox. He had to read the situation quite nicely. But Liang Jaitong has been trying every trick in the book to keep him at bay, but now he's got the slipstream for the next hairpin. So Liang Jaitong now going to draw level. And so they switch positions again, but Peter Cox reads it smartly, lets him go, lets him overshoot, cuts back, and then cuts back again. And they're going to be very careful not to hit each other. Goodness me. Now Liang Jai Tong's got to run. He's going to go the long way. Peter Cox is going to place the absolute Audi there on the far side. He's going to go later on the brakes. He'll draw a little bit level. But I think Peter Cox may have got the job done once and for all. Oh, and there's a spinner. It's the Harmony Ferrari that has spun at turn 14 and kept going. But as a result of the unsettling of that particular moment, Liang Jai Tong in the Craft Bamboo Mercedes He's now dropping back behind the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket of Sean Tong. He'll get back past him fairly quickly. That just shows you how tough it's been in the mix and in the battle. Wow, we great racing. And now the absolute Audis are up to first and second places. What a sensational run and a great battle as it continues. And Sean Henshawood has rejoined me at the perfect moment. Peter Cox is in attack mode. It's looking good, isn't it? What have I missed in the last hour? This has got very interesting. I'm, I'm pleased to see that we've still got the uh, full quota of cars, less one, of course, with the number 90 entry still in pit lane, but uh, it's gotten very interesting over the last hour. What have we seen? Well, the AAI Motorsport car has come into the pits from its lead. We're still waiting to see when the absolute Audis come through, but it's been an amazing comeback charge from Peter Cox, who has essentially 
done the job he was paid to do, charged his way forward. We, uh, uh, this is a great little battle going on. A shot dog doesn't want to be lapped by the Mercedes of Yang Jiatong. Yang Jiatong in the craft bamboo is losing time hand over fist as the R&B Lamborghini is only 24 seconds back from this. So this is getting a little bit irritating for Liang Jiatong, and he's going to burn out his tyres in all of this. Um, we did have the AAI Motorsport cars leading the way in both categories, but they've made earlier pit stops than their counterparts. So we're still waiting for the modern Porsche, driven by Francis Jaya, to come in for their pit stop. And Jens Klingman actually pitted quite early. And I'm not entirely sure why they've fallen quite so far back to eighth position. I'm not entirely sure what the news is on that one, but the Ang Jiatong certainly comes into the pits uh, uh, from third position, and that was long overdue, I think. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they filter back in. They should filter in around the same sort of place as the AAI Motorsport BMW. And Jens Klingman is definitely on the comeback charge, as we've now got five and a half to go, Sean. All yours. Thank you, mate. Go and get some well-earned rest. It's going to be interesting to see how this one plays <laughs> out. It'll be interesting to see what strategy the teams play, too, as to which drivers they're going to put in in what sequence. I mean, we're only, what, five and a half hours to go, so two and a half hours into this race as to see whether... Uh, I'm sure whether that's Sandy Stuvik's helmet or not. I don't think it is. I think that uh, could be Jeffrey. No, it's likely to be Sandy Stuvik jumping behind the wheel of the 88. So this will start punching out some very, very quick laps. So that'll keep the 88 well and truly in this equation. Yang Zhou Tong has uh, done his best. Certainly came under fire from Peter Cox. Kept the team towards the front of the field. That's uh, great news. Keeps them well and truly in the fight. And of course, Craft Bamboo know this uh, level of competition backwards. They've done a lot of great endurance racing over the years. And uh, whether it's the likes of uh, Jeffrey Lee or Daryl O'Young or Frank Yu or an, any number of drivers who have driven for that stable over more than a decade in Asia, they are well versed in how to make this, this car maximise its performance and this team maximises its performance. It's the R&B Racing Lamborghini. No fin on the rear of that, so it is most certainly not a Super Trofeo. It's a Huracan GT3. It's an Evo 1. It's not updated to Evo 2 spec yet. They're not out all over the world just yet. First ones ran at Daytona earlier in the year. But it is turning in some pretty good laps and Baojin Long is a very experienced campaigner. A lot of success certainly in uh, Porsche Carrera Cup Asia over many years and uh, he will be doing what he can. Interesting that he's racing alongside uh, Wambo another driver with a lot of experience and a lot of success in Carrera Cup Asia. He actually runs the team, owns the team and be racing Lamborghini operation it's good to see the, uh, the mates together lights flashing Nazim Azman so it's not Nazi Mazman. I'm talking uh, about Dominic Ahn, who is in the number 65 Viper Nisa Racing Aston Martin Vantage GT3. I think he's probably taken that position away from the Lambo. Not just yet. As the screen, the screen clears up, yes, he has. Esmond Jafar doing a great job in the middle stint. Douglas Koo. Viper Nisa Racing team boss, local driver, spent a lot of time circulating Sepang International Circuits 5.543 kilometre 15 turn circuit. He has really done a great job. Now, Biogen Long must respect track limits at turn eight. Second warning. I think the real penalties start once you get to five abuses of track limits. So he knows he's got a couple up his sleeve. Five and a half hours to go, though, that seem want to be a little bit careful overall. Position three in class. See Kwai at the number 18. Absolute racing. Audi must be due for a pit stop very, very soon. Second place, Peter Cox in that uh, now iconic Be Quick yellow and black livery. Certainly a uh, well-recognised brand when it comes to Thailand, but stretching beyond the borders of Thailand now. And Kix has built a, a great automotive empire. And 
is building a uh, very, very impressive race team with the support of the Absolute Racing Operation, Ingo Mater and Fabian Fjord. A lot of experience from that team. As we go back to the now eighth placed 88 entry, Sandy, Sandy Stuvik at the wheel, of course the reigning Thailand Super Series champion, three-time champion in that category. Jay Fly on the back bumper, of course is reflective of Jeffrey Lee, he used to run Jay Fly on his Audi R8 LMS Cup cars, and certainly once he went across to Mercedes AMG, for which he's uh, spent a few years now, he's been out of Cup cars for a while, and out of the Audi into the Mercedes, but Jay Fly, well recognised in this part of the world. Jeffrey Lee, when he gets behind the wheel, can be one of the widest drivers in Asian motorsport, but still one of the uh, one of the quickest. He's no young man anymore. None of us are these days. So uh, he is still out there putting in some very solid laps. And to be working with the Craft Bamboo operation as now the R&B Lamborghini comes down pit lane. So. That leaves three cars now that are still yet to stop. Francis Chia on screen is one of those cars shown in position four, actually putting in a very, very solid run for three great mates that, uh, well, two of them are brothers, but three great mates that have raced together for a very long time. Wayne Shen, the other part of that equation, unfortunately no longer with us. He has uh, certainly laid a foundation for his brother, John, to, uh, to be a part of this team, Modern Motorsport, for which they've been a part for a very long time, have provided some uh, solid technical support to their Porsche 992 GT3R, different to the Cup car, of course. Driver aids and aero. Technically, performance-wise, they're very similar, but uh, aero is a big change. So these guys do a lot of driving in Porsche Carrera Cup Asia. So they are more than well versed with the performance of the, uh, the 911. It's very impressive the, uh, the distance they're actually able to gain. It was 83 minutes, I think, the very first stint for John Shen, which is very, very impressive. Now he's another of the 992 GT3 Ours. Reed Harker should still be behind the wheel. Of course, it's Nazim As Asman. I've just been uh, talking about Nazim and put Reed back behind the wheel. Reed did the previous stint. He's not long jumped out of the car. Nazim turning his first laps. Another great export from. Malaysia, driver who's done some very solid work overseas in Europe, FIA Formula 3 last season. So I would expect returning there this year. Fifth in 2020 in the uh, British Formula 3 Championship with Carlin. One in Euro Formula Open, who's fourth in 2021. Oh, this is tight. Peter Cox and uh, Andre Heimgartner. Andre Heimgartner, though, has plenty of skills, as does Peter Cox, but a much younger man in the New Zealander. Peter Cox must respect track limits at turn 14. There's been a lot of call for turn 14, also a lot of call for turn eight early in the weekend. People are exploring limits there, but no doubt during driver's briefing, I've given a uh, bit of a note that the officials would be keeping a very, very tight eye on track limits. There are warnings, there are quotas. You see the numbers pop up. Various drivers have managed to run themselves foul of that rule. Peter Cox, second warning. Baoji Long, second warning. As I stroll back through it, third warning for Reed Harker. First warning for Andre Heimgartner. So uh, a number of these drivers are chalking up X's in the wrong box they get too many X's in that tally and uh, there will be penalties. Likely stop-go penalties in pit lane. And that's not what you need with the length of the uh, 
pit in to pit out here at Sepang International Circuit. So Peter Cox will be enjoying this. The Evo 2, Audi R8, LMS GD3, run by Absolute Racing. Still holding down position number two, 51 seconds in arrears of Uquai, the race leader. Number 16 entry, Nazim Asman. They are a lap back, but the lap still needs to sort itself out. It's obviously coming down between turns 14 and 15. He will chalk up lap 71, or it's lap 70 rather, and be on lap 71. And still Francis Chia. Number 216 entry for Modern Motorsport, heading on down to turn one. Circulates. well and truly into this race. Eight hours, of course, this time round. It is, of course, known in this part of the world as the Sepang 12 hour. Eight hours for a return to competition after a seven year sabbatical. Doesn't feel like seven years, but things pass quickly because the last three or four years feels like a blur. As you cry, part of Audi's junior development program. What a great export he's been. Of course, been a past winner, 2021 in Porsche Carrera Cup Asia. That Porsche Carrera Cup comes up an awful lot for these drivers, but it's been one of the very strong one-make series. But uh, importantly, it has been the one one-make series in this part of the world that has continued during the pandemic. Most of the racing has been conducted within China. Most of the drivers have been Chinese. That's the two AAI entries running line astern a little bit further back 91 holds down position number five with pity bear and behind the wheel and uh, jens klingman is immediately behind him fighting over the same piece of turf so i'd expect that klingman may be able to make that position change pity's no slouch when it comes to uh, competition in this part of the world Alongside Carlo Van Dam, uh, Ferrari 458 in GT Asia, they were race winners. And certainly he's uh, he's dabbled in a little bit more of uh, the GT competition over recent years, but not as a uh, not as committed as he was about five or six years ago. His brother Burrett also competed in GT competition, predominantly within the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup with Absolute Racing, one make series battled with Andrew Harrianto, who of course is sharing the driving duties in the number 16 entry. Started so brilliantly off pole position. Yukoi and uh, Marcus Vickelhock will share the driving duties with the Indonesian driver. A, a big part of it is now Francis Chia, the last one. No, he's not. The two Audis are still running. So still uh, two more cars to complete their second stop. That'll be Christian Chia. Francis's brother has wandered out. Well, it's certainly not John. John will be recovering after that epic opening stint that he put in. 83 minutes for him. And uh, Francis has done a fabulous job to keep the car in the mix. Still on the lead lap. Well, they were up until their pit stop. Position number three. A brilliant effort by the experienced Modena Motorsport team. John sported that look on the car for a couple of years now. The fiery flaming skull as one of the Audis has come down pit lane. That is the race leader, Yu Kwai, jumps in. I just missed the race suit, but I've got a funny feeling that will be Marcus Winklehock. Hongsik John from uh, Hankook Motorsport, just in the background. See him walking down pit lane. He's an icon in this part of the world. It was Hankook the control tyre for this weekend. Ten sets of slicks from qualifying through to the end of the race. We're running the medium compound F200 C53 compound this weekend as the second of the entries comes in. They've got their own crew. It's not a matter of sharing a rig and having to go through the whole process. That is Christopher Hassa. So the two factory Audi pilots are going to go out. Oh, car 88 has stopped at turn six. Oh, and continued. Okay, that's good news, but not good news. It's good news it's continued. There's uh, Christian Cheer 
heads out of pit lane. More wheel spin. So Francis light up the rears on his way out. A bit of tyre temperature in, or it could be just that the way the clutch is set up, they've really got to get off the clutch and, and onto the loud pedal. Obviously staying within uh, the speed limit. Imagine there'd be a limiter set on the car. Ensure that they don't overstep the mark. Christian will wind himself up to speed. Certainly the car's up to speed. It's warm. Tyre's probably been uh, straight out of the tyre blanket and onto the car. So he's got a little bit of work to do just to uh, get themselves back up to speed. They've shown to have dropped back to position number six. It's on their outlap. Why is out of the car. So the number 18's likely to see Marcus Winklehock. Yep, it's just changed as we've spoken. And Peter Cox's name will ch change to uh, Christopher Hasser. It's come off a uh, particularly frustrating run in the Bathurst 12 hour this year. as the 65 Viper Niza Racing Vantage GT3 comes down pit lane. Dry Heimgartner. Oh, no, he's just changed position. I was looking at a, a change in the timing board. So, Dominic, I thought, had not long got in the car. Looks like it's Douglas getting ready to jump in. So, Douglas has decided to do his run. We were talking strategy a little bit earlier. The, the gentleman drivers or the AM driver in a team has to do a minimum of 80 minutes. Douglas, I think, has done something like 45 minutes in his first stint before they made their first stop. A little bit of damage to the left front of the car, too. That's interesting. He did have a spin very early in the piece. Could also be they've picked up a little bit of excess rubber and it's just blown out the vents above the left front tyre. So it looks like the vents, the thing that's caught the damage, and if the tyres let go, or conversely, they've come in because they have had a, uh, a tyre issue not quite picked that one up. Let's see whether or not we get some uh, information, maybe from Wayron Tan, who's uh, running that team. Of course, former LMP2 mate, teammate to uh, Jasmine Jafar. But it uh, looks like a little bit of carbon damage to the left front guard of the car. But it might have been an opportune time to, uh, to bring the team in, even if Dominic had only not long got in the car to uh, get the stints over and done with for... Douglas, a little bit of damage to the sticker on the front of the car too, so that, that might just have been uh, aerodynamics have torn that off. Might not have anything to do with contact. Lights on, car's ready. Waiting for the uh, the minimum time to pass quite clearly. And Douglas Koo rejoins in the Aston. As the shadows are starting to draw very long, there goes the uh, number 18 entry down in position number four. So it is the EBM Giga Racing, Nazim Asman, on his debut in GT. The young Malaysian driver holding the race lead by 18 seconds over Jens Klingman in the number 15 AAI Motorsports BMW. There you go, some long shadows down at turn 15 from that iconic grandstand that signals very, very clearly you're, uh, you're a Sepang. You can see from the national flag, the Malaysian flag in the centre, not an awful lot of wind right at the moment. Temperatures uh, are getting quite high. Still in the uh, mid-30s. The humidity is uh, starting to climb, getting up towards 80% now, so it's, uh, it's a little stifling in the cars. The cool suit's working overtime, no doubt helmet fans and uh, dry ice in some of these cars. Although from memory, there were quite a few of the Asian drivers that uh, that opted not to use that in uh, in past seasons. Probably quite comfortable with the conditions and used to it. It's not as if uh, Malaysia is too much different. Certainly this part of the world, Thailand, very similar in, uh, in weather conditions, very hot, very muggy, very humid. And uh, if you want to go racing in this part of the world, those are the conditions you need to deal with. On screen now, that is the R&B Racing Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. Jay Hong Lee behind the wheel for his stint.
a look on board. Is that one of the drivers or is that somebody else just getting... Well, I can see Dominic Young there. Now, I don't think that would have been Jasmine Jafar, so maybe it's one of the... Uh, one of the crew looks like he's struggling just a little bit with the heat. These guys have got a lot of work to do, and, and whilst it's hard on the drivers in the car, it's also very, very hard on the teams. Andre Heimgartner now out in front of the Aston. Heimgartner's up to position number six. This might keep him on the lead lap. Yep, 61 seconds behind. It's a two-minute lap around Sepang International Circuit. At, at pace, you're looking at a 204. But uh, currently, teams are all running around the, uh, the, the top drivers are in the 209s. I say that Christopher Haas has just smashed out uh, that team's quickest lap of the race with a 20803 488 Harmony Racing entry. Ray Wu's jumped back into that, so uh, that's an interesting strategy because Ray's in his second stint, David Chen's done a stint, and we haven't seen Alex Imperatore. So I gather Alex is going to be doing a fair bit of the legwork over the final stages of this race seen him do too much just yet yeah, for the crews it's uh, it's very much hot work as part of the gmg racing operation they're not uh, too stressed about positions and, and issues as things are right now and that is part of managing a race of this length is is not pushing yourself too hard and too fast too early because there is a long way to go. We still have just over three hours left in this race. As the sun starts to set here in KL, teams are just settling into a comfortable rhythm. No need to do anything dramatic. We're watching the monitors with interest. Looks like Reed Harker. Waving at the camera. 2074 now, Marcus Winklehock. So there you have the two factory drivers for Audi punching out the fastest laps of this race. And that just goes to show what these cars are built for. They are built for endurance racing at speed. And if you've seen the last few Nürburgring 24 hour races or the, the Spa 24 hour races, GT3 competition at the top level, there is very little rest time these guys are almost on qualifying laps every single lap the the competition is very very intense it's part of the uh, fist team aai crew see the todd pity number 12 sign on the wall so it's the number that pity beer he would regularly use in his competition in uh, in gd3 the number 91 entry is on screen pity beer and at the wheel Sean Dong still uh, charging around, but on uh, on maximum pace, you're looking at uh, qualifying times, potentially two seconds difference between the GDC Porsche, which is a Carrera Cup car, and the uh, or Carrera Cup spec car, and the uh, the GD3 cars. So I'd say he won't be competing at any level at the moment with Marcus Winklehock, as Winklehock fly, fires down the inside at turn four, Douglas Koo continues to charge through. Those two Audis will be looking to try and regain their form at the front of the field. So Andre Heimgartner is in pit lane. If I just check the... Yes, he certainly is. So the 51 AMAC Porsche, the uh, very, very fast young Kiwi, has hit pit lane. Best lap for Andre's at 2.096 which is about where he qualified, which is interesting because uh, his teammate, Ben Porter, was actually quicker. Now, we're going to see Ben back behind the wheel. I would imagine so, although, that said, we'll wait and see what happens when the timing monitor updates. It might be the opportune time to, uh, to put team boss and car owner, Andrew McPherson, back behind the wheel. Probably just topping up the dry ice there to keep the, keep the driver's cool suits cool it will be hot work. Hong Sik John telling me yesterday that uh, during the practice session in the afternoon, track temperature was at 55 degrees Celsius. And you've got all that heat coming up through the floor of the car to add to the heat of the engine, to the heat of the tyres, to the 
the conditions inside the car. Now, some of these GT3 cars do have air conditioning to make conditions a little bit better. And I'd say with the stint that John Shen and Francis Chia had done, their Porsche might be one of those that does. Although, again, they've done a lot of miles around the circuits of Asia, so they may well be acclimatised to that. It was interesting just looking in that shot, you could see the uh, the tower of KLIA, or Kuala Lumpur International Airport in the background. Some of those boys have seen some miles around these circuits in recent years, even with the Clearwater Racing operation. So there's a very, very experienced crew here. There you can see it. That is the... Uh, the operations centre for uh, the airport, control tower. That's how close we are. Often if you fly into Sapung, you come in the right way and conditions are right. You can see Sapung International Circuit out the window as the plane comes into land. As Marcus Winklehock continues to fire around the circuit. Passer, a 2079 last time round. He's shown back in position number six. Winklehock already now up to position number three. 284 last lap. Fastest so far for him is a 20743. That is the fastest lap so far of the race. Surprising it's come from a factory pro driver. Also in the 207s. No, it's only Christopher Haasa. Um, 281 to uh, Jens Klingman. 2083 for uh, well it won't be Pitty Pit Bear and Barkty. I'd suggest that uh, in the 91 entry that time may well have gone to uh, Tanart Sathin, Sathin Thirical a little bit earlier in the race. Doesn't tell me what lap the quickest lap was on. Although that said, Pitty's getting around pretty quickly. In fact, his last lap, Pitty Bear and Barkty, was it 212? Yeah, it's not really a 208 pace, but he's getting probably close to the end of his stint. Viper needs a racing crew. Just biding their time, sitting comfortably. As the team boss does more laps. And the one thing the team boss will enjoy whilst he's out there is an opportunity to actually work himself into being a little bit more comfortable with the car. Done a little bit of LMP3 racing. I think maybe even a little bit of LMP2 competition in the not uh, too distant past is Douglas Koo. Certainly cut his teeth on uh, classic racing here in Malaysia. Certainly at Sapun in a uh, Datsun 240Z. This was no stock Datsun 240Z, let me tell you. It was a very, very impressive piece of kit. Cross paths with Hank Kicks too, who often did uh, a lot of that classic car racing in a Porsche 944. So Hank did a lot of uh, early miles in um, more GTC class or, or Carrera Cup car class Porsche machinery before moving across to uh, to Audi. Of course, a former class winner in GTC in the Be Quick number 26 entry when they were uh, first generation Cup cars alongside Peter Cox and Daniel Bilski, who's been a big part of the Be Quick operation over past years. And uh, Hank Kicks, already a multiple winner here, but in the uh, not outright class. This time round, he will be hoping that uh, Marcus Winklehock will uh, be able to hustle the number 18 entry, but of course he won't be hoping that Marcus Winklehock gets that across the line because it's Christopher Haasa who's driving alongside him, and currently they are in position number six, immediately behind Sandy Stuvik, who, funnily enough, is the reigning Thailand Super Series champion in one of Hank Kick's Be Quick Racing Audis. They won the championship last year, very tight into the final round, but uh, ultimately Sandy prevailed for what was his third Thailand Super Series supercar title, GT3 title. So, uh, very talented young man. This weekend, he is in the Craft Bamboo Mercedes, alongside Jeffrey Lee and Liang Chia Tong. 
as Francis Chia gets himself up to speed. Now, Francis has been pretty quick this weekend. In fact, I think he's actually been quicker than his brother Francis. Christian, I'm talking about, rather, has been quicker than his brother Francis. They are now shown in position number eight. 2.11.4 for Christian. Their fastest has been a 2.10.7, so I'd hazard a guess that that was actually Christian's lap. So the Canadian-based driver, Ray Woos, incurred the wrath of the stewards. Well, the wrath of the officials, the race director. First warning for track limits at Turn 8. Certainly that was a big one, Turn 8, during official practice. A lot of drivers getting uh, the gong for overstepping the mark there. Driver change, Andre Heimgartner to Andrew McPherson. So AMAX back in the car, and I would suggest this may well be about a 40 minute stint, depending on how the uh, the crew down there manage that. Was that the Ferrari just coming into pit lane? It looked like the silhouette of a Ferrari. As we take a look at the highlights, we're going to be racing Lamborghini. We're doing a fantastic job. Bowser Long ran a uh, pretty long stint. David Chen was turning in some good laps. Jasmine Jafar had taken over the uh, Vibonese Racing Aston Mark from Douglas Koo, who started the car. And it was this great battle, too. Peter Cox in the Lamborghini. Ultimately, Cox managed to work his way past. Gaoxin Long. Driving a very wide Lamborghini, just a wiggle down there at turn four. Ultimately, Cox started to charge his way through battling there with uh, Sean Tong on the GTC. Porsche from FM Motorsport and Silver Rocket. Young Hong Kong driver, yep, that's the, uh, the shark head helmet. Blue around the, uh, the aperture at the front of the helmet. And there was a change. Reed Harker jumping out of the uh, Bamba Motorsport Giga Porsche. Handing that car across to Nazim Azman who has been doing a sterling job, currently holds the lead of the race. 80 laps in with a 16 second lead. Here's the battle with Peter Cox. Unwound just ahead of his stop. 88 entry with uh, Liang Chartong. Battling with uh, Sean Tong. He was pretty keen to uh, show what he's capable of. Got a lot of miles for GT3 car as Sean Tong. LMP, LMP racing, twos and threes of late. Very talented young driver. And a great long stint too by Francis Chia in the modern motorsport Porsche. As it has man, works his way forward in the Porsche. Andre Heimgartner battling there. Came very close with uh, Peter Cox, but ultimately managed to work his way back past. And that car, taken over by Christopher Haasa. He currently sits behind the wheel, sitting in position number six. 13 seconds back. From the car in front of him, Sandy Stubik. Stubik's about 10 seconds back now from Pini Berenbarki. Berenbarki's still doing a very, very good job. Very experienced campaigner. Let's look at the EBM Giga Porsche battling with the Harmony Racing Ferrari, which now has Alex Imperatore behind the wheel. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Things are starting to get interesting. We're seeing the uh, more qualified, should we say, drivers, the more experienced drivers. Great to see people back here in the grandstands at Sepang International Circuit. Fantastic effort by Top Speed to put this event back on get Asian motorsport firing again for season 2023. Support, of course, from Hankook and Motul. Motul have been a fantastic supporter of motorsport in this part of the world, certainly in Malaysia. Very fond of supporting their uh, their local drivers. Of course, a world-renowned brand. 
their products support a lot of these teams. Not only are they doing it with uh, product support, they're doing it with financial support of teams and uh, valuable financial support of this event. The 2023 Sapun 12 hour returning after a seven year sabbatical. Christopher Arsa, we were just talking about him. He was winner here last time out, all the way back in 17. Audi are up for a three-peat. Christopher Haas is up for what would be his third win. It's not a th three-peat for him, though. No driver will be going three straight, but certainly Audi would be looking to do just that. As the lights are now on in earnest. We will be under lights here already, I would assume, as the sun has started to set. Go down behind the uh, western horizon. Bit of a look at uh, where we are on the weather front too, just to uh, to see where that is going. Of course, that is still a concern at some level. Local time, we're uh, talking about five past seven. Humidity will be uh, close to 80%, dropping down to about 32 degrees. Yeah, there is rain in the air, I'm saying there's uh, potential for 0.1 millimetres of precipitation. That's not much, is it? I mean, this heat, there's every chance it probably wouldn't even hit the ground. Let's refresh this uh, weather map, a quick update. Well, it was potential for, ooh, okay. Just had a flash of a storm, just disappeared from the screen. No, there it is again. So, well, there is potential. Sapunk is currently south of what looks like a quite intense pocket of rain that is about to hit the KL City. We're 45 kilometres south. If I just proceed on time, it seems to have all but disappeared by uh, 8 p.m. There's another big pocket further north that is coming south. And that looks like it's actually heading out into the Strait of Malacca by about midnight. So that was the one that initially we were worried might actually travel south to the circuit. So we might actually be able to dodge this one. It might be a clear, clean race all the way through. So it's a fair prediction with five hours still to go of an eight hour race. As we have a good look at Andrew McPherson. Now, AMAC uh, has a fair pedigree in racing, certainly in more recent years. It's another one of those uh, drivers who's getting a bit long in the tooth. I don't think we might be saying that. We might. I guess I'll find out at some point. But he um, done a lot of racing of late in GT. Of course, with the, uh, the global pandemic, haven't been able to turn too many laps in uh, Asia. They do love competing north of Australia. Predominantly Australian team. Andre Heimgarten is a Kiwi, but uh, he competes in the Australian Supercars Championship. And uh, McPherson and Porter have had uh, some pretty reasonable wins in, in past years. Okay, they spent a lot of time in, in uh, GD World Challenge in 18 and 19. Actually won the AM Class Championship in 2019. Battled against a couple of very strong Japanese teams, and then took that success and uh, raced in GD World Challenge Australia and became the AM Class Champions in 2021. They've done a lot of miles in uh, Lamborghini Huracan GD3 equipment. That's the car that they won with in, uh, in those championships. But he does love his Porsches and uh, a chance to, uh, to bring the, the 992 GD3R back up to Asia and compete in the Sapun 12 hour on its return wasn't a big ask. He's always keen for that one. Loves coming up here to race. Ben's been racing alongside him for a uh, for a long time. Driver trainer by trade. Very handy man behind the wheel. And of course, they've got Andre Heimgartner as the third leg of that uh, that operation. And that's not a bad third driver to have as part of your team. I expect we'll see uh, a little bit more action from. I'm Gartner once he jumps back behind the wheel later in this stint, but at the moment, I think what we're doing is we're seeing a few of the AM drivers, the gentlemen, just tick off that minimum requirement of 80 minutes. No driver can do more than four hours. There's only one team that ran two drivers, although it turned out that the third driver in that entry may have been unwell during qualifying because uh, 
certainly during the qualifying period we didn't see we didn't see anything of um, trying to find the uh, it's the number 90 entry of uh, of Shi Wen Shi Shi Wei Shi sorry he uh, he sat that out so it looked as if that team would run only two drivers but ultimately unfortunately they've had to sideline the number 90. BMW and uh, they have not taken any further part in this uh, in this race I hope it wasn't a technical issue um, we haven't had any information from down in pit lane as to what's going on Greg Wheeler a, uh, an Australian engineer who's had uh, an awful lot of experience over many many years from prototypes at Le Mans through to supercars in Australia all sorts of GT machinery part of the Eurasia operation at one stage here in Asia, Philippines based team um, not heard from them as to what dramas they might be having but of course they still have two cars in this field, number 15 and number 91 entries are still operating, the two uh, BMW M4 GT3s which uh, are the more current spec entry I think as I'm saying that, I'm actually wrong. It's the M6 that is the current spec entry. The M4 is the uh, the car that has recently been superseded by the uh, the M6, which, which runs the twin turbo three litre straight six, as opposed to the M4's twin turbo 4.4 litre V8. Produce similar levels of performance, although the, uh, the M6 is rated much higher but that is the car that is sitting in pit lane and the only retirement so far now more than three hours into this race three hours and uh, 11 minutes the only retirement in this race so far 12 runners Nazim Azman continues to lead in the EBM Giga Racing Porsche from Marcus Winkelhock now up to position number two and just 11 seconds behind the race leader they will soon be taking that position back, I would imagine, in the number uh, 18 Absolute Racing Audi R8 LMS GT3 Evo 2. Looks like it may well be the number 91 entry. Pity Berenbakhti ultimately coming down pit lane, hitting from position number 6. It's got pity. 85 laps in the books. Last driver on the lead lap. This could well drop them down. This is their third stop, so uh, they might be just changing strategy up a little bit. And I would say, by the way, she ran around the front of the car. That's uh, Betty Chen about to jump behind the wheel. Team Boston son Chen's daughter, very accomplished and experienced driver. Plenty of miles in these cars. A lot of uh, great mentors in her time, certainly in the BMWs. I'm not sure whether she did much mileage in the team's McLarens back in the day. She's probably a little bit too young for that. Certainly Jun Sun did. That is the diminutive figure of Betty Chen. Big B on the side of the helmet. About to jump behind the wheel. She was uh, qualifying to the 208s. She wasn't too far behind her teammates and that contributed to them qualifying on uh... well ultimately we'll go back to the qualifying results. qualified in position number nine a little bit further forward but of course the uh, number 15 entry with Kevin Chen, James Klingman and Jesse Crone was uh, on the front row off the start Kevin Chen fired off the line very strongly and had a uh, good look at the front of the field led for uh, a short period before Afik Yazid managed to move the uh, R&B Racing Lamborghini to the uh, to the four, having gotten around back, but uh, certainly the, the BMW was right in the mix. This was Ray Wu off the start, Got the Ferrari in front for uh, a matter of metres. Before he lost that position again to the BMW. Ultimately, it was the uh, the Audis that got themselves towards the front of the field. Hank 
kicks did a brilliant opening stint. Number 26 entry. Christopher Haas are now up to position number five. Is uh, just a second, 1.6 seconds behind Sandy Stuvik. So Stuvik's been circulating in 212s. Haas is still circulating in 208. So somewhere on screen, we should see, if I can have a look at the track map. The 88 entry. So they're uh, between turn six and seven. Just coming into turn eight, Craft Bamboo. Mercedes is about to be gobbled up by yellow and black Be Quick Audi down to turn nine. Now I'm only watching the numbers on screen. There's no move there just yet. Well, he's still over a second behind. 1.6 had shown at the second, but that would be from the timing mark at the end of the lap. There's the race leader now, 6.5 seconds. 2.11 last time round for Nazim Asman. He's not hanging around. He's turning in some pretty sharp laps. 2.091 for Marcus Winklehock. There he is, going through the bottom of the screen. In third place, Jens Klinkman. He's not out of this either. They are all very, very close together. So not too long from now, you should see the number 88 Craft Bamboo Mercedes come through the top corner and right under his rear wing, I fully expect if he hasn't gotten around him already, I think he has, I think he has come into turn 15. The 26 has gotten in front of Stuvik. So uh, he's used to being the pilot, of course, of the uh, Be Quick Audi. Took that a championship victory in the Thailand Super Series. But now he's going to have to look at the tail of it as it disappears into the distance. So now Christopher Haas are up to position number four. So Germans in second, third and fourth. A tie in Sandy Stuvik in position number five. And perhaps fittingly, Leading the Sapung 12 hour at home is Nazim Asman. The car on screen, the EBM Giga Racing Porsche 992 GD3R. And there is the gap back to position number two. Marcus Winklehock is closing in. This has certainly become very, very interesting. There was the move, it's gone. Sandy Stuvik still hanging on to the tail of Marcus Winklehock. And oh, hey. So this could be very uh, enlightening too for the young tyre driver. He's used to campaigning that, that very car. Now I don't know which one of the stable because there's three or four Audi R8s in the, uh, the stable of the Be Quick team. Which one this is, I'm not 100% certain. Maybe, well, uh, the one that Sandy Stubick took to victory in Thailand, winning that uh, last event at Boram ultimate race, didn't quite win outright the final race of the season, but he'd done enough to be champion. He might be learning a trick or two just by following Marcus Winklehock around. Never a bad thing to uh, to see what happens, whether you're looking at data or, or seeing the car, seeing the performance of the car from the best seat in the house, to have a factory driver in your camp. The quick team will certainly be taking an awful lot away from this weekend, as will Absolute. Absolute are a very, very experienced operation. One of the best teams in the world. The base here at Sepang International Circuit. Another base at Shanghai. I'm not 100% certain that they still have their base in Zhuhai, but I'd be very surprised if Fabin Fior, Ingo Mater's team uh, partner in the business, has actually moved from Zhuhai, so I'd expect that they still have their... Uh, their offices and uh, workshop in Zhuhai, but the bulk of the work now is done out of Shanghai International Circuit and uh, here at their base in Sepang. Very, very experienced crew, the GDC Porsche. In position number 12, Sean Dong still shown at the wheel. 2.14 last time round, best lap for them at 2.11.9, that will be uh, in Sean's favour. Very highly competitive driver, very, very experienced. No longer a young man, no longer an old man either. He's still uh, got a lot of racing left in his career. Loves a bit of fishing. His father, Casey Tong, does love to go out fishing. Takes the family. Young Jasper has been doing some time over in Europe. As the, uh, the credit 
of having taken the Audi RS3 LMS TCR's very first victory anywhere in the world. It was a Chu Hai International Circuit as part of TC Asia a number of years ago now, it would have been 2016 or 17. So young Jasper's got a pretty good uh, racing heritage. Casey Tom, their father, would have done too if he'd found it earlier in his life, but he focused on business and uh, developing an opportunity to, to get the funds for the boys to go racing, but doesn't mind the odd stoush every now and then. Although these days I think he's a lot happier fishing. I'm sure there's just a little bit of him somewhere along the line that would still love to be out there campaigning one of these GT3 cars and really enjoying himself. Three hours 20 in the books. 200 minutes down. It'll give us 280 minutes to go. Asim Asman is hanging on. There he is on screen. The gap's now about two and a half seconds to one of the uh, most experienced drivers in the world of GT3 racing. Now uh, north of 40. The three-time winner of the Nürburgring 24-hour race. Sorry, I got that wrong. He's a four-time winner of the Nürburgring 24-hour race. The driver who has turned laps all over the world. To Daytona, to Bathurst, to the Nürburgring, to Spa. I'm sure Le Mans. No doubt uh, Jake will give you more background on the, the one man who had the uh, pleasure of turning his very first laps in Formula One as a race leader entry in position number three Jens Klingman young German driver doing a fantastic job he's punting around in 212s Winklehock's in 209s Christopher Haas also in 209s look at that 209 396 last time for Winklehock 209 424 mere hundreds separating two of Audi's great drivers from their pool the factory drivers that uh, turn up at events like this to support the uh, the region's teams. In this instance, Absolute Racing running two of the Evo 2 R8 LMS GT3s. A little bit wide there for Klingman. So he's, uh, he's still pushing on. There's no drama running wide over the edge of the kerb, that back part of the circuit. I'm not sure that constitutes track limits. Certainly turn 14, which uh, Jens Klingman has just exited and come through. He's now in 15. That is a corner that has uh, brought the wrath of the stewards. <laughs> just as I say that, car 15 driver Jens Klingman must respect track limits. Actually, in this instance, it's at turn six. The, uh, the mid-speed right-hander. So turn through turn four, fast left-hander into a slightly slower right-hander that is turn six must be on the exit there that is an issue this is four into five next corner is turn six so this right-hander is turn six this is where Klingman found trouble so it would have been on the exit so he's just gone a little bit too wide Winklehock using all the road through the kink to the right and then a big jump on the brakes into the tight right-hander Flowing out to uh, to get the right line. Fairly tight left-hander. Not quite hairpin, but pretty close. Uphill. To the next medium fast right-hander. It's tight-ish. Right-hander in turn 11. Not a heavy stop, but it's a stop nonetheless. Left-hander turn 12. Sweep medium fast right-hander turn 13 into turn 14 where a number of drivers really have obviously on the exit overstepped the mark on uh, using track limits They're probably all right on that one but i'd say that uh, this position for the race lead is just about to change on the uh, verge of jake sanson taking back over down the inside will close the door on the exits in such a way that Nazim Asman can't fire back and do the crossover on the exit. Plenty of experience for Winklehock. And back to the front of this race. So it's Audi 1, Audi 4. Christopher Haaser now 29 points 
sorry, 26.8 seconds behind Jeff Klingman. He's circulating at about uh, three seconds left faster than his compatriot. Klingman also uh, within reach now of Asman. That said, Asman's last lap was still at the three. Klingman turn eight. He was a little wide. And now, he's clearly used too much of the circle on the exit there. Very interesting. That would uh, move the Audis back into positions one and three. And uh, certainly with the pace of this car, as a Masman doing a stellar job in his stint, he may well be able to maintain that position up to his pit stop. So it's a lot of work yet for Christopher Haaser to do. Of course, the Audis prior to making their second stop were running one, two. And they have the factory rock stars behind the wheel. Klingman certainly uh, falls into that category. He's on screen, right on cue. Getting around Douglas Koo, the Viper racing Aston Martin. How's Douglas going pace-wise? Uh, last lap, 2.18. So he was in the 20s, so he's turning 18s. Um, checking Douglas is qualifying time. It wasn't too, uh, wasn't too bad. He did 2.12.9. I wish we're not in qualifying mode. He doesn't need to be doing 2.12.9s, but the fact that he's capable of uh, doing a sub-13 is, is pretty helpful. At the moment, I think what he's trying to do is try to establish that minimum driver time for the AM driver. 80 minutes he started off with about a 45 minute stint so he had another 35 minutes to add to that but obviously team strategy I want to keep the pace to a point where they're comfortable I don't want to see him go too far behind unfortunately the team is now down five or six laps I say five or six because uh, it depends on his position on track as per when the timing monitor updates so they are certainly, uh, well, they certainly have a little bit of work to do. That car, again, having the front end rebuilt after an Asian Le Mans series crash at Abu Dhabi just a month or so back. Car stuck straight in a container, shipped back to uh, HQ at Sepang International Circuit. The team spent much of the week rebuilding the front of the car. I don't think structurally it was too bad, but certainly uh, there's a lot of ancillaries that need to attach to the front of the car, and certainly in any kind of car, but a modern GT3 car, electronics and piping and all sorts of weird and wonderful things to reattach the front of the car. So the team spent a lot of time with the support of Aston Martin. Their operations run here in Asia in part by Wei Ron Tan, former LMP2 teammate to Jasmine Jafar, race winner in the Fuji six hour few years back for uh, Jackie Chan DC Racing. That was well received in this part of the world. Bill Jeffrey is part of that crew. Really had some uh, some great promise from those guys. That whole thing's gone a little bit quiet, but uh, the global pandemics silenced an awful lot of the motorsport industry over the last three and a half years. So having this event back signals a good return to competition within Asia. We look forward to uh, seeing an awful lot more of it. We'll get into it a little bit later on. The championships that are coming this year and 
where some of those events will be. Certainly a number of them will be competing here at Sepang International Circuit. As the R&B Racing Lamborghini continues on. Shown as one lap down, but uh, race leader has just gone across the line. Ye Hong Lee doing a fantastic job. Welcome back to Jake Sanson. It's great to have you back. How are you feeling? Uh, great to be back. It's a very different order to when I left it, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I wanted it to be a very different order so that we could uh, shake the dice and uh, rattle and roll it and see how things are going for the next hour. And the lights have come on on the cars as well, which is exactly my favourite part of a race day when it's properly getting dark and we can really start to settle in for an exciting evening's racing. Brilliant stuff. What's the what's the crack so far, Sean? What's been happening? Well, last hour? It's, it's pretty much as it's played out during your last stint. There really hasn't mm. been anything too dramatic happen. There's been a couple of teams slightly adjust their strategy. I think we'll see Douglas Koo probably back in pit lane before too much longer for what I would expect would be the end of his minimum spell as an AM driver in the uh, the number 65 Aston Martin. Uh, Andrew McPherson was just on screen then. I'm assuming this uh, bright sequence of lights coming towards us. Well, it's a Porsche. It's just a different coloured Porsche. It's not Andrew <laughs> McPherson. He's back behind the wheel too, so I would expect that before too much longer he will have completed his 80-minute minimum, but he's the car owner. He might decide he wants to do four hours. I can't see that happening just quietly because <laughs> he's not a young man anymore. He's going to kill me for bringing that up. But anyway, he won't worry about this till much later. I can get away by that stage. But I think some of the AM drivers are just trying to adjust that strategy to get them out of the car. Mm. It's interesting to see both the uh, the factory Audi drivers are behind the wheel and not surprisingly punching in laps in the, well, below sub, they're sub 210. So they've been in the uh, 207s. And uh, Marcus Winkelhock really is screaming around. He's not long taken as an Asman, who's done a brilliant job in the EBM entry on screen, the Giga Porsche. And uh, he held him out for a while. And in fact, he's actually quicker on track at the moment than Jens Klingman. So that's something that's uh, that's good for, for him as a young driver developing in this part of the world, but, but also for the team who may have expected, because as you said, he's only new to GT3 racing. He's done a lot of open wheel competition. And he's only a young man that uh, he's just settling in nicely, but really doing a sterling job, punching out some very, very quick laps. And Christopher Haase may well get to his stop and not be in front of the Porsche. So I'm going to leave that one with you. It's going to be an interesting equation as it plays out. But hey, guess what? We're not even halfway through. Fantastic. Well, before you dash away, Sean, how recent is the black and white flag for Marcus Winkelhock for abusing track limits at turns 6, 8 and 14? How recent is that message? Just now, in, in, his bid, in his bid to uh, to rein in the Porsche, we followed him for a couple of laps and, and I was just talking about track limits just before you came back and just what constitutes track limits and we saw some vision where it was very close to all four wheels being outside the white line and I'm assuming that is the issue and it's been, well turn eight's been a big bump but certainly turn 14 and as we were following uh, Marcus around, it looked a little bit like that's what had happened and, and the fact that he's got the black and white flag tends to suggest that uh, the wrath of the stewards and the race director have uh, fallen upon him and uh, he might just need to rein it in a little bit but it's racing drivers are racing drivers it's a bit hard to tell them to slow down they're not <laughs> they're not built that way you don't slow down there's a red mist it's down i'm going see you later wave the checkered flag then i'll pull in so let's Very see true. let's see how that one plays out it's great to see the ferraris back in the mix too but um, i noticed too that uh, imperatore didn't step in until the fourth stint so ray Wu had done two stints so i'm wondering too whether or not they may have parked him so expect a long stint i don't know whether wait what is the limit was it it wasn't 200 minutes i think it was 120 minutes is the limit i think it was 120 yeah the yeah limit is 120 so right. imperatore is going to have to then juggle that one too so i gather he'll do a stint throw david chen back in and then they'll just alternate till they get towards the end of the race and maybe they'll have a backup stint for 120 minutes or that's a two-hour session for, uh, for Imperatore at the end. So he got an early start. He could sit back and, and uh, suck in some fluids and stick his feet up and sit in an ice bath and prepare himself because he's <laughs> in for a fairly hot close to this race, I think. 
You make it sound so straightforward, Sean. But thank you so much. It's uh, great to get your take on it. And uh, your turn to have a breather. We'll uh, bring you back into the mix uh, in about an hour. Marcus Winkelhock then in the absolute racing Audi. Leading the way then from Nazim Asman. In such a fascinating to and from. The pendulum swinging backwards and forwards between these cars. 8.7 seconds now, Nazim Asman's deficit as we are currently watching the R&B racing car of Ye Hong Lee having a great deal with the AAI Motorsport BMW. Now, this is not the same lap uh, as the car they're dueling with because obviously Ye Hong Lee, I think, is coming up to lap Betty Chen in the 91. Indeed, he is. So Betty Chen is actually making life very difficult for Ye Hong Lee. I'm not entirely sure that Ye Hong Lee is going to be particularly appreciative of it. But obviously that is the R&B racing machine that is trying to work its way forward and work its way through. Uh, do get your messages and your comments into it. We're now at the stage where we could really use all of the uh, live, <laughs> all of the uh, live support that you guys have got to give us. We're really uh, enjoying uh, the battles out there on the course at the moment. So great to have your uh, support to help us go through it. I'm surprised that the R&B Lamborghini has not been able to make its way through past the AAI BMW with uh, quite the rapidity that perhaps it should have done. So it's quite interesting the fact that that hasn't actually worked out in their favour. So fascinating situation, but uh, definitely uh, an interesting and intriguing situation that the car now finds itself in. Not quite able to uh, make the cars get through but uh, if you are still joining us here in Sepang it is great to have your company and great to have your support everybody's cheering for their own particular individual teams uh, to make the steady progress so obviously everybody keeping the focus firmly fixed on their car and team of choice but look at this the R&B Lamborghini still can't quite find its way past the AAI uh, BMW of Betty Chen and this is to lap them of course but this is my favourite part of a GT race, when it gets dark, when things get much trickier to see, when drivers start to crack under the pressure, when things really start to fall away. And my prediction pre-race of there being about 220 laps or so to the race is starting to look relatively close to the mark because we're on that 98 at the moment for Marcus Winkelhock and we're approaching the half distance point in the race. So we're watching the car of Betty Chen, Piri Benambakhti and Tanad Satan Tiakul. But still the R&B racing car, Ya Hung Lee, trying to get through here. This is not an easy situation. Sepang by night is a fabulous uh, circuit to behold. The last time I commentated on racing at night in Sepang was in the World Touring Car uh, World Cup a couple of seasons ago when the championship came down to the wire and the three races were all held under the floodlights. And boy, oh boy, was that great racing. I always felt that the Grand Prix should have been held under the floodlights of Malaysia as well. And I kind of hope that if it ever if it returns, and I really want it to, uh, that it would become a night race moving forward as well. This place takes on a very different persona, a different personality at night. And uh, it becomes an even tougher race challenge than usual. Now, Betty Chen, the driver who is in second place, she is currently Christian Kia's nemesis, 46 seconds behind the leader in the AM category. The Modena Porsche still trying to stay uh, well clear. There is a lap roughly now between Marcus Winkelhock and Nazim Asman. And then plus an alternative 14.6 seconds or so. 22 seconds back from Asman is Christopher Haase and another 10 seconds back from him is Jens Klingman in the second of the AAI BMWs. So there's still a fair bit of racing to cover, but we're approaching the century lap as into the pits comes Jens Klingman. So Jens Klingman has brought the AAI Motorsports BMW into the pit lane. Now, that's interesting. Uh, Lee Jaya, the FM Motorsports Silver Rocket, gets out of the way. And as a result of that, that's the catalyst for the R&B Lamborghini, Ye Hong Lee, to storm past Betty Chen so they have been able to make the move. So it does work out in the favour of R&B Lamborghini in the end. Now, interestingly, the AAI Motorsport car 
They've handed over to Chin Chin Hua. So Jens Klingman has got back into the car again. No, sorry, has got out of the car again. And Reed Harker has got back into the EBM Giga racing car. So it's absolute one and two. Winkel, Hock and Haase, the two German drivers. And the Kraft Bamboo of Sandy Stuvik now third. But Reed Harker is back in the EBM Giga car. So expect some fast laps from the Kiwi. And then Chin Chin Hua is a fresh pair of hands in the... AAI Motorsport BMW. Now, Ye Hong Lee has gone past the pits, so he, um, he now moves up into fourth position. And it means that the Absolute Racing car is only 35 seconds clear of the race leader now. It's the EBM Giga Racing car of Reed Harker has come into the pits. There is the Kraft Bamboo. This is the car in third position now, and it's Sandy Stuvik who is behind the wheel at this present moment in time. The young Thai driver who worked his way up the ladder of junior single seaters for so long i can remember commentating on him at the red bull ring years ago uh, and at the hungara ring as well in gp3 when that was the third tier on the formula one weekend of course now it is known as fia formula three but sandy stevick is now converted to the world of gt racing and himself a living and doing a very good job now interestingly christian kia must respect track limits at turn six and this is the second warning now for car number 216 the canadian for the modern motorsports team in the Porsche. Really up against it now in terms of track limits. As meanwhile, round the outside, that is brave from the bamboo of Sandy Stuvik to go the long way round the outside of the AAI BMW. And I think that is Chen Chen Hua, who is a lap adrift now, having just come out of the pits. Well, double check as to which of the three BMWs that is. Is it the 91? Or is that the is that the 15? I think that is the 15 of Chen Hua Chen. So as they come down the straight, I want to double check. It is the 15. It is Chen Chen Hua. So having come fresh out of the pits, and now Chen Chen Hua is now down to seventh position just in front of Betty Chen. So the field works its way through the hairpin once again, or at least these two cars certainly do. But the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes now finds itself in third position. It isn't going to be long until the R&B Lamborghini crosses the line in fourth position. Ye Hong Lee, having done a one thirty, well, having done a one, what was the time on the last lap for Ye Hong Lee? Done a one, a two minute eleven eight four five on the last lap. Nearly two seconds a lap quicker than the Kraft Bamboo of Sandy Stuvik. I don't know how much of that is that Sandy is due a pit stop and how much of that is a sudden need to change things up a little bit. Because obviously we're now starting to think about the next phase of the pit stop regime. But we're on lap 100 for Marcus Finkelhock in the Absolute Racing Audi. And the sister car of Christopher Haase now finds itself in second place. We are definitely now flirting with the half distance in the race. Marcus Winkelhock crosses the line, and that is lap 100 completed. We are at the first century, so we're definitely going to get in just over 200 laps around the Sepang circuit. And Christopher Haase now crosses the line, 31 seconds back from his teammate. So there's still great battles everywhere you look, and even though we've only got 12 cars still running the race, of the 13 that started there is still so much going on this is the lead car in the m category christian kia the canadian along with francis jaya and john shen for the modern motorsports porsche team running in sixth place overall leading the m category and in front of chen chen Hua, that we just saw battling away on the road with sandy stuvik in the craft bamboo mercedes but the actual gap between them in the reality of it is only 12 seconds. Christian Kia, 12 seconds in front of Chen Chen Hua. And crucially, 46 seconds ahead of the car it's actually battling with for the victory in the AM category, which is Betty Chen's AAI Motorsport BMW. And then in third place is the AMAC Motorsport, driven by Ben Porter, the Australian. Looking in the background, we're going to see which cars emerge, and that is the absolute battle behind them. 12 seconds back is Chen Chen Hua, who is now trying to use 
the craft bamboo mercedes as a slipstream effect to try and close up and get into sixth position. So Chen Chen Hua absolutely using Sandy Stevick's craft bamboo to tow him along around the Sepang circuit which is definitely going to help his position if he can continue the way he's going now. Doesn't actually look like he's going for a, a, a proper overtaking move. He's literally just popping out behind the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes and keeping him honest around the course, which essentially keeps him uh, box fresh. Now he is going to go for the overtaking move, though. Down into the hairpin. Uh, fascinating situation. They're going to go side by side, and through goes Chen Chen Hua to unlap himself from Sandy Stuvik. Well, that's different. Clearly feeling that the BMW is better on its own rather than in the draft of the Mercedes. So Chen Chen Hua, who is lapping very quickly, it has to be said. 12 seconds back from Christian Chia, and 38 seconds ahead of the stablemate of Betty Chen, or Chen Yin Yu, if you prefer. Ben Porter is currently running ninth position in the AMAC Motorsport Porsche. Alexandra Imperatori trying to make up for lost time in the, in the Harmony Ferrari. They've got a lot of ground to make up, though. And then Yasmin and Jafar, after the problems that the Aston Martin had earlier on, they are still running. They're in 11th position, but they're lapping consistently about a second off the pace of the leader. And then uh, 12th position is the Seoul GT Cup car that we assumed was going to be down at the back. The FM Motorsport by Silver Rocket of Lee Jaya at the wheel. The AAI Motorsport car number 90 is the only one that has actually retired from the race. They retired on lap 27. And that was game over for the Chinese Taipei entry of uh, Lei Wu, Shi Wei Shi and Chen Junsan. So all three of those drivers out of the race, unfortunately which considering that for some of them this was their first event since the COVID-19 outbreak, it shows you just how much strain the team were actually under in the first place. So there is the AAI BMW continuing its march around the course, having not just got past Sandy Stuvik, but literally dropping the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes and just storming away. This is a fantastic performance on this stint from Chen Chen Hua just stretch it out a really good run to get them, try and get them back into contention because at one point the AAI BMW was leading overall don't forget and now they are down in seventh so getting away from the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes and getting back into a lead position on the road can definitely help them ascertain a strong position once again but here in the Sepang 12 hours we have four hours and 12 minutes roughly left so still quite a long way to go Christopher Haase is now just 27 seconds behind Marcus Winkelhock. They are closing to the tune of about two and a half seconds per lap at the moment. Christopher Haase closing in on Marcus Winkelhock. The man who led the 2007 European Grand Prix for Spiker for all of about a lap and a half in the grand scheme of things by just staying out on wet tyres when everybody else had put on slicks. The man who holds the record for leading the only Formula One Grand Prix he ever started is now leading the Sepang 12 hours. And it's a really good run on lap 103. Christopher Haase is 27 seconds back from him. Sandy Stuvik is still there or thereabouts. Over half a minute behind Christopher Haase's absolute Audi. 45 seconds is the actual gap. And then Ye Hong Lee for the R&B racing team. Ah, into the pits has come Sandy Stuvik. So Sandy Stuvik's brought the Mercedes into the pits. Now, I did wonder how long that was going to take them because obviously losing as much ground as they have been to the AAI BMW, that was quite indicative of a car that probably needed a visit to the pits. So the RB Racing Lamborghini is going to move into third position as it passes the pits. So Ye Hong Lee is now effectively in third position. And side by side, that's the absolute Audi of Marcus Winklehock getting out of the way and letting Ben Porter, the Aussie, come through and take the position. So the AMAC Motorsport Porsche, Ben Porter behind the wheel, is duking this out with the absolute racing Audi of Marcus Winkelhock. Do you know who you're messing with, Sunshine? Yes, he does. He's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the race leader and unlapping himself. Fair play, Ben Porter. So off the turn he goes, and the AMAC Porsche going very well. Charging down the straight again. 
and up towards the first corner. But there is Marcus Winkelhock, who is now on lap 104, and he is consistently lapping in the 2 minute 12 mark. But the car behind, Mr. Haase, in the B Quick Absolute car, they're lapping in the 209s consistently. Anywhere between two and a half to three seconds a lap faster than the sister car. And the gap comes down to 24 seconds as uh, the B Quick Absolute car comes across the pit lane. I did think it was going to be about that because the lap time was looking like another 209 for Christopher Haase. A 209.7 to be precise compared to Marcus Finkelhoff on a 212.9. So the B Quick Absolute Audi going faster than its counterpart by anywhere between four and seven tenths of a second per sector. This just shows you how much fitter at the moment Christopher Haase's car is feeling whether that's to do with the driver, whether that's to do with the way the car is currently handling, whether that's to do with tyres or not. We can't keep up with that one at the moment, but we will eventually. Now, there is the Ferrari coming through. That is Alexandra Imperatori, who was running in P10, still is, but is desperately trying to close up on its opponents and try and get back into the game a little bit. But the Kraft Bamboo team that was in third position now waiting for Ye Hong Lee to come through and take away that third position as they come through this time. And there is Ye Hong Lee in the R&B car going into third place as they go past the pits this time. So the R&B Lamborghini now in third position in front of the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes. I think Reed Harker is going to put the EV Giga Racing car into fourth position as well. So good work from the Kiwi. Reed Harker, who is really captaining his troops out there for the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes. I'm not sure that's Sandy Stuvik behind the wheel anymore. I think they've just had a driver change, but we'll update you on to who that is very soon indeed. And here is Alex Emperatore. His lap times currently doing a 2 minute 9.4. So he is actually, the Ferrari is actually the fastest car on track at the moment. The problem is they're all the way down in 10th position and they've got five laps of time to make up make that four laps as Alexander Imperatori crosses the line to start his 101st lap while the leader Marcus Winkelhop is on lap 105 so the Ferrari's got four laps to make up but it is the fastest car on track at the moment in the hands of Alexander Imperatori it's going to take some time but they might still get back into this and what we definitely have is time we've got four hours and seven minutes so if the Ferrari team just keep on plugging on and hopefully they have a chance to bring this race back into their own control. But there is the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket. The Giant leading the way. They are two laps adrift of Jasmine Jafar and the Aston Martin. They're in a cup car, so they're not going to be at the same sort of pace as their counterparts. They're lapping a good seven seconds a lap slower than the leading car. But the main thing is that they are still going strong. Now, the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes is going to fall to seventh position now, I do believe because Chen Chen Hua in the AAI BMW has also got past the Graf Bamboo. It looks to me as though Sandy Stuvik is still in the car. I don't think they changed drivers at that pit stop. They've just had a long pit stop. We'll double check because they may well have changed drivers after all as hopping over the curves is the 16 of Reed Harker, the New Zealander in the EBM Giga Racing Porsche. They were trying to get themselves back into the podium paying slot. And they were about 49 seconds back from Ye Hong Lee in the R&B Lamborghini. Fourth overall, fourth in class. The last lap was a 209.5. Their best is a 208.7. So Reed Harker still maximising what the car can do wherever possible. And there is Alex Imperatori, still in 10th position, the Swiss driver, with a lot of time to make up on the cars up in front, but certainly seeking to find that time wherever he can. Really interesting situation continuing here at Sepang. As we get the lights flashing from the Porsche just behind, that is Lee Jia hoping to... Oh, no, that's the Aston Martin. I do apologise. That's the Viper Nasa car. But the gap between these three cars, they are 10th and 11th, but the actual gap between them is three laps. So Jasmine Jafar, the Malaysian, running in behind the Swiss driver, Alex Imperatori, but using Imperatori as a very good reference point because obviously they lost a lot of time earlier on when the Aston Martin stopped out on the circuit and then recovered back to the pits and reset. They lost uh, three laps in all of that. And a couple of other incidents as well, but Alex Imperatore 
currently the fastest car on track. Look at that, a 209.8 from Alex Imperatore, when most of the cars out there are currently in the 210s, 211s, 212s. And uh, the Aston Martin actually ran with them on the last lap. Jasmine Gispar just set the fastest lap of the race for the Aston Martin, which is a 209.405 which was a good three seconds faster than Marcus Winkelhock out in the lead and two seconds faster than Christopher Haase in second. So that's what following Alex Imperatore does for your speed. Trying to keep up with him is really helping the course. So the Ferrari and the Aston Martin echoing the battles that are currently going for those two teams in Formula One uh, here at the Sepang 12 Hours on a circuit that used to hold Formula One events, of course. Last race at Sepang 2017, if memory serves me correctly, although I'm sure one of the viewers is going to correct me and say, Jake, I think you'll find it was actually 2016. So we'll, uh, I'm sure that correction will come. You're watching along and you are glued to the Nitro YouTube feed, then you are very welcome. Do please continue to watch with us and support your favourite team. It's going to be a very exciting run. Chuck Wong Legchom is uh, currently rooting for the number 26 group, the Be Quick Absolute squad, the team that is registered in Thailand. And they are currently in second place, gaining about two and a half seconds per lap on the leaders. Everything else is all about supporting the favourite team. Your company is very appreciated. We are delighted to bring you coverage of the Sepang 12 hours, the first race of its kind since 2016. Thank goodness the top speed crew have been able to put together such a fantastic race and a great event. And the race is still going strong. 16.9 seconds is now the gap between the two absolute Audis. So Christopher Haase is absolutely chopping the gap to Marcus Winkelhock. Absolutely savaging that uh, distance between the two of them. That was double that about uh, 20 minutes ago. So Christopher Haase just chipping away, chipping away, closing in on Marcus Winkelhock. But yeah, Hong Lee r &B racing Lamborghini from China is currently in third position. Reed Harker, the New Zealander, fourth place at the moment in the EVM Giga car. And fifth overall is the leading AM driver, that is Christian Kia for Canada, in the Moderna Porsche. So they've still got a few drivers around them. As into the pits comes Betty Chen. She's done a great job in the AAI BMW. They're currently running second in the AM category. Still about a minute back from the modern Porsche of Christian Kia. But there's still every chance that the AAI Motorsport BMW has got what it takes to win the AM category here as we watch Reed Harker in the very distinguishing Nay Hark livery. See what we did there. But the Kiwi doing a fine job as we now watch the race leaders. This is the absolute car. And this is the car of Andrew Harianto, Yu Kwai, and Marcus Winkelhock. Winkelhock is behind the wheel on lap 107. But the lap time is decreasing as Ye Hong Lee has brought the R&B Lamborghini into the pits now. As we approach the half distance mark. So Ye Hong Lee, the Chinese driver, has now come into the pits in uh, the number three car. And I can tell you that the AAI Motorsport car is now driven by Tanat Sutton Tirakul. So Tanat Satatarakul has taken over from Benny Chen. And as I predicted, Sandy Stuvik is still behind the wheel of the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes. They've got out again in seventh place. 3.5 seconds adrift of Chen Chun Hua in the AAI BMW number 15. So there's still a really nice little battle cooking up as the R&B Lamborghini of Ye Hong Lee finds itself in third place. But the gap comes down again between Winkelhock and Haase in the two absolute Audis. 13.4 is now the gap. So into the pits, you can see the R&B Lamborghini of uh, Ye Hong Lee. Still running a very solid race there in third position. But obviously they're going to lose that position next time by because Reed Harker in the EBM Giga car is going to go through. So too is Christian Kia in the Moderna Porsche. So still some good battles and some very exciting runs to come. We've watched the cars coming through. We now have exactly four hours to go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are halfway home in the Sepang. 12 hours, don't ask. <laughs> Eight hours was uh, the given distance uh, instead of 12. Partially for logistical reasons, partially because 
it's the first race back at sepang for seven years the name carries and the hope is of course that next year it will be the full 12 hours again as we have a full grid of cars but considering the quality of the teams that are racing we've had several lead changes here in the sepang 12 hours it's been great to watch but we are now heading into the second half of this encounter as marcus winkelhock and christopher harze the two german drivers for the absolute racing crew one for the number 18 car and one for the B-Quick number 26. They're just chipping away at each other all the way through as there goes Reed Harker unlapping himself from Marcus Winkelhock. Now, what is the strategy? What are the tactics for Marcus Winkelhock and the absolute Audi team here? Because clearly they're quite happy for Winkelhock to be losing about three seconds a lap to the sister car. They're not bringing him in anytime soon clearly waiting for the right lap to bring the car in as Reed Harker now unlaps himself. And I can tell you that Afi Kikwan, or uh, Afi Yazid, as he's also known, has now got into the R&B Lamborghini. So Reed Harker goes through, now in third position, and uh, uh, interestingly, back on the lead lap as well. So they are about two minutes, roughly, behind Christopher Haase in the B-Quick Absolute Audi. So they're on the lead lap only just because they've managed to unlap themselves from Marcus Winkelhock. And there is the modern Porsche, the car that leads the AM category. That's Christian Kia behind the wheel, the Canadian. And they're currently running in P5. Now, this is fascinating. Team manager, car 18, must go immediately to race control. That's the leader. For the absolute Audi must be in trouble for some form of transgression. We don't know what it is yet. But the team manager for Absolute Racing number 18, the leading car, has to immediately report to race control. What is going on? Something is cooking up with the race leader here. So th this is going to be a fascinating situation. And we are about to see... Some interesting duels going on here, I feel. Then we're going to see uh, quite an interesting uh, little battle cook up. And I have a feeling that there could be some controversy on the way. So the battle's going strong. And we are raging towards a really exciting challenge now. Here at the Sepang 12 Hours 2023. Saturday night's all right for fighting as far as the two absolute racing cars are concerned and apparently car 18 has been reported to stewards for repeatedly abusing track limits so marcus winkelhock who as sean alluded to earlier has just been pushing and not really focusing on track limits just getting it done he's not only being caught by christopher Haase, but has now abused track limits one time too many and as a result is now reporting to the stewards and this is not good news as the team manager for Absolute Racing is now immediately having to report to race control. Meanwhile, we've got Ferrari versus Aston Martin, which has been cooking up nicely for the last 20 minutes. And still, Jasmine Jafar is using Alexandra Imperatore to get his race back on track. He's three laps behind him, but he's going with him at the moment because they're both lapping in the 210s. Interestingly, the last lap, Marcus Winkelhock finally failed, so Winkelhock, the race leader, has come into the pits. But the team manager has still got to report to race control regardless, and that means that Christopher Haase in the B-Quick car has now taken the lead. So the B-Quick Absolute Racing Audi is now into the lead of the race with the Absolute car number 18, and Marcus Winkelhock in the pits. So that little story is playing out, but they still have to report team manager still has to report to race control whether they want to or not sandy stuvik by the way has managed to overtake the moderna porsche of chen chen Hua. the moderna motorsport porsche has not come through yet something's happened to the moderna porsche have they come into the pits yes they have so that'll be why they drop back sandy stuvik in the craft bamboo and chen chen Hua in the aai bmw have both managed to get through before the moderna even made the pit stop now, this is going to be an interesting one for Talat Satantiroku, the tie driver for the AAI BMW, running in eighth position overall and second in the AM class. How much time have they been able to make up on Christian Kia, the Canadian, in the modern Porsche? There is the leading AM car. And out of the car gets Christian Kia. Now, who's that getting in? Is that John Shen or is that Francis Jaya? 
Well, we will find out very soon indeed. So Christian Kia has done a very, very fine job indeed in the Moderna Porsche, handing over to his colleague. And Porter is not that far away behind uh, Tanad Satanderaku either. 9.4 seconds is the deficit. This is fabulous. Alex Impratori and Jasmine Jafar, two drivers who know the GT craft very well indeed now. He's battling with each other out there on the course. Ferrari versus Aston. This is what these cars were built for. And Alex Impratori in the Harmony Racing Ferrari versus Jasmine Jafar in the Viper Racing Aston Martin Vantage. Having a great duel at the Sepang 12 hours into the second half of the race. And also into the pits now has come Christopher Haase. Now, Andrew Harianto has got into the absolute Audi number 18. Christopher Haase is coming to the pits practically on the same lap. Well, just a lap after, actually. So how close to each other are they going to be when they get out? And who's going to have the faster car underneath them? So there is the Moderna Porsche. Just finishing off the tyre choice. And they'll send the Porsche back out onto the circuit again. The leader in the AM category. Away you go, buddy. A good run so far. Now, is this these two still dueling away? Ferrari versus Aston? Of course it is. Alexandra Impratori and Jasmine Jafar. Having a great duel out on the course. This is the stuff that boyhood dreams are made of, isn't it? Ferrari versus Aston Martin. At the dead of night forcing each other to try and make mistakes this is why we love gt racing this is why the sport is so poetic so romantic these are the kind of duels you live to see aston martin versus ferrari a duel that's been going on for almost a century still the battle rages Tori versus jafar Three laps between them, but Jafar just following in Pretoria's every wheel tracks, hoping that they have an issue. Gaining massive speed, pace, and time. Just by following in pursuit, just by hunting their every move. Christopher Haase into the pits. Now, has he been replaced in the car? As Andrew Harianto has got back out onto the circuit behind Reed Harker. Kiwi now moving into second place. So Jasmine Jafar has absolutely no intention, really, of making the overtake and making the big bomb dive to get through on the inside line of Alexandra Impratori. He just wants to follow him around the whole circuit, improving the Aston Martin speed, improving the data, giving the team more to work with so that they can make improvements for the next race they do. Right, this is an interesting one. Car 18 has had 10 seconds added on their next pit stop for constant abuse of track limits. That is going to hand the lead of the race outright to the Be Quick Absolute Racing car once the musical chairs have stopped. And Henk Kicks is the one who is now behind the wheel of the Be Quick Absolute, by the way. So Henk Kicks has taken over on lap 111. And I do wonder, is Reed Harker the race leader now in the EVM Giga Racing car? Well, that's definitely good news for Andrew Harianto, uh, sorry, for Henk Kicks and Co, because Andrew Harianto on his next pit stop is going to have 10 seconds added on for constant abuse of track limits. This is not good for the number 18 crew, and this is really going to hamper their chances of going for the victory later on in the battle. So still the battle's raged. It's been a scintillating race battle so far. And a really strong race continues. It has been phenomenal. Absolute Racing, Modern Motorsport and FM Motorsport x Silver Rocket, your team leaders. It's been a really exciting run all the way through, though. And still, the race continues to play out. But here is the Viper Niza Racing Aston Martin, having now overtaken the Ferrari. So Alexandra Impratori struggling. Ferrari does not look as fast as it once was. So something has befallen the Ferrari. Not sure whether it's just the ebb and flow, the natural ebb and flow between the two cars. And then they've obviously ended up forcing each other into an error somewhere along the line. That's the Ferrari that's come off worse. So whether this is an actual shift in the transfer of the race battle. So I have to keep an eye on this one. But certainly out in front at the moment, it's all going well 
for the EBN Giga Racing Team car. They are now the team that's out front with the New Zealander Reid Harker out in the lead. Based on the fact that the two absolute cars are pitted. And the number 18 car has got to take a 10 second penalty at their next pit stop. So it's looking very difficult indeed for Andrew Harianto. Now, the gap between Harianto and Keeks in the two cars is only going to be about 10 seconds or so by my mathematics, unless there's been a real problem at the Be Quick Absolute Racing pit stop. I'm going to have to double check when they come through. 16.8 seconds. So a little bit of a sluggish stop for the Be Quick Absolute car. And they're only 3.7 seconds now ahead of Sandy Stuvik in the Craft Bamboo. Reed Harker, I think, in the EBM Giga car still needs to make a pit stop. So for my money, there are still three cars in this race. Oh, no, sorry. Three pit stops have now been made by the EBM Giga Racing car. So this is the outright positions. So Reed Harker in the EBM Giga Racing Porsche is the actual leader of the race now. They've had three pit stops rotation. A couple of teams have had four for various different reasons, but the leading cars, every car in the top seven, overall have all made three pit stops and three pit stops alone so this is ultimately the actual race order and the EBM Giga Racing Team with Reed Harker at the wheel is 40 seconds nearly ahead of the absolute racing Audi of Andrew Harianto which has got to serve a 10 second penalty next time after Marcus Winkelhock repeatedly abused track limits in the eyes of the officials Henk Kix has now moved up into third position again in the Be Quick Absolute Racing car, although I think actually Sandy Stuvik in the Craft Bamboo may have managed to move up into third position, depending on when the car crossed the line. But the EBM Giga Racing Porsche of Reed Harker, that is the actual race leader. That's not waiting for another pit stop or two to happen. That's on pace and on merit. So the New Zealander, Reed Harker, captaining his troops beautifully. Here's that coming towards us. That is the Aston Martin. Is the Viper Niza racing car of Jasmine Jafar. So it's another fast lap, a 209.4. The only car that was faster than that on the previous lap, well, the only two cars, were the AAI BMW of Tanat Southern Theoretical and also the race leader, Reed Harker. So we're in the midst of a fabulous battle here as the pit stop procedures have all gone through. Everybody in the top end has had three pit stops apiece. So now it comes down to who is at the sharp end. The Craft Bamboo has got through into third position. But Henk Kicks is only 3.6 seconds back from Sandy Stubik in the Craft Bamboo. So there's only a minute and three seconds between the top four cars in this race. And there's only another 25 seconds or so back to Chen Chen Hua in the AAI BMW. This is still a very open race. It's still a very open competition. And we've still got a fair way left of it. Three hours and 46 minutes still to go. There's a lot that can still happen here, but this is such a giant killing effort from the EBM Giga Racing Team. Reed Harker running the lead. There he is, leading this race. The Sepang 12 Hours is looking good for a Porsche to win again. They've already won the event four times over the years. They are the most successful manufacturer in the Sepang 12 Hours, and Porsche would dearly love to make it five and Reed Harker is definitely going about that the right way out there in the car. His teammates on the sidelines just enjoying the moment. Adrian De Silva and Nazim Asman. I'm not sure they would have expected to be leading at this stage of the race, but at the halfway point, that is exactly where the EBM Giga Racing team find themselves. Leading the way with several more battles to come. But it's certainly looking really strong for the Kiwi up front. Reed Harker taking it one lap at a time you don't need to push yourself too hard here just look after the car just look after yourself keep yourself in the zone keep focused one step at a time and reed harker giving ebm giga exactly what they deserve here a very impressive and very strong run andrew harianto running in the absolute audi in second place from sandy stuvik in the craft bamboo and then the be quick absolute of hen kicks fourth position all of these cars covered by a little over a minute with four hours still to go. Well, less than that now, three hours 45 still to go.
going to be a really entertaining second half to the race. I would estimate now that we're looking at about 208, 209 laps total for the Sepang 12 hours. We'll just reach the second century, but we won't do many more laps after that point. I'm absolutely astonished that in this time, we haven't really had yellow flags or anything. Well, certainly not a yellow flag period anyway. But I think you see must respect track limits at turn six. That's the first warning for car number four, the R&B Lamborghini. He's done a fantastic job considering he's coming to the team cold and without any decent testing time behind him. It's been fascinating to watch these guys battle out. The total laps covered by all participants at this point, 1,359. 45 pit stops so far. We're on lap 114. We have had no time under safety car, no time under full course yellow, no time under code 60. It has been one of the cleanest GT races I think I've ever seen in my life. And it's been a brilliant indicator that Sepang is ready to host these big events again, as is Malaysia as a country. I really hope, I'm touching wood as I say that, there's been absolutely no major incidents in this race. And the drivers are just getting on with it, they're just ticking laps down. Reed Harker in the EBM Giga racing car, having a great run. Now into the pits comes uh, Chen Chen Wah in the AAI BMW number 15. Still going strong. Oh, a bit of a run out wide there for the AMAC Motorsport car. That is Ben Porter at the wheel. Andrew McPherson and Andre Hemgartner, his teammates. They get back on the power once again as they storm round. Now into the pits, there is the AAI BMW that we talked about. So Chen Chen Wah. Getting into, is there a driver change? I didn't see if there was a driver change. But certainly they've got two great drivers to choose from, in Jesse Krud and Jens Klingman. who can both take over very admirably indeed. Looks like they have made a driver change because there is an adjustment of seat belts going on. But I couldn't tell you at this exact moment which driver it is that's got in. I can't tell from that distance whether that's Jesse or whether that's Jens. But there is the leading car, Reed Harker in the EVM Giga Racing car. He's sharing that with Nazim Asman, making his GT debut. And they also have the very skillful and very talented young step, Adrian De Silva, in the car. He's been GT racing since 2008. I'm happy to call him a youngster because he'll be very happy about it. Third in the Malaysian Super Series 11 years ago. Third in the Asian Touring Car Series in 2009. He's been there and done it all. But what he hasn't done is won the Sabang 12 hours. And this is his best shot. As out onto the circuit again goes Jesse Kroon in the AAI Motorsport BMW. So they put Jesse Kroon into the car for this next phase of the race. Getting out onto the circuit behind the race leaders in the AM category. That is the modern Porsche of John Shen. Now, Reed Harker has been told he has to respect track limits at turn four. That's his first warning. So he's got to be very careful about uh, abusing track limits himself. But there is the Aston Martin. That is Yasmin Jafar, down in 11th position, having had a mechanical stoppage earlier on in the day. And so they've got to recover about three laps on the rest of their competitors out there. Although, David Chen is now in the Harmony Racing Ferrari instead of Alex Imperatore. So they've had a pit stop. And that's going to bring Yasmin Jafar and the Aston Martin team back into it a little bit. Here's the Graf Bamboo, third position for the tie driver, Sanish Tuvik. Staying out long in the car with his teammates, Jeffrey Lee and Liang Jatong. Still watching from the sidelines, hoping for this podium to stay nailed to the mast. Battle for the AM category is really heating up. John Shen in the modern Porsche is just 10.4 seconds now ahead of Talat Sathan Tarokul in the number 91 AAI BMW. And Ben Porter in the AMAC Porsche is only 20 seconds back from that. And these are the three remaining cars in the AM category because the fourth, the AAI BMW of uh, the number 90 crew, the Chinese Taipei row, they continued on in fine style until lap 27 when the car finally decided it had had enough. Chinese Taipei, of course, represented by the man in second position in the AM category. Tanah Satantarakul, the team from AAI Motorsports, 
obviously representing Chinese Taipei. The band Transition, the official Olympic soundtrack to uh, Chinese Taipei for the London Olympics back in 2012. Good mates of mine, the band Transition. I opened for them once many, many years ago. <laughs> Good old uh, Sean Hensonwood was uh, arguing about them, was telling me we well, don't know how early it is to get the singing voice out, but I certainly did for the official Olympic band of Chinese Taipei many years ago. So if the guitar is needed in a red flag period later, you know where to find me. But the EBM Giga Racing team out in front has no need for a decent tune to keep people interested in their progress. Reed Harker leads the way by 41 seconds to Andrew Harianto in the absolute racing car, although at their next pit stop, they need to add an additional 10 seconds penalty to their pit stop. Sandy Stuvig running third in the Craft Bamboo. And Henk Kicks running fourth in the Be Quick Absolute Audi. 14 seconds back from Sandy Stuvik and the Craft Bamboo uh, squad. Fifth position for the R&B Lamborghini of uh, Afik Yassid. And then the AAI BMW, the leading car from the Chinese Taipei-based outfit. Jesse Kroon is behind the wheel. They were leading at one stage, but then who hasn't been at various points of the race? The R&B Lamborghini has been a race leader. The Craft Bamboo has led. The Absolute Racing cars have both led at certain stages, as has the AAI Motorsport car of Jesse Kroon, Jens Klingman, and Chin Chen Wai. But at the moment, it is Reed Harker at the EBM Giga Racing Team, beyond half distance, that leads the way. There is the Harmony Ferrari, currently being driven by Chen Wayan. Partnered, of course, by uh, Wa Ruwa and uh, Alexandra Imperatori, who did so much work to get their speed back up to whack again. This is now Chen Wayan, who is in the car, number 488 number so chosen because that is the model of the Ferrari that is being raced of course in just a few weeks time the brand new Ferrari GT3 car which is the Ferrari 296 is going to be making its uh, international competition debut it won't be too long before the Asian GT world manages to get its hands on that new 296 every sort of four or five years of rotation for Ferrari GT cars before they bring the latest model there is the absolute Audi, Andrew Harianto, the Indonesian, running in second position at the moment, but that car needs to have an additional 10 seconds penalty the next time it comes into the pits. There is Reed Harker, our race leader in the EVM Giga racing car. Oh, no, wait, that is the Lamborghini emerging out of the shadows. That is uh, Afik Yazid sharing the car with Ye Hong Lee and Bao Jin Long with the R&B Lamborghini. Continuing on, the R&B racing team have already had a very busy 2023. They uh, sent a few cars over to the United Arab Emirates and Kuwait to compete in the Formula Regional Middle East Championship, also organized by Top Speed. And they had some uh, fairly decent competitors there. They also gave the Formula Regional debut to the young Bulgarian talent, Nikola Tsolov, who was a protege of Fernando Alonso. So R&B racing have had a very busy winter, masterminding young talents and trying to work their craft further forward. Been a really interesting battle for the team so far. They've had a really exciting run. And still the drivers battle on. They certainly had some good fun when they were out in uh, the Middle East. It was uh, exciting racing that we saw from them. They managed to run Giovanni Mascio, Han Chen Yu and Wang Zhong Wei, as well as Tang Robin and Nikola Tsolov through the course of the season Good to see them all putting on uh, a good display out in the Middle East but still the battles rage on here at Sepang and the teams are just keeping it together no chaos no disasters no dramas bring the car home at the end of your stint keep it nice and tidy but now we have a real battle for the race victory emerging there is your race leader the, the EBM Giga Racing Porsche of Reed Harker the Kiwi doing a great job. 44 seconds ahead of the absolute Audi of Andrew Harianto, which needs to take a 10-second penalty at its next pit stop, don't forget, for repeatedly abusing track limits under the capable hands of Marcus Winkelhock. So definitely an interesting situation for the contenders as they continue and put on a great display. So still the drivers battle on. These are the highlights of the race that we're looking back on. 
spot the moments where the all drivers did what they were supposed to do. Still they rage on. This circuit really does lend itself to some great images under the lights. As you can see, we've had several teams taking their turn at the front. Over the course of the last hour or so, it has been a great deal watching these guys battle for position. These two cars are still battling at the time. They were battling for fourth. Now they're battling for third position. Chen Chen The crew have run as high as third at one stage. They're currently running in P6, by the way, behind the R&B Lamborghini of Abid Yassid. These two cars have been battling for the lead for quite a long time, and they're still battling. The gap between them now is 45 seconds. There's Reed Harker making his bid the inside and making a good run of things he's looking back over the highlights which is why it says that there's four and a half hours to go and it's actually three hours and 34 minutes to go but the teams have definitely been batting away it's been good to see jasmine jabbar get the aston martin back up to speed after their earlier technical difficulties but the race is well and truly joined here in spain 12 hours under the floodlights pretty exciting there is the Amac Motorsport team then Porter Andrew McPherson and Andre Heimgartner the team currently running in third position in the AM category second in the AM category is the number 91 of BMW the AAI Motorsports team based in Chinese Taipei the driver behind the wheel at the moment is Talat Sapatirakul they've been working very hard since the start there is the car that's running in second place in the category the leading AM car however is the modern Motorsport Porsche Currently being driven by the Hong Kong driver John Shen. Leads the way. Good battles everywhere you look. This was a nice moment. When catching out the BMW completely unawares, we saw the RB Racing Lamborghini make the move. And then round the outside, we then saw the same thing from the Kraft Bamboo. Mercedes AMG car. I was making some good moves. But this is the controversial one. Marcus Finkelhock in the absolute Audi repeated the abusing track limits. They've now had 10 second penalty added to their time. Check this guy out. Reed Harker made it look absolute child's play out there. As the EBM Giga Racing car continues to step it up. We had some great duels between these two. Do. Alexandra Imperatore and Yasmin Jafar. It almost ended with Jafar going into the side of the Ferrari. Unfortunately, they kept it without contact been the perfect GT race from the organizers point of view once we actually got started because there's been no yellow flags there's been no safety cars there's been no code 60s everybody's just got on with it it's been a pure motor race which is exactly what we were hoping for and now the top four cars are separated by I'd say about a minute and a half because uh, the be quick absolute car has really fallen off in pace in the last uh, 20 laps or so and that gap is now up to 27 seconds between them and the Kraft Bamboo in third position. So an interesting situation, but a very tough race still in the offing. Sean Hensherwood is back in the room, and it is perfect timing. It's a four-way fight for the victory now. One thing I was going to add is this, and there's no rain yet. There is a little bit just <laughs> floating around off the coast out to the Strait of Malacca, and uh, maybe it'll come in, maybe it won't. Anyway, whatever. How, how's it been? What have, what have I missed? Well, there's been a penalty handed to the absolute racing Audi. Uh, Magnus, uh, Marcus Winkelhock was abusing track limits far too much. The team manager had to report to the stewards, and they've now got 10 seconds added penalty to their next pit stop, which is really going to hamper their chances of closing in on the EBM Giga Racing team. All of the top four teams have now had three pit stops. So this is the true order. And it's actually Reed Harker, the Kiwi, doing a sensational job out front, keeping good pace. Their pace has been pretty metronomic. They're keeping it in the 209s. But so too is the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes. They're starting to chip away. The absolute Audi is really starting to falter at this point of the race. They're kind of costing themselves time here. They need to get themselves back into it. What's even more exciting is that we've had a lead change in the last 10 minutes in the AM category. The AAI Motorsport BMW, uh, driven by Talat Sadatarakul, has finally managed to get past the modern Porsche that's been leading since the late Middle Ages. Uh, John Shen still there in second position, only two and a half seconds back. But even Ben Porter in the AMAC Porsche, they're only 27 seconds back, so that could still go anybody's way too. How good's this? In the middle of the row, we've probably gone past the middle point of the race now, finally. 
uh, to be in this situation where you've got such a close fight, both for outright and for uh, for the Am honours. So it's going to be an interesting close to this race. You go and have a, a bit of a lie down because uh, I reckon you've done some pretty hard yards so far today. I shall indeed, sir. Thank you. And you're going to really enjoy the next hour. Both categories so close for the victory. Andrew Harrianto on screen. The Indonesian driver charges around again. The former Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup champion. Loves this circuit. In fact, from memory, and I use that word a little, uh, he may well have won his championship here under lights against Burit Birambakti. So this is a circuit that uh, he remembers only too fondly. He's got a Ferrari ranging up behind him by the look of things. But currently the Harmony Racing entry, he's got David Chen, Behind the wheel, they are a little bit further back down in the order in position number 10. Harry Anto, 43 seconds, 46 seconds now behind Reed Harker. And these combinations are going to be uh, very interesting to watch. I wonder whether or not we will have seen the end of Andrew Harry Anto's stints at the close of this one. And we'll see the, uh, the remainder of this race played out between Yu Kwai and Marcus Winkelhoff. Yu Kwai did a brilliant job during his stint in the car. David Chen really has managed to hunt down Andrew Harrianto. It looks like there will be a uh, change of track position, not outright position, because uh, there are a couple of laps between the two cars. In fact, Harrianto is on lap 121. David Chen, unfortunately, on lap 117. So there's a four lap difference, but the Ferrari is really starting to uh, find some pace. Last time around, David Chen in the 210s. Arianto also in uh, the 210s. But I think the Ferrari driver is uh, a little hungrier at this point. There is John Shen still getting around in that modern motorsport Porsche. This could well be the end of his stints. Leave it to the Char brothers to, uh, to finish this off. Francis and certainly Christian's pace was very good during his first stint in the car. Just as we got on to dusk, we're now well and truly under lights. And Reed Harker is, as uh, Jake was saying, doing an absolutely stellar job. 209.7 last time round. 287 is the fastest lap from that car now if adrian de silva can manage to find the pace that he was showing during the early leg of the race he started the number 16 bbm giga racing entry if he can find that pace during his next stint and he might well be next in after reed harker which would leave nazim asman who did a brilliant job during his stint the young malaysian driver not well versed with gt driving but boy he's uh, fast tracking his experience with an eight hour race He's learned an awful lot about how to make one of these cars work over the course of the last couple of days. And uh, during his first stint, he really found some impressive pace and, and went beyond uh, the pace we saw during qualifying. He didn't improve his time, but it was just more consistent. The qualifying time was one out of the box because he needed it in order to, uh, to make up important track position, but he's just been consistently quick. And who's in the 26th entry at the moment? That is... Team boss, car owner, Hink Kicks. Be quick by Absolute Racing entry. Both these Audis are Evo 2s. Lamborghinis an Evo 1. It's the uh, new Evo 2 made its debut at the Daytona 24-hour race. We haven't seen the new uh, generation car in this part of the world. 992 Porsche GT3Rs with the uh, AMAC car and the uh, EBM Giga Racing entry. As Hink kicks, fires in another solid lap. Now Hink's pace at the moment, last time around 2.11. That's pretty impressive for the team boss. It's just what they need him to be doing. All the engineers will be calling numbers. There'll be a window that they would like their driver to compete in full well that uh, with a little bit of uh, thunderstorm activity in the area not immediately at the circuit but it can as those of you who have been to the circuit before know only too well appear out of nowhere and, and appear very quickly doesn't really look like on the radar there's enough activity for uh, for that to be an issue but it's 
unpredictable. We're in the tropics. Um, this far, we have managed to avoid inclement weather. Let's hope it stays that way through the remainder of this race. Although, those of you who are purists do like to uh, action as the number 15 entry hits pit lane from position number six, Jesse Crone. Finished driver is in pit lane. Now, who will he end up Back to who started the race, Kevin Chen? Or is it Jens Klingman going to jump back behind the wheel? Kevin may have done enough. I think he's run two stints, stints now in the car. We'll soon see. It's the fist team AAI BMW M4. Comes in very slowly. In fact, I wonder whether it's run out of fuel that's running so slowly. I mean, there is a speed limit and there is, uh, yeah, a lack of uh, fumes and vapour in the uh, in the tank to actually get the car down to its pit lane so that's not what that team wanted to see they were uh, they're in fairly strong contention a couple of laps back this is even worse news this isn't a refueling issue this is uh, back into the pit bay that'll be two bmws for the uh, team from chinese taipei out of the race at this point we saw the uh, the team boss jun sun chen in pit lane after just 26 laps. Viper Niza racing Aston Martin Vantage GT3. I was going to say GT4, then I've just been doing a bit more research to update my uh, spec. It's been a few years since I've called a GT race. And I did, I think, admit earlier that the AMG GT3 might have been a four litre twin turbo. That, of course, is the GT4 car. Still that thundering great 6.3 litre naturally aspirated. Mercedes AMG V8. It's an unmistakable sound. I was a bit surprised you could get that kind of sound out of a twin turbo four litre, but hey, they do work miracles. HWA. But no, it is still the engine we know and love. That great big thundering 6.3 litre V8 and what a sound it makes. I think at some point there was plans that uh, there may be specification change as BMW have recently made from their twin turbo V8 through to the uh, twin turbo in line six for the new M6. Unfortunately, it was sidelined early with a number 90 entry. And the car that's just pulled into pit lane is also the car that uh, is shared between Kevin Chen, Jens Klingman and Jesse Crone. There is the one surviving fist team AAI BMW. Chen was behind the wheel a little bit earlier. Tanart Sathian Thirikul is back behind the wheel. And he's been the faster of the trio. Pity Beer and Barkley did a fantastic job. Of course, a lot of experience around here. Run in the past in uh, various categories from GD World Challenge Asia to GT Asia, the forerunner to the uh, SRO international platform. Back in those days, in the 458 Ferrari, of course, the uh, Birenbachtis have a great association through Singer with uh, with Ferrari. Go back a few years to uh, Kimi Raikkonen racing the Ferrari with the uh, Singer logos emblazoned on the car. These days, it's quite likely Singer's still involved with Ferrari at some level. I haven't picked that up with the uh, the current car, but. Certainly they are associated with the uh, the Alfa Romeo team. And uh, another fin. Oh, OK. So that is the GDC entry. The FM Motorsport by Silver Rocket entry. Now, this might just be uh, maintenance with what they need to update in the front of the car because there isn't any engine in there. So that might just be uh, heat from, from brakes. There has been a driver change there. That isn't Sean Tong. So that's either Simon Chan or uh, Lee Jia, who's jumped out of the car. Get an update on that one. In fact, Lee Jia 
is listed, so it may be Lee Jar that's got out of the car. So you'd expect Simon Chan has jumped in. Sean Dong's helmet's quite obvious. It's uh, blue and yellow, predominantly blue at the front. Can't actually see anything at the moment with the bonnet up. If you call it a bonnet, if it's not the bonnet, the bonnet might be at the back. Maybe that's the hood. And again, that's American. Now, I'm sure somebody will pick that one up. But the lid's up. And uh, the team aren't in any particular hurry. They're still refueling. Control fuel for all of these cars. As per the uh, control Hankook tyres. Consistent performance, and there is that fantastic view across at those iconic grandstands for Sepang International Circuit. There's this coming through the glare. That is the number 88 Craft Bamboo J Fly Mercedes AMG GD3 with the 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V8. Sandy Stuvik at the wheel, position number three. 59 seconds behind the race leader, but interestingly, just 9.8 seconds behind Andrew Harrianto, who currently holds six, uh, sorry, second position. What I was trying to allude to was with a 10 second penalty, this actually puts the number 88 Mercedes into position number two. We still have three hours, 20 minutes left in this race. So a lot of things can change in that time. But as things stand, we were talking early in the race, and uh, as Jake called it, one of the favourites. It's quite likely the, uh, the double eight Craft Bamboo Mercedes. The Audis, of course, are in there, and uh, most certainly the number 16 EBM Giga Racing Porsche. Stable mate in, uh, in generation, of course, to the car on screen. The iMac, Andrew McPherson owned Porsche GT3R, type 992. Looks great with the yellow lights too. The car actually looks pretty, pretty impressive under lights. At the moment, being steered very nicely by Ben Porter, Australian driver. Regular in the uh, stable mate of the AMAC team. Seen some uh, great results with Andrew McPherson over recent years. 2021 Australian GT. Well, I'll take a step back. GT World Challenge Australia AM Class Champion. 2019 GT World Challenge Asia AM Class Champions in a Huracan GT3. So have shared a uh, lot of success together. And there is... Harry Anto in the uh, slipstream of Dominic Young in the Viper Racing Aston Martin. Heading up to turn four. Through goes the GDC Porsche. So that leaves just the two AAI Motorsports BMWs in pit lane effectively rule the uh, the 90 entry out it hasn't moved anywhere now for 100 laps so uh, it is effectively retired even though it doesn't say that officially the jesse crone entry has just come into pit lanes now back in position 10 they're now five laps in arrears from the leaders so that would effectively rule them out at this stage of the race to be an outright contender it's getting a little bit too far back in race order David Chen continues to charge around last lap at 210 that's not too bad a 2081 quickest lap the Alex Imperatore's first stint David Chen of course has done a lot of miles around Asia came into motorsport late in the piece was uh, studying and very focused on business was uh, included in the um, in the regular racing that was done at Juhai, introduced to that, and uh, very quickly joined the Audi Sport R8 LMS Club as an AM driver. And I have to say, having called that for a number of years, when we first saw him compete, we, 
we looked at each other a lot and said, how's this guy an AM driver? He'd often be competing just outside the uh, the leading drivers. And you had drivers like uh, Alessio Picariello and uh, Martin Rump, Sean Dong, another one. Very, uh, very experienced drivers with a great pedigree and a lot of experience um, racing with this young driver from China. So uh, David Chen, I mean, he might be the team boss and he might be... Uh, he might be considered an AM entry in that team, but he's a very, very accomplished driver. It's interesting to see that uh, Ben Porter has come back into pit lane. Does it look like they're doing a driver change down there? Yeah, well, somebody looks like they might have popped out. Yeah. So Porter's out. There's a white helmet going in. That could be AMAC, but uh, also Andre, he Andre Heimgartner, New Zealander sports a white helmet. So it could be the Kiwi jumping behind the wheel. And you'll soon see, soon see by the race pace. Very impressive performance just a week ago on the streets of Newcastle for the opening round of the Australian Supercars Series. Brad Jones Racing driver was consistently, during practice sessions, the fastest driver on track in his brand new Gen 3 Chevy Camaro. Didn't quite get the end results the team were looking for during the races. They were uh, fair, fairly torrid affairs. Ben Porter wanders back with his uh, seat insert. A little bit different height-wise to Andre Heimgarten as David Chen fires down the inside of Andrew Harrianto. Battle's been going on for a little while. In fact, I think they're all very close to uh, making contact just as he turned in. We were talking earlier about visibility in a modern GT3 car. There's an awful lot that you uh, you have to battle. It's not... not the least being seat position, being low and further back than the road car. But uh, helmets on and, and helmet apertures and not to mention fatigue and heat and everything else going on. If you uh, if you make a dive, you want to make very, very certain that the car in front of you has seen you. Otherwise, you're going to be in all sorts of trouble, both for you and for them, potentially. And that's the last thing you need on a, uh, a very wide open, fast flowing international circuit like uh, Sepang. The Matilka designed and built circuit specifically for F1. So F1 spent a lot of time on this circuit. In fact, uh, lap record, I think, was a 134. We go back to uh, Sebastian Vettel. Let's go find my notes to uh, recover exactly what that lap time was. But uh, he certainly held the lap record outright for Sepang International Circuit with 134.08. The lap record outright for a GT3 car was held by James Collado. I say was, is held by James Collado in a Ferrari 488 GT3. It was set in 2019 at a 2.03.8. And interestingly, we saw in qualifying yesterday, sorry, this morning, the fastest time was set by uh, Marcus Winkelhock with a 204.32, so just half a second from the pace back in 2019, and that would have been a well-rubbered circuit at that particular time. A racetrack that uh, had seen plenty of action, We've been in and through it a number of times today about uh, the lack of motorsport activity in this part of the world over the last three and a half years. So uh, the Sepang circuit wasn't particularly race-ready there's been a bit of testing going on, but certainly not the miles it's used to seeing. So uh, the, um, the the track may not have been in prime condition. So for these guys to be turning laps just half a second off the outright lap record, pretty impressive performance. Obviously a factory Audi driver. You would expect that it would be a, a fairly impressive performance as Reid Harker continues to lead this race, the lead out to uh, 56.1 seconds now. Sandy Stuvik should just about be in frame now. That was him, I would hazard a guess. 5.7 seconds behind Andrew Harrianto. So the uh, Craft Bamboo Racing by J-Fly Mercedes is closing in every single lap. In fact, last time round, Stuvik turned in uh, second fastest lap of the race. Third fastest, as it turns out, at 2.10.8. 2095 to Reed Harker. So the race leader's continuing to increase that lead. So the young Kiwi is doing absolutely everything that's asked of him. And 
and uh, will be interesting. Will be interesting to see who jumps in in the next stint. I'd, I'd suggest that perhaps Adrian De Silva would be well placed to jump in now, and that would allow the uh, two younger drivers, Nazim Asman and Reid Harker, to close out this race and put them well and truly, I would expect, in the box seat. And Kicks would be completing his last stint in the car, as will Andrew Harrianto. Three hours, nine minutes still to go in this race. So depending on when they last hit pit lane, we're seeing some teams make their fourth stop. It'd be interesting to have data to see exactly when and where those teams did make that stop. Of course, with the commentary changeover, notes aren't much good. <laughs> We're not actually sharing them at the moment, so we just have to run on uh, when the teams next come back into pit lane. And that will be... That will be our gauge. It's the 101 entry. GTC entry with Simon Chan behind the wheel. The FM Motorsport by Silver Rocket entry. Green really punches. 992 Cup car. The race leader, no, it's John Shen. It's a bit hard to see in this light exactly which, but those flames really do light up the night. So John Shen's continuing to circulate. 26 seconds back now from the race lead held by uh, Tanat Sathian Thirikul in GT3 AM, position number seven for Modern Motorsport. A quick look at uh, updates. John Shen must respect track limits. Turn six. In fact, uh, I think Yazid's done the same thing at turn six. He's had a second warning. So now turn six is starting to slip into the equation. Just wonder whether the track conditions just changing slightly. It'll be starting to cool off. Obviously the sun's gone, so that level of heat will be gone. Ambient temperatures still likely to be around the low 30s. Current updates in a window of about two to three hours. So it's talking anywhere from 32 down to 30 degrees. So just refresh the, uh, the radar. And it's telling me that that big storm is still well north of KL, so I don't think that's going to impact. But that uh, it's Shah Alam, for anybody who uh, has any experience in motorsport in this part of the world, Shah Alam was where the original race circuit was in uh, in Malaysia, and that uh, bred the likes of Alex uh, Alex Yung, whose uh, father worked at Shah Alam, and of course Alex became Malaysia's first and to this point only Formula One driver. I think that's right. Hmm. I'm sure somebody will point out if I'm not, but uh, certainly Alex Jung is a driver with a great pedigree too in GT racing. He went on to become a three-time Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup champion before mentoring drivers. These days he's uh, running his Axel Motorsport operation, which is very much an online thing, but training the next generation of drivers, one of which is Alistair Jung, his son, He's about 17 feet tall. Um, very talented young driver. The only uh, challenge he'll find is uh, just getting into cockpits and fitting in. Certainly height isn't one thing that, uh, something that racing drivers have as an advantage. Sandy Stuvik in pit lane. Now we're assuming there may have been a driver change. I wonder whether or not we will see Jeffrey Lee driver from Chinese Taipei take over the wheel or whether in fact it will be Liang Xiaotong and that's exactly who it is so Liang's taken over not sure whether Jeffrey whilst I've been uh, having a breather may have completed his second stint so will have been uh, through and concluded that Two younger drivers in the car will take over the uh, the final stints. Certainly, San Stan Sandy Stuvik, the reigning Thailand Super Series champion, three-time Thailand Super Series champion, will uh, 
be capable of uh, running a couple of strong stints later into the night. Of course, we had a two-hour delay at the start of the race, which was a little unforeseen. Bit of damage at turn one to the Armco railing, which needed to be repaired. And that led us into a much later start. So instead of the scheduled four o'clock, it became six o'clock. Just checking that's right. Yeah. Four o'clock became, sorry, two o'clock became four o'clock. Different time zones. Uh, scheduled finishing time now becoming midnight as opposed to 10 p.m. So that's three hours local time. We're heading up towards nine o'clock Malaysian time. So Leon gets out and uh, gets himself comfortable in the car again. Reed Harker out to over a minute now. So this is arguably the biggest lead we've seen in this race so far. Doing a stellar job, the young Kiwi, as is John Shen. Not so young, but not so uh, shabby. His pace last time around, 2.12. That is impressive. Considering the best lap for that car is at 2.10, that is super consistent. The Char brothers and uh, John Shen are doing absolutely everything the modern motorsport team want. Of course, they've had plenty of experience. They've done a, uh, a lot of uh, driving in the 24-hour series, the Creventic series, been over to the Middle East and around various different parts of the world racing in that series. In those days, it was with Wayne Shen, who uh, sadly is no longer with us. His brother, John, is uh, carrying the torch and continuing on, and his pace just seems to have improved as he's gotten older. That won't go on forever, but um, very well versed to how to get the most out of these cars. Can you see the glowing exhaust under the rear of the uh, GT3R Porsche? Just have a look at the back of it as we go through to nine, all glowing red. It's one of the impressive sights of this kind of racing at night time between the glowing discs under hard braking to the exhaust glowing red hot. Imagine the uh, the challenges the engines in all these cars are going through, running at absolutely maximum over eight, eight hours of competition. I'm sure they're more than happy to be pulling stumps at eight hours and not going the full quota of 12 hours. But as Nicky Kemp, who's uh, famous with PR Plus for uh, supporting the media for motorsport all over the Asian region, made comment just earlier that. Uh, she thinks the racing so far has been absolutely fantastic and this really is the birth of a new era of motorsport in this part of the world and this will strongly kick things on and uh, certainly Davide de Gobi and his team at top speed have been at the forefront of pushing motorsport forward in this part of the world and a very experienced campaign that goes back to experience in his uh, home country of Italy with uh, with the Prema power team, as it was in those days, those days, or Prema racing as it is now, who uh, dominate open wheel racing all over the world these days. Certainly a big part of the Formula Regional Asian Championships and into F2 now and into LMP. They've been involved in many forms of motorsport, and that's certainly where uh, Davida cut his teeth and through those experiences on the coalface of some of the toughest racing anywhere in the world. He's, uh, he's impressed upon the Asian region for more than a decade now, just the benefits of that experience and it has brought motorsport forward in leaps and bounds. Like anybody, he could do nothing about the last three and a half years. That goes into the history books as something that we hope never to see again, but that alone certainly brought motorsport to its knees in the Asian region. And, Events like this, getting back up to speed, are what we've all been looking forward. So, only 13 entries, sadly, but there is a lot involved in running a major endurance race. And arguably, the Sepang 12 hours for many, many years has been one of the preeminent GT races anywhere in the world. And we'll get back to that. We will have uh, very strong fields in years to come. This is showing the world that we're open for business. Motorsport is underway again in Asia and uh, come and join us because it's only going to get bigger. Driver change updates. Uh, Leung Jatong has left pit lane. That's the most recent updates. We've seen all of that unfold. 
we'll un see unfold before too much longer. I should imagine is Andrew Harrianto hitting pit lane for a driver change. Well, that is uh, Audi Sport Asia Junior driver Yukai, or the experienced veteran. I suppose I can use it once you get over 40. Surely you become a veteran. What well, makes me a major veteran? But anyway, I'm a veteran plus, but. Marcus Winklehock would fall into uh, that realm. So either of those two drivers will take over the reins from Harry Anto. He's probably going to stick his feet up and have a nice cool drink and watch things unfold. I'm sure crack the odd joke or two. Something he's more than famous for. Always a, uh, a smile on his face. Actually, it's a cheeky smile, which means he's been up to something. Watch where you put your wallet, I have to tell you. But uh, Andrew's been a great part of the, uh, the, motors, the motorsport environment in Asia for a lot of years. And to see him enjoying his motor racing and going over to European Le Mans and racing in Le Mans in the 24-hour race, that's been fantastic. Let's take a look back at some of the action a little bit earlier in the night. Great battle between Imperatore and Jasmine Jafar. Juan Gartner out for his stint. AMAC Porsche. Of course, Marcus Winkelhock has uh, done fantastic things for the number 16 entry, but by the same token, he's also put him in a little bit of jeopardy. I'm sure he can make that up on, uh, on track in race time during his stint, but 10 seconds lost due to track limits is a uh, pretty big kick in the teeth. The team will have to, uh, to work that one off. There's still plenty of time to try and recover it, but in the efforts it took for him to work his way back through from through the field. I think they dropped back to about fourth after their pit stop once Winklehock had taken the reins. Got himself back into a comfortable lead, but in doing so, just overran the uh, the track limits in different parts of the circuit. Turn 14 was the one that seemed to pop up most often. Six and eight have also been areas of concern for drivers going beyond the track limits. Turn four was a big one yesterday during practice. And that looks like it may be the Viper Niza racing Aston Martin, or is that a Porsche? Is that Reed Harker in pit lane? Let me just check. Uh, it is, in fact, Reed Harker. That is a Porsche. It's difficult to see whether that was blue or green. But certainly, that is the race leader. He is now in pit lane. So that will put Andrew Harrianto potentially into the lead. Go and have a nice, uh, cool drink and a lie down, Reed. You've done a fabulous job. Now let's see, is it De Silva in the car or is it Asman back in the car? Will Adrian De Silva take uh, perhaps the penultimate stint of this race? Leave Reed Harker to, to go out and smash out the final laps because these guys have suddenly put themselves right in contention for this race. Absolutely no question about that whatsoever. Car 26 driver Hank Kicks must respect track limits at turn four for first warning so we were talking just a moment ago about turn four being an issue john shen's also done the same thing Yang jatong has done the same thing at turn four so turn four is coming into it it's different how different parts of the circuit have uh, come into play as the track conditions have changed rubber going down it's getting later in the night I'm sure there's a little bit of fatigue for drivers and teams as well, but also the track condition itself so far as cooling off. Just the way the cars have been set up, maybe now as they're hitting this part of the circuit, it's changed. It's not turn 14 anymore. That may well change once Mark Wink Marcus Winklehock gets back behind the wheel. But let's see. As uh, Well, still says Reid Harker, waiting for an update. That should come about now. It's not Reed Harker. Who is the mystery driver? We'll have to wait a lap to see just who is back behind the wheel. Now, I would assume that uh, quite comfortably, Andrew Harrianto will have gone through to take the lead again of the race. Car 16 is heading up to turn four. There it is on screen. You can see where, uh, well, that's car 26 as it turns out. So that's Hen Kicks in position number three. Just waiting on an update 
for, sorry, so the 16's going through turn six. The 18 was the car that I was looking for. It's just about to cross the start finish line now, so there should be an update. Andrew Harrianto, P1, right on cue. Now that's on my timing monitor. Sorry for those of you listening to me and not having access necessarily to the live timing direct from the circuit. Slightly delayed, obviously, in the, uh, in the signal for the television. Not by much, though. Well, the 18 car's now leading at 1.36. So it's not too much. Traditionally, about 10, 15 seconds. Hink kicks on screen. Holding down position three. He will get an update as to where he is, time-wise and position-wise, before too much longer. There's Nico. Keeping tabs on the Viper Niza team. Boy's probably starting to get just a little bit tired. It's getting late in the day. It's been a long, hot day so far for all of the teams. That two-hour delay doesn't really work into the schedule because you get fired up, you're working to a timeline. Everybody knows where they need to be, what they need to do. Have you prepped yourself? Do you have everything sorted so far as... Uh, are, are you hydrated? Is everything sorted? You've got, you've got to work to a timetable. To have that thrown out by two hours, that can really mess with the program for uh, certainly the lesser experienced drivers who aren't accustomed to experiencing that, some of the pro drivers too, but also a lot of those guys spend a bit of time just working themselves up to pace and getting G'd up for the, uh, for the competition and then to have to go away and cool your jets for, for two hours, that doesn't always work as well as uh, as you would expect. So these are little things that will have played into the whole overall equation for today's race. But with two hours, 53 minutes to go, we've got a little bit more time to try and sort out the uh, wood from the trees, work out exactly who is where and when. But we have to get all the drivers on the same page and all the teams on the same page. And that probably really won't start to fall into play before the uh, before the last probably half hour of the race the modern motorsport team keeping tabs there's a whole bunch of guys that have worked together for a very very long time the uh, the chars and the shens it's the 88 entry now with young jatong behind the wheel position five number 88 craft bamboo entry Support from Motul. CBM Media have uh, got a lot to do with the Motul project. Motul, of course, alongside Hankook, great supporters of the Sepang 12 hour. Heavily involved in their motorsport, certainly in Malaysia, but also within the region. 211 last time round for Andrew Harrianto, so probably getting towards the end of the tyre life. Weight certainly dropping from the rear of the car as the fuel unloads. So as they're burning that off, teams look a bit relaxed at the moment. Surely they're watching the uh, the feed online on Nitro or uh, on Hancock Motorsport Asia Facebook. So there he is, through turn nine, up to ten. Completes another lap, 137 laps in the books for the race leader. 10 second additional time penalty during the compulsory stop, which they will uh, no doubt be undertaking before too much longer. The fact that uh, Hark has been in, certainly Adrian De Silva was one of the drivers early in after the 60 minute mark of the race. He concluded the opening stint from about position four, I think, or five from memory. So they've been right in the game since the outset. It's like a uh, couple of Aussies with the AMAC team. Just getting themselves organised. Watching things, yeah. There's AMAC himself, just stuck his head round the corner. entry continues on in position number 11 with Simon Chan still behind the wheel the driver from Hong Kong teammate 
Sean Thong has been the pace setter in that car. Ideally, he'd love to uh, have just a little bit more power. You can see him racing with uh, a couple of the outright cars. Certainly the uh, Craft Bamboo Mercedes at one point. Just eager to get in the race. It's always frustrating when you're the only entry in a category and on outright pace, probably about two seconds a lap off the uh, the cars that you're racing with. So they're racing to their own format. They want to get to the end. They're uh, basically assured victory, provided they make the end of this 12-hour event, the eight hours of the 12-hour event. Just need to paraphrase that. Tank kicks, comes under fire from the R&B Racing Lamborghini, which has now worked itself up to position number three. So they are looking now at position number two as the absolute racing Audis go back to positions one and two. As the pit stops start again to unwind. The top three are yet to have concluded their fourth stop. So to John Shen, who went longest of all the teams during his first stint got to 83 minutes into the race before the modern motorsport porsche hit pit lane hand over to francis char now i think Yazzie is looking to try and take a position away from hank kicks before they hit pit lane given that uh, harry anto is continuing to circulate just make sure on the uh, the timing monitor. Yes, it's just clocked up lap number 139. I can't imagine that these guys will be in pit lane just yet. I think it's almost inevitable with uh, Yazid turning in laps in the 212s. And uh, Hank kicks. Well, OK, more for me. Fastest man, second fastest, third fastest fourth fastest man on track last time round was uh, Hank Kicks with a 2.11.6 if you don't mind. So he's actually quicker than Afik Yazid. So maybe I just need to uh, give myself a good talking to and uh, not discount the performance of the Be Quick team boss because on pace he is holding his own quite comfortably. Thank you very much probably enjoying his last few laps in the car because I should imagine he's well and truly earned himself a good lie down. It's been a stellar performance for the Be Quick team boss. A guy who's uh, used to, well, success in business. That said, the Be Quick team are the reigning champions now of Thailand Super Series. They've had a lot of success over many, many years so they really are a, uh, a form team in this part of the world, backed, of course, by Absolute Racing. Ingo Mater always in there with the Thailand Super Series, making sure things work. Fabian Fjord involved in some of the other projects these days. The two of them were often tied in with the, uh, the same piece of real estate, running Audis, Porsches, Bentleys, all manner of cars, open wheelers prototypes at times they've really been involved in uh, a lot of major motorsport competition within Asia rumor has it they're involved in uh, Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia on its return this year we're talking about the return of the Sepang 12 hour there's a number of championships also returning to Asia in season 2023 of course we've had the Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia powered by AWS over the last couple of years it's focused more particularly on Japan with the uh, newly emerged Japan GT Cup over the last couple of years. We'll kick off in Thailand at uh, Buram, Chang International Circuit on the 13th to 14th of May, then do a four race stint from June through to August at Fuji, Suzuka, Matagi and Okiyama, which is a fabulous circuit. As a racer, it's a fabulous circuit in an amazing location. And then back to Sepang in uh, September, late September, for the final round of their championship. Por Porsche Carrera Cup Asia kicks off right here at Sepang in Malaysia on April 28th to 30, before going to South Korea, Japan, Thailand, Buram, Malaysia, back to Sepang in August, 
off to Marina Bay circuit, rejoining the uh, Singapore Formula One Grand Prix and then finishing at Shanghai in October. The Thailand Super Series also comes to Sepang International Circuit, spends a lot of time at Chang International Circuit, Buriram in Thailand, kicks off on 20th, uh, 20th to 23rd of April. Second round also at Buriram, off to the incredible Bang Sen Grand Prix, which if you're into your Asian motorsport, you can not miss it's one of the greatest events you will ever see rivals these days certainly Macau that could change sorry Nikki Kemp it really is an incredible event but Macau is another event that as Asian motorsport rebuilds and gets back to where it was pre-pandemic stages Macau is really the jewel in the crown of Asian motorsport and we're looking forward to that a little bit later in the year and stories are that we will see Formula 3 back this year and let's hope that uh, we get the international teams back for GT3 because that event was absolutely incredible as long as they stay off the barriers. Uh, we're talking about Thailand Super Series here at Malaysia in um, in August. They also go to Sepang for an invitational race as uh, one of the fist team AAI entries, probably the remaining entry of uh, South Empirical, Betty Chen and Pity Burn Barkley is back in pit lane for their compulsory stop from position number six. And uh, the Thai Super Series finishes in December back at Buriram. Lamborghini Super Trofeo starts here on May uh, 5th or 7th at Sepang International Circuit. Travels to the Ben Motorsport Park in Australia. Yasser Shahin, a, uh, the last ever Audi Sport R8 Lemmas Cup champion. The circuit that he and uh, brother Sam run in uh, South Australia. And off to Fuji, Everland Speedway in South Korea, Shanghai, and finish with the World Series final at uh, Ballalunga in Italy. So lots of motorsport in the Asian region. The Chinese Championship still setting dates. You've got China Deep GT, China Endurance Championship, GDSSC. There is a lot of competition, and of course, TCR Asia, TCR China. So uh, plenty of motorsport in the Asian region over the coming months. And I have to say, I just can't wait. It's going to be fantastic to go proper racing again, just like we are right here, right now, at the Sepang 12 hours. The number 91 entry has hit pit lane for a driver change. Canart Sathian Thirikul, very experienced young campaigner, started the car, was very, very quick through his opening stint. Got the car to the front of the field. Betty Chen and Pity Birnbakhti have uh, supported him very, very nicely to get that singer-supported Fist Team AAI BMW. Sadly, the last remaining Fist Team AAI BMW uh, in the field. The number 15 entry still in pit lane as things stand. Now 20 laps behind, as you can see on the timing monitor. So, uh, sad weekend for... Um, Kevin Chen, Jens Klingman and Jesse Krohn. Promising start. They were right in the mix for outright result too, but uh, it's the old adage. To finish first, first you have to finish. And with an endurance race, that is a much tougher ask than during a uh, standard one-hour sprint race. So a lot of work uh, for them to do. Andrew Harry Antito, 52 seconds in front of his teammate, Hank Kicks, continuing to circulate. In pit lane. Very hard to see with the glare. I remember from uh, where the teams are pitting, it certainly looks like the silhouette of a Lamborghini. That is most certainly the Huracan GT3 Evo. So they have hit pit lane. So Afik Yazid, another brilliant stint from the young Malaysian driver. Arguably one of the go to drivers in this part of the world if you're racing a Lamborghini. Multiple champion and certainly a multiple race winner in Super Trofeo Asia. He's run with the best of them at the world level. A bit of open wheel racing in F3 the last few years, just to keep himself fresh. Certainly if uh, you're serious about your GT competition and you're young enough to uh, get yourself into an open wheeler, that will keep you more than race ready. See the time, 9.19 and 28 seconds in the evening. Sepang International Circuit. As Bao Jin Long jumps back behind the wheel of the R&B Racing Lamborghini. Just looking down the order as to who is doing what. 
John Shen resumes the lead of the GT3 AM category. Looks like the AMAC Porsche, or the iMac Porsche. iMac being the sponsor, AMAC being the uh, typically Australian shortened version of Andrew McPherson, AMAC. AMAC, you get it. iMac is the sponsor of the car. Just make that distinguish uh, distinction a little bit more clear. Shoots down to turn one. Andre Heimgartner now at the wheel. Last time round, Heimgartner did a 2098. So he at the moment is comfortably fastest on track. Next best, Liang Jai Tong is doing a fantastic job. 21003 last time round. Considering the uh, the heritage and the uh, pedigree of Andre Heimgartner, that's a very impressive lap from the Hong Kong-based driver. Sorry, he's a Chinese driver. The Craft Bamboo team is Hong Kong-based, of course. Frank Yu's home, the patriarch of the family, of the team. Those of us in the industry that spend a bit of time in Asia refer to uh, Frank affectionately as Uncle Frank lot to do with the success of motorsport in the region over a long time has been a, a long time competitor certainly got himself to the uh, the top of the gt3 tree in asia between gd asia and the uh, formative stages of gd world challenge asia as hank kiggs continues around again what this lap's going to be like because he's been turning in some pretty good laps he's more than matching afik yazid in the uh, RB Racing Lamborghini just prior to Yazid hitting, hitting pit lane. And uh, Hank kicks 214. So he's dropped the pace off a little bit. He, he'd been in the 11s with the Lamborghini tucked under his rear wing, so he had a little bit of extra motivation. 214's not too shabby, especially considering race leader Andrew Hariando is doing 213. So Adrian De Silva. Now that was the question we were looking for. It hadn't really changed, but now it has. He has taken over the reins of the EBM Giga Racing Porsche. He's done a 2.11.9 last time round, so he's a, over a second faster than the race leader and uh, two and a bit, two and a half seconds faster than Hank Kicks. Now, what was going on with the Aston Martin? Currently, Dominic Ung is behind the wheel. They're getting around John Shen. Okay, so we've seen this a little bit before. That was a little too close for comfort. The Mercedes just getting onto the tail of John Shen, who was comfortably taking his race line, probably wondering what the uh, the Aston Martin was doing going around the outside. So whilst he was watching that, he completely missed that the 88 Mercedes was coming up the inside. And Liang Tong very wisely pulled out of that. He got onto the uh, headlight flashes to say, hey, John, I'm here. John's an old stager. He's been in this game a long time. He is not going to care one Zach about you flashing lights at him or beeping the horn or waving your fingers at him. He's going to keep doing what John Shen wants to do. And if you have to work yourself around him, that's fine. Funny thing is, Jeffrey Lee employs exactly the same theory. So you should have had a little bit of guidance as to how that might work out. A little bit of respect for your elders too, never goes astray. But John Shen was completely within his rights to take the line that was suiting him. It was up to Liang to find a way through. And uh, he now has done that and he presses on. So John Shen, Andrew Harrianto and Hink Kicks, let's call them the old stages, they uh, are yet to complete their fourth stop. So things haven't quite worked out. I say that just as Hink Kicks is classified in pit lane as a commentator's thing. Maybe it's prediction. Maybe maybe we're Sears. We can see what's coming. I'm not so sure that's uh, that's particularly accurate. But anyway. Hank Kicks in pit lane. I would say for the uh, Thai-based Dutchman, that will be absolutely game over for him. He will have done his job. Now, Peter Cox behind the wheel. Are we going to see a stint from Christopher Haase? young German driver, the factory Audi driver, but I would expect those two drivers will close out between them the next two and a half hours once the number 26 B Quick by Absolute Audi rejoins this race. So what does the race leader do? I got a funny feeling that the B Quick Audi's position behind the number 18 entry 
So that may just slow up Harry Anto if he decides to come in on this very next lap because he's got to negotiate around the team. I can't remember whether the order was different. Now, there's a car coming in at the top of pit lane. Is that Harry Anto? Let's see. Who comes across the line? Just check my uh, car tracker. It looks very much like it could be. After all of that, the race leader is down pit lane. So, 145 laps now in the books. Where does Adrian De Silva come out at the end of all of this? I hazard a guess that he's going to come out as the race leader. Now, what will the margin be? See what I was talking about, how tight that's going to be? It's okay. We've got a uh, foreshortened distance because of the long lens. That's Christopher Haas are about to jump behind the wheel, looking at the race suit. I didn't see who'd gotten into the number 26 Audi. Arianto's done. Right, seat insert, eject stage left, or right, as it may be, depending on which way you were standing. It's gone. Strap Haas are in. Car controller, the only one over the line. The fuel is just trying to balance himself, obviously, so he's kind of got a foot just over the line. The 26 car is out. Voids the teammate. And it's Peter Cox behind the wheel from one Dutchman to another. One of the most experienced campaigners in GT motorsport. Fantastic pedigree. I'm sure once he jumps back on, he'll hear more about that from Jake Sanson. But the, uh, the Be Quick team, they are well and truly up to speed. With Peter Cox behind the wheel, take a very short period of time before they're starting to punch out some good laps. So Harry Anto's shown still as race leader. That's not going to be positioned by the time we get through the lap. I think Adrian De Silva won't be too far from taking the number 16 car. I'm trying to find where it is on track. It's not actually visible at the moment. Must be a gaggle of cars altogether. The 18 cars in pit lane, the 16 cars in pit lane. Why is the 16 car in pit lane? We're not seeing it, but the timing monitor's just popped up that Adrian De Silva's popped into pit lane. Wonder whether he's now done his stint. Remembering that the absolute minimum time that any driver can do in the car is 80 minutes. So traditionally that would be the AM driver. So that's interesting. We're not seeing any vision of it at the moment as to whether or not the team's having any level of trouble, but the EBM Giga Racing Porsche is currently sitting in pit lane. They were on target for Adrian De Silva to take over the race lead, and he not long got in the car. It may have only been, what, a matter of 10 minutes or so since he jumped behind the wheel. They were effectively leading out the first of the the top teams to hit pit lane, so they're running on sequence with their rivals. They were first in, so it can't have been more than 10 or 15 minutes behind the wheel of the car. That doesn't make too much sense. Let's see how much longer it's leaving pit lane now. Let's see whether De Silva's still behind the wheel, whether they may have suffered an issue. Ah, it's saying now Adrian De Silva to Nazim Asman. So maybe what has happened is De Silva's hit his time limit that's it and based on the strategy of what they're doing and the pace of his teammates Nazan Asman and Reed Harker they've decided we're cool let's go get that pit stop done take Adrian out of the car he's done his time's over he can go and have a nice lie down and a cool drink and we will let the two young guns go out there and take the fight to these Audi stars There's a couple of young guns in the Audi teams too so it's going to be an interesting battle over the closing stages two and a half hours to go I think we are set for a very, very interesting close to this race. And I'd hazard a guess that uh, you better have some voice left, Jake Sanson, because you've got one and a half stints left. And that final stint, that's going to be the cracker. I'm absolutely certain of it. It certainly looked very exciting over the last sort of 10 minutes with all the teams filing into the pit lane. So we're really starting to see the latter stages of this race take shape. Looks to me as though 
all four teams in the hunt still have a really good crack at this. It's really going to be interesting to see how it finishes off. Two Audis, a Porsche and a Lamborghini. It's not too bad. It's a little bit of a pity that, uh, well, I suppose there's another car in there too. There's the Porsche, of course, the EDM yeah. Giga entry. But um, it was frustrating to see the Ferrari dropped out of that lead pack. David Chen still punting around in position nine, although they've just hit pit lane as well. They're probably really out of the equation. And you'd probably suggest that maybe, maybe not, but the, uh, the Pity Bear and Barkty number 91 fist team AAI entry may also be out of the equation but only just a lot can happen I mean there's two and a half hours to go how often have we seen in the closing stages of an endurance race somebody who's got it absolutely in the bag sitting in pit lane with some sort of obscure issue that you could never have predicted so still a long way to go Indeed, very sad in particular in that latter stage to see the AAI Motorsports number 15 uh, sadly fall away and that's uh, really disappointing they could have made the podium oh they most certainly could have made the podium they're doing a fantastic job and uh, the way that kevin chen started the car and got right in that mix at the front and and took the fight to harry anto it was really great to watch but uh, anyway i mean it is what it is a lot of things have happened and a lot of things can still happen Baojin Long, for instance, getting track warnings. Turn six seems to be the kicker at the moment. That's the one corner that they, uh, they're pushing. You might get another one on that one too. That went very, very close, but certainly I'll hand it over to you. Go and have a, a bit of a lie down the cool drink myself and come <laughs> back for uh, for the next stint. Thank you very much indeed, Sean Henshawood. It's been a very exciting uh, last hour of the race, and now we're going to continue on into the next stage of proceedings. Jake Sanson back with you once again. Thanks to Sean Henshawood and he'll be back in the next hour. So let's settle in and really start to make the Raptors rock in this battle for the Sipang 12 Hours title. This is a really intriguing race battle now that we've got going on. All three of the top three drivers out on track are all Chinese in origin. Uh, Jiatong Liang is currently leading for the Craft Bamboo team. The Absolute Audi currently running in second place. The R&B Lamborghini in third and then the B-Quick Absolute Racing Machine in fourth position. The EBM Giga Racing Car is in fifth position, but they've had a fifth pit stop, so that's worth bearing in mind. There's still quite a long way to go then uh, over the course of this race. Two and a half hours remaining, just under that now, of course. But, yeah, some interesting developments. It's very unfortunate that the AAI Motorsports team from Chinese Taipei has sadly fallen away and dissipated from the GT3 category. Still very much in contention for the win in GTM though. There are a minute 17 behind the leaders, Modena Porsche, and the AMAC car is about 12.9 seconds back from uh, Pity Bidam Bakti in the AI, AAI Motorsport BMW. Now, Baojin Long has to respect track limits at turn six. That's his first warning. And there's four corners really on the entire circuit which has caused drivers a little bit of discrepancy in terms of track limits turn four turn six turn eight and turn 14 and they are the ones really that are starting to cause the issues for people but obviously everybody's still getting uh, very interesting and very intriguing to see how the race has uh, played out so far and still we are going strong uh, in this fantastic battle so chapong lick john is still religiously staying by the team B Quick 26 car, which is still very much in the hunt for victory. Sarah Sahadin, as loyal as ever. What did Jake and Sean have Malaysian food for dinner in the commentary box? Unfortunately, I didn't. I really should have done. And uh, I'm feeling a little the worse for wear for not having some. So uh, I'm rather hoping that uh, Sepang Cuisine is going to be provided for me in the commentary box next time. But certainly for the time being, uh, we've got food for thought out on the circuit as the absolute racing Audis are second and fourth. The R&B Lamborghini still P3 and the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes going strong out in the lead. But this combination is going to be fascinating to behold. The absolute racing team with Yu Kwai currently behind the wheel. The young man from Hong Kong doing a great job out there. Second in class, second in the race. And uh, fascinating to see how it goes. Now here is the Aston Martin back in the pits again. This is the Viper Niza Racing Crew, Dominic Ang, who was going into this race hoping for win number three in the Sepang 12 hours. I can tell you that that is looking fairly distant at the moment. They are six laps down on the race lead in the Aston Martin, currently running in 10th position of the 11 cars that are still circulating. The two cars that have retired are both from the AAI Motorsports team, unfortunately. The GT3 AM competitors, uh, number 90, for, uh, led by uh, Shishi Wei, 
unfortunately retiring on that 27. Uh, Jesse Kroon and uh, the team at the number 15 crew, uh, Jesse Kroon, uh, Chan Chin Wei and uh, Jens Klingman all out of the race as well, uh, retiring on lap 122. So uh, very unfortunate to see them pull out. And uh, they've been in the pits now pretty much for the entirety of the last hour. So uh, almost as soon as I handed over to Sean Henshawood, that was when they decided to kick the bucket, unfortunately. So uh, big disaster for them. But they are still four cars on the lead lap, potentially five if you count the EBM Giga Racing car, which obviously has had one extra pit stop compared to everybody else. So has the battle for victory in the amateur category. It is currently the AAI Motorsports team that leads the way because the modern motorsports Porsche has just come into the pits uh, for its latest visit to pit lane. Pity Bidabakti leading the way in the number 91 BMW and the AMAC Porsche number 51 uh, currently being driven by the Kiwi Andre Heimgartner is in second place. Just 15 seconds adrift. So there's still a great battle brewing in the AM category. Every single car that is still running in the AM category is in the fight for victory and they're all covered by less than a minute. So this could still go anybody's way in the AM category. And when you consider that there are five cars still battling for the win uh, for my money, uh, that could still go either way as well. The only two cars that really you have to count out of the victory at this stage are the Harmony Ferrari and the Viper Nisa Aston Martin who have been battling with each other uh, for the best part of this race actually. Uh, both cars having lost time earlier on and then uh, having to try and fight their way back into contention but too many laps lost uh, really to consider a push for the victory ferrari are currently four laps adrift and aston martin are eight laps adrift uh, sorry seven laps adrift my math is terrible at this time of night but the battle is still going strong you can see the consultation still going on in the pit lane we've got uh, a stint and a half or so uh, still to go before the final push for victory and for my money, any one of the five cars that are in the top five could still win this. The EBM Giga Racing team looking strong because they've had a fifth pit stop and everybody else has only had four. And Nazim Asman is only 23 seconds back from Peter Cox. And looking at his lap times, he's keeping it steady in the 2.11s. So they're not going to lose a huge amount of time to the top four. Fourth position at the moment is the Be Quick Absolute Racing Audi. Peter Cox back at the wheel. So expect some big lap times coming in. They are, in fact, the fastest car out on the track at the moment. So that gap uh, of 15.6 to Baojin Long in the R&B Lamborghini up the road is going to start chipping away very gradually indeed. But they're making up about 1 to 1.4 seconds per lap on the Lamborghini in third position. So this is definitely going to be uh, a tough race to the flag uh, for those two crews. Second position, the absolute racing Audi of Yu Kwai, who is doing a great job at the moment in the number 18 car. Photographs galore as everybody visiting down the pits. That's one of the great things about the uh, endurance GT races. When there's a lull in pit activity, the fans can come along and have a look at the racing up close. And that's what we need to see more of. We need to see uh, the fans being given the experience that they deserve. But through all of this, the Kraft Bamboo team still have a great shot at winning this race. They've just quietly got on with the job. They've run as low as fifth at one stage. But Liang Jiatong in the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes They've kept it to what they can manage. Sandy Stuvik uh, doing that double stint earlier on, just keeping it in the hunt. And Jeffrey Lee just ticking over nicely. They're not losing an insane amount of time. They're just keeping it nice and planted. And they've got 55 seconds over the absolute Audi, thanks to that long pit stop that they had earlier on, thanks to uh, abusing track limits. And Baojin Long has got to respect track limits now at turn six. And he's had a third warning, so that could be a real problem for the R&B Lamborghini. They cannot afford to have a track limits penalty at this late stage of the weekend. You've really got to watch yourself out there. But so far, it is the AMG Mercedes of Kraft Bamboo who are looking to take the victory. And they are running a very solid race thanks to Yang Jiatong. It's looking very, very smooth indeed for them. And if you consider that so far, it's been 11 years since the last Mercedes-Benz victory in the Sepang 12 hours. You've got to go all the way back to 2012. Nomotero Taniguchi, Dominic Ang, and Masataka Yanagida, who uh, got the race won in 2012, having completed 319 laps to do so. It's not going to be 319 laps completed this time because we're not going to go the full 12 hours on this occasion. And hopefully, next year when the race returns, we'll do 12 hours. But uh, for logistics purposes and for you know the convenience of the teams as well, having to try and get everything back together. It's only just recently that Asia has opened up again since the worldwide pandemic, which of course is still with us. A lot of people 
obviously thinking that the worst is now behind us, but there are still logistical challenges. You know, there are still friends of mine in the United Kingdom who are getting COVID-19 every now and then. So it's not gone forever. It's uh, still a present factor. So these things have to be taken into consideration. <coughs> Excuse me, the front went in the wrong way then. And now we have Ferrari versus Porsche up there on the course. There we have the Harmony Racing car of David Chen, or Chen Wayan if you like, currently dueling away with the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket of Chen Sai Wei. Yeah, a great little battle. There is the EBM Giga Racing car. This is one of my favourites to win the race. They've been so calm and so careful keeping things together out there. And I think their secret weapon is absolutely Reed Harker. He's the one who can really push the team forward. It's currently Nazim Asman, who has only just recently taken over again from Adrian De Silva. But they're the first team in the pit stop rotation. They've managed to undercut a lot of their competitors out there. And putting Nazim Asman in the car at this point is a very smart move because he can really start to chip away at the drivers up front. Currently doing two 11s just to get the car bedded in. But I do think that this car has victory potential. There is the car that's currently second. It's Yu Kwai at the wheel alongside the Indonesian amateur racer Andrew Harianto and the man who led the 2007 European Grand Prix for a lap and a half, Marcus Winkelhock. He only made one Grand Prix appearance, but he led it. Peter Cox must respect track limits at turn four. First warning for car 26. And that is the Be Quick Absolute car that currently runs in fourth position. That's the teammate to this car. The battles raging here at the Sepang 12 Hours. Love the sight of these cars blasting through the night time. And there is Peter Cox, who is once again doing what he does best. He only knows two speeds, Peter Cox, flat out and stationary. He's rarely ever stationary. He's always on the move, even when he's not behind the wheel of a racing car. He's one of the most active people you're ever going to see in the sport. Always finding something new to go and play with, always finding a new project. And I've been watching Peter Cox uh, do his thing since the early 90s hasn't lost an ounce of speed in that time. Still as fresh as the spring chicken. So the competitors still giving us plenty to talk about, still plenty to do in the remainder of the Sepang 12 Hours 2023. We're going to have a really exciting showcase for the remainder of this event. Still, we battle on, just waiting for the next rotation of pit stops to really take a hold because obviously there's still work to do and there's still a lot of race to play out here the story isn't quite over yet and I have a feeling there could be quite a few more stings in the tail before this race really wraps up I think it's still got quite a lot left in it in terms of intrigue and battles Peter Cox must respect track limits at turn 4 second warning that's in consecutive laps as well. So Peter Cox is really pushing the limit of what's acceptable. And as far as the stewards are concerned, there's a fine line between tough and illegal, and he is flirting with it. The R&B racing team just come across the line, Bao Long, having set a 2 minute 10.825. Peter Cox was 11 seconds back. He's now 9.7 back, doing a 208.72. And interestingly, Nazim Asman in the EBM Giga Porsche has done a 208.8. So they're really starting to ramp up the speed. The Audis and the Porsche in this battle really starting to take some punishment out of the cars in front of them. The Kraft Bamboo Mercedes, the lead is down to 51.3 seconds now. And the R&B Lamborghini is dropping to just 9.7 ahead of the B-Quick Absolute Audi. Still very hard to tell which car is going to take the victory out of these five. And this is the leading car in the AM category, sixth overall, Pitti Bidambakti, the tie driver, alongside Betty Chen and Talad Satyam Tirakul. We've been doing such a good job leading up to this point. There's still quite a way to go, still a lot can happen, and we've already seen two of the AAI motorsport cars drop out of the race, out of the three that were entered from uh, Chinese Taipei. Still remaining BMW from that squad, still ploughing on, still determined to pick up the AM win. But 
There's only 15.9 seconds between Pitti Bott and Bakhti, the man on your screen, and the New Zealander, Andre Heimgartner, in the AMAC Porsche behind. And uh, Christian Kia for the Moderna Porsche, who led early on. Well, they have one pit stop less now than the cars in front of them. Unfortunately, it's all come unstuck for the Moderna team. But they do still have a chance. It's not done yet. They are the least... Uh, pit stopped drivers of the AM category. They've pitted four times, whereas the AAI Motorsports and AMAC Porsche teams have both pitted five times. Similarly, up front, the EBM Giga Racing Porsche has managed to get five pit stops out of their run so far. All four cars in front of them have pitted four times. So it's uh, a very interesting and intriguing battle still. And it's not clear who's going to win this race. That's what we like. And still we battle on. The combined laps completed by every car in the field is now 1,800. 1,800 laps have been completed by the 13 cars. 60 pit stops. 153 laps completed by the race leader. Time under safety car, zero. Time under full course yellow, zero. Time under code 60, zero. You rarely ever see that in the world of GT racing at this level. And I have to say, it's been amazing to watch a pure motor race where all you're focusing on is the tactics, the strategy, the pace, the rhythm. It's been fantastic. A race that's been completely unsullied by poor driving and substandard crashes and safety car procedures and marshals tripping over each other trying to get the circuit cleaned away. It's a very good team here in Malaysia as well. But I have to say, I think one or two of them may need to be nudged here yeah, because they've had very little to do which is a great thing actually it's great to see that the racing has been clean throughout basically i'm trying to remember if there's been a point of contact and i think the only point of contact i can remember is going back to the very start of the race when there was a slight bit of door rubbing between the absolute racing audi and the aai motorsport bmw i think that's the o contact that there has been in the entirety of this race, which is quite an astonishing statistic. Two hours, 13 remaining. And Liang Jiatong, currently out in front in the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes. As Yu Kui in the absolute Audi, takes another scalpel out of Liang Jiatong. Bao Jin Long. R&B racing team. They pretty much matched each other for the third sector there. I thought there was going to be a little bit less time made. I thought the gap would be a bit smaller between Kraft Bamboo and Absolute that time round, but they almost matched each other to the hundredth of a second almost in the fourth sector of the lap. Arjun Long has just come through to complete the third position run in the R&B Lamborghini. And there is Peter Cox in the Be Quick Absolute racing car. The Audi in fourth position. All four cars then separated by a minute and 20 seconds. And 27 seconds behind this car is Nazim Asman in the EBM Giga Racing Porsche. All five cars still very much in with a chance of victory. One bodged penalty, one spin, one difficulty in the pit lane, one transgression with the stewards, and this race turns on its head. Fascinating stuff. The last couple of hours, plus the 11 minutes of change, are going to completely transform the way this race plays out. And I still think there's going to be a hiccup or two in the AM category as well. The sole remaining AAI Motorsport BMW leading the way with Pity Bottom Bakti, just 12.9 now ahead of Andre Heimgartner in the AMAC Porsche. They're really turning on a pace and they are chasing rapidly. Looks like it could be a two horse race in the AM category because the Porsche of uh, Christian Kia, the modern motorsports car, has dropped right off pace, unfortunately. They're currently lapping in the 2.13, so I think they're struggling uh, at this point, the modern Porsche team. They were leading for such a long time that clearly some gremlins have started to creep in, and they are on the back foot now. Still going to keep it together. You don't really know what's going to happen to the cars up front. And if they drop out, and then all of a sudden the two cars in front hit trouble, they will be sick to the stomach. But it really is going to be a fascinating situation to the end. Sarah Sahadin says, so much track limit abuse in this race. Well, that's what happens when you're pushing to try and get the most out of the car. 
and drivers are just not making the mistakes you think they're going to make. They're not dropping it, they're not spinning, they're not crashing. They're just keeping it together. This has been one of the most mature sports car races I think I've ever seen. Bit of a run wide and into the pits. Oh no, that was a mistake from Peter Cox. I thought Peter Cox was going to come into the pits for his fifth pit stop. But in fact, that was a rare error from Peter Cox. And now you can see why, because he's caught right up to the back of the R&B Lamborghini of Bao Jin Long. The gap is down to just 3.7 seconds, as you can see for yourself. We're waiting for the fifth place car to come through. That is the EBM Giga Racing Porsche of Nazim Asman. Coming across the line any moment now. I think this is the Aston Martin coming towards us. No, it's the BMW, the leading AAI motorsport car of Pitti Bin and Bakhti. But now the EBM Giga Racing car has come across the line, just a few car lengths behind this one. But this is the AM class leader in the BMW, looking very strong and sturdy for Pitti Bin and Bakhti. Still just running a very solid race in the lead of the AM category, but only by 13.5 seconds. They are trying to match the pace of Andre Heimgartner, the Kiwi in the AMAC Porsche. Christian Kier, the Canadian in the modern Porsche. They are a minute back from Heimgartner and they have pitted one less time than the two cars up front. So it's looking difficult, but not impossible for the modern Porsche team to score the AM victory. Still a lot of work to do, of course. But it's not done yet. There's still a fair way to go. And of course, we're all hoping that the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket car, the sole GT Cup car, comes through to complete the race distance as well. In the pits, we have the Harmony Ferrari. Chen Wei-An is coming to the pits on what is lap 152 for them. They are four laps behind the Craft Bamboo of the Ang Jiatong that leads this race. Yu Kui, the gap is 44.6 seconds at the line. As the absolute racing Audi comes in, there is the Ferrari in pit road. Appropriately, uh, excuse me, let me try that word again, shall I? Appropriately enough, the Harmony Racing Ferrari running under number 488, which is the model spec of the Ferrari. And it's a real shame because it is the sole Ferrari in the race. It had a really good shot to go for the top spot. And it just all fell apart in the first hour. They had a really good chance of uh, uh, going for the victory. They actually led uh, briefly going into the first corner. Thanks to uh, Wu Ruha. He made a fantastic start. The Ferrari actually led going into turn one, running around the outside. But when they ran three wide, they had to concede defeat and the absolute racing Audi got back in front. And ever since then, Ferrari has essentially just spent the race going backwards, which is very unfortunate. They're currently in ninth position, but the car is now back in the hands of Alexandra Imperatori. And you can bet that the man from Hong Kong, who was originally from Switzerland, is going to be absolutely vapid out there on the course. So expect the lap times to tumble to the 208s again for Alex Imperatori. And they're going to try and close their way back into the hunt. It's just going to be a demonstration for the Ferrari of what it can do when it's being pushed essentially but sadly I fear that the team are just too far back now to make a lasting impression on the remainder of this race Liang Jiatong in the craft bamboo just keeping it nice and tidy up front 44 seconds on the last lap ahead of Yu Kui in the absolute Audi but surely we've got to be thinking about pit stop number 5 for the leaders now can't be too long until they start to make their visits to the pits. So we'll have to keep an eye on that phase of the race as well. The Ferrari in the hands of Alexandra Imperatori. This is going to be the fastest car on track within about 10 minutes. You watch. The gap comes down to 42 seconds, roughly. If this final sector is tidied up and polished for you, Kwai. There it is. 42 seconds, 42.2 in fact, between the leading two cars. Mao Jin Long under serious pressure from Peter Cox, who's just uh, on the last lap, was only 2.7 seconds down the road. There is Piti Bidimbakti, the tie driver, leading the AM category for AAI Motorsports BMW. Down the back straight. It took a long time to get this race going because there was uh, damage to the barriers at turn one following a support race incident, which meant that the race got underway two hours after the scheduled start time. But you know what? What a race we've had since then. It's been worth waiting for. 
Now, Peter Cox is right in behind Bao Jin Long. I really want to pick up the battle for third position if we can. Because that's where things are going to get interesting again. Be quick, absolute Audi. Peter Cox is right on the back of the R&B Lamborghini of Bao Jin Long. They were eight tenths of a second at the line. Now, surely it's not going to be too long before they start to make an impact on this race. And uh, the absolute Audi trying to get into third position with the Dutchman Peter Cox looking for his way through. As we watch the AMAC Motorsport Porsche, the gap down to 12.3. So Andre Heimgartner definitely closing in on the AM-class leaders. But as you can see from the timing screen on the left of your picture, I want to pick up the R&B and absolute Audi battle. Third position, Peter Cox has reined it in to just eight tenths of a second, and he is going two seconds a lap quicker than Bao Jin Long. But we saw how good Bao Jin Long was in defense earlier on in the day. I would dearly love to see how he's trying to hold off. And Peter Cox must respect track limits at turn four, third warning. So he's running the gauntlet here and severely running the risk of another penalty. So it doesn't matter how quickly he catches up to the R&B Lamborghini. If he gets another penalty, then all that hard work is going to be undone. And of course, we had a penalty for the 18 car. Marcus Winkelhock picking up the penalty for excessive track limits. And now it looks like Peter Cox may end up with the same fate if he's not careful. I really want to see what the on-track situation is for third position. Has Peter Cox in the Be Quick Absolute Audi already got past Baljin Long in the R&B Lamborghini in third position? Certainly he's got to respect track limits in the space of, I think, five laps. He's had three warnings for track limits. So he's obviously pushing very hard to try and close up the third position. And he has got through. I can tell you that Peter Cox has got through. But unfortunately, we missed it on screen. But Peter Cox in the Audi has got past Baljin Long in the Lamborghini for third position. Unfortunately, that we didn't pick it up. But Peter Cox has made it a fairly straightforward passing maneuver on the Lamborghini of Baljin Long. So a nice duel there for the Rostrum. It's now a Mercedes, two Audis, a Porsche, and a Lambo. In the fight for the victory in the Sepang 12 Hours 2023. Jake Sanson and Sean Heschelwood with you. All the way through to the end of the race, which is going to be at midnight local time. Into the pits comes the AMAC Porsche of Andre Heimgartner. Now, of course, this is the fifth pit stop for the team. Moderna Motorsport team. No, sorry, this is pit stop number six, actually, for the AMAC Motorsport Porsche team. So, Andre Heimgartner getting out of the car, is he? Is that going to be a driver change? I think it is. Yes, Andre Heimgartner gets out of the car. So, he will hand over either to McPherson or Porter. But they are still very much in the hunt for the victory. Now, here is the Audi, but it's the absolute Audi number 18. And this is Yu Kwai, currently running in second, team, uh, second position. But they are catching the race leaders in the Craft Bamboo Mercedes. The gap is down to 39 seconds at the last count. As they come across the line this time by, the gap was 39 seconds. What is it this time? Goodness me, the gap is 36. So Yu Kwai just did a 2.09.1 compared to Liang Jiatong, who did a 2.12.4. That's three seconds taken out of the car. So McPherson, Porter and Heimgartner still in pit road. And as you can see from the timing gantry behind you, it is not even two minutes to 10 o'clock in the evening here. Oh dear, Ferrari have had trouble again, it would seem. The Harmony Racing Team. Team manager, car 488, immediately to race control. So that is Alexandra Imperatori and the Harmony Ferrari. Coming a cropper again by the look of it. That's very unfortunate. And we're waiting to see when Kitty Bidambakti is going to come into the pits. It's not this lap. He goes on and goes a lap ahead at the AMAC Porsche. But be careful when getting out of the pits. You can blow something if you're too aggressive on the throttle. We've seen many a drive shaft snap when cars have come out of pit lane. They've been put under too much load coming out of the pit lane. But it's certainly not the case for the Porsche on this occasion. They continue on their way and rejoin in second position, still ahead of the Moderna Motorsports car. So that is good news for the AMAC team, and it is Ben Porter that has got into the car. 
and with two hours to go in the Sepang 12 hours, still a few twists in the tail to come, I think. And certainly within the last two hours, we are probably going to get the meat and bones of this three-course dinner. The absolute racing team are closing in on the Craft Bamboo Mercedes. Yu Kwai has got that gap down to 36 seconds of late. And they're taking anywhere between one and three seconds a lap off that car. But the B-Quick Absolute Racing Audi is up to third place now, having caught and passed the R&B Lamborghini of Baojin Long. But the EVM Giga Racing Porsche in fifth position cannot be counted out. They have had one pit stop more than the four cars in front of them. So when they all come in for their fourth pit stop, they've got a great chance of getting back into contention. This race is not done by any stretch of the imagination. The gap is down to 34 seconds now for the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes and the Absolute Audi. Another two seconds taken out in the last lap. But there is the leading car in the AM category. Pitti Birumbakti, the tie driver. Now a minute 17 ahead of Christian Kia in the Moderna Porsche. We are now second in the AM class. But the AMAC Motorsport team with Ben Porter still having a good chance to move forward. There's still a long way to go. The Sepang 12 hours on the Sepang International Circuit just outside the city of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. What a fantastic location. And what a great race we are currently in the midst of. Five cars going for the victory. The Kraft Bamboo AMG Mercedes, the pair of Absolute Racing Audis, the R&B Racing Lamborghini and the EBM Giga Racing Porsche, all with a hunt for the victory. Porsche have the most wins around this Sepang 12-hour circuit over the years. A grand total of four race victories. Lotus, Ferrari, Mercedes-Benz and Audi all have two wins apiece. So it'll be a fabulous scenario for all of the contenders if they can keep this race flowing strong. a genuinely exciting run now for all of the competitors as we gear ourselves up for racing in the closing stages of this epic encounter so still they rage and battle on still we have some great racing and still we have some amazing competition to round us out here great to have your company for those of you who are watching on the nitro Sepang 12 Hours live stream on YouTube or those who are watching Sepang 12 Hours on Facebook or however you are tuned in and watching your company is very much appreciated and you have tuned in at exactly the right moment there are two hours to go and five cars battling for the victory with a lot of air of uncertainty as to which of these cars is actually going to have the strongest pace for the latter stages of the event and the gap has come down to 30.6 seconds between the leading two cars as Yu Kwai in the number 18, Absolute Racing Audi is closing in on the Craft Bamboo AMG Mercedes of Liang Jiatong, who leads the way. Third place, Peter Cox in the Be Quick Absolute Audi. They've got the gap down to a minute and three to the race leaders. They're doing two minute nines at the moment, with the leaders doing two twelves. The Absolute Racing Audi of Yu Kwai just did a 208.8. And then you've got Alex Impratori and Jasmine Jafar outside the top six in their Ferrari and Aston Martin respectfully who are lapping at similar sort of pace to that 209s for both of them there are two classes competing for wins the AM category sees Pitti Bin and Bakhti in the AAI motorsport car the Moderna Porsche of Christian Kia and this car the AMAC Porsche of the all Antipodean affair two Aussies and a Kiwi battling away for the victory and they are about two minutes and 25 seconds behind the race leading car in the BMW so there's still everything to come from this race there's still a long way to go still anything can happen and so far unbelievably we have gone through this race without a single yellow flag caution period without a single code 60 and without a single safety car it's just been the cleanest of sports car races you could ever have asked for and as a result of that we've been able to watch a pure motor race. Imagine if a safety car came out now. We'd have a five car sprint to the flag, essentially now, at Grand Prix level. And that really would be a sensational end and a great tribute to all the hard work that is being put in to make this event a success. Full credit 
has to go to the team behind the scenes making it all happen. Davide de Gobbi, the general manager of the Top Speed Promotion Limited. And all of his staff putting on another fantastic event. It's been a long time since I saw a sports car race go pure green. I think this one could go all the way. Liang Jiatong in the Craft Bamboo Mercedes, out in front on lap 163, 27.2 seconds now, ahead of the absolute Audi of Yu Kwai. Jeffrey Lee, Yang Jiatong, who is in the car, and Sandy Stuvik, the talented Thai, are the team that leads the way in the Craft Bamboo. But this is a very tough race to win. The Mercedes has actually been the underdog of the five cars so far but it's now their turn in the lead. The R&B Lamborghini has led. The EBM Giga Porsche has led. Both of the absolute Audis have led. And now the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes is leading. Fabulous battle all the way to the checkered flag is in prospect now. As the Sipang 12 hours nears its epic, epic conclusion. Great to see this race returning for the first time since 2016. We've had some great duels. Here is the leading car in the AM category. Sixth overall, Pity Bidamakti, the tie driver for AAI Motorsports in the BMW M4 GD3. Can't say I've ever had a sample of this car. I have driven the road-going version, and I described it once as a fighter plane without wings. And it really is quite an astonishing machine. Unfortunately, its two counterparts have already retired from the race. The combination of Krohn, Chen and... Uh, Klingman, my, my brain went completely onto mush on that point, but yes, Kron, Klingman and Chen, unfortunately the number 15 car dropping out of the race on number 122, so about an hour and 15 minutes ago. And then uh, the sister car dropped out all the way back on lap 27 for them. They've been in the pits for five hours and five minutes, whereas their counterpart car has been in the pit lane now for an hour and a half. Now, in terms of the stints, we're getting an interesting state of play here. And Liang Jiatong has been on track now for an hour and 12 minutes, roughly. Yu Kwai has been on the circuit for 39 minutes. Peter Cox for 40. Bao Jin Long for 47. And obviously, having had a fifth pit stop, Nazim Asman has been in the car for 38 minutes. So he is the freshest of the drivers out there. Yes, and kicks. Must respect track limits. Well, that's got to be Peter Cox, doesn't it? He's got to respect track limits. Either that or it's an old message. Now, this is the highlights, of course, from earlier on. I do apologise. Got to that point in the day. We do have five cars out on the circuit, all battling for the race win now. The Kraft Bamboo team, who lead the way in fine style. Liang Jiatong out in the lead. Yu Kwai for the Absolute Racing Audi in second place. The V-Quick Absolute Racing Audi, currently being driven by Peter Cox in third. Fourth position for Bao Jin Long in this car, the R&B Lamborghini. And then fifth is the EBM Giga Racing Porsche, currently being driven by the new boy to GT, Nazim Asman, the Malaysian. He selected races in FIA Formula 3 last year, so this is a bit of a route for him. The Porsches getting close to each other there. The GT Cup car getting out of the way, that's Chan Se Wai, who is currently at the wheel of that particular car. But it's been quite an entertaining few hours of this race. Six hours and eight minutes completed. But there's still a lot more to come. And I have to say, it's been so, such a revelation. This race has been so pure. It's been a great motorsport battle, a great contest. And the real thirst for the future is being played out here at Sepang. We may have started this race with 13 cars. We may only have 11 left. But the quality has not been wanting. The quality has not suffered. The teams have absolutely given their best. And we have a five-car battle for the win in the Pro category. And in the AM category, we have a three-car battle for the victory. And it's going to go all the way to the death, the way things are currently looking. Every single team has had their moments of triumph. Every team has had their moment of scrutiny. Every team is going to make this battle go all the distance of this race. It's definitely going to be a tough one. We're all hoping that the GT Cup team go the distance and they get to the end of the race in fine style. 
but as we continue on here in the Sabang 12 hours at this stage with an hour and 50 minutes still to go it is the Kraft Bamboo AMG Mercedes currently being driven by Liang Jiatong that leads the way on number 165 20 seconds now ahead of the absolute Audi of Yu Kwai and then Peter Cox in the Be Quick absolute Audi in third position just under a minute behind the race leaders fourth place is the R&B Lamborghini of Baojin Long and then the EBM Giga Porsche of Nazim Asman in fifth position and they're all covered all five cars by one minute and 20 seconds that's what we've got to look forward to for the remaining hour and 50 minutes of the Sepang 12 hours a long way still to go who has got the trick up their sleeve the Yang Jiatong is really pushing it here he's been out almost as long as Chan Sai Wai in the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket car other than him, he has been the longest driver out on circuit for this stint. Christian Kia must respect track limits at turn six. First warning for the Moderna Porsche, currently running in second place, a minute and 16 seconds behind Pity and Bakti in the BMW from AAI. But there is Nazim Asman, a talented youngster, making his sports car debut. And he has made such an impact. I have a feeling he's going to be very good at this. Right, just as I mentioned how long it's been for Liang Jiatong to get into the car, and how long he's been out on circuit, the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes is in pit road. So the Kraft Bamboo makes the pit stop, and this is pit stop number five for the race leaders. So Liang Jiatong relinquishes command of the race then to the absolute racing Audi of Yu Kui, the young driver from Hong Kong. There you go, Christian Kia's warning comes up on your screen. Let's make sure that he must respect track limits at turn six. And you're looking at the modern Porsche at the moment of Christian Kia. But now we're going to get the next pit stop rotation. This is going to be the penultimate pit stop. As every team now wants to try and time this right. Every team wants to try and outfox the opposition force the other teams into making a mistake whether it comes to tactics strategy or track limits whatever it might be the race really starts now and for the five cars that are involved in it covered by a minute and 20 seconds before the craft bamboo pit stop it could go anybody's way it really really could whoever wins this race is definitely going to have earned it because all five teams have given absolutely everything they've got So the Kraft Bamboo will drop to fifth position for the time being, but obviously they're going to have another great race battle when they get out onto the circuit, because they're going to try and get out ahead of the EBM Giga Race Porsche over the course of the next hour and 47 minutes. So they've got to try and get themselves into a good position to do that. Still, the battle rages here at the Sepang 12 hours an hour and 47 minutes to go about the length of a typical Grand Prix onto the back straight comes the model of the Porsche and it is Jeffrey Lee that has taken over the Graf Bamboo Mercedes so Jeffrey Lee has got back out onto the circuit as Yu Kwai comes across the line and what is his current pace I think he's still in the 210s he's just done a 209 actually 2.095 on the last lap around. Not going to be too long before the Be Quick Absolute Racing sister car comes through. Peter Cox will come across the line. I think in the space of another eight seconds or so, that's when we're going to really see just how tough it's going to be for the Kraft Bamboo team to maintain this sort of pace. Peter Cox about 40 seconds back from it, the sister car of Yu Kwai. He comes across the line this time by. It's actually 37.9. And to be fair to the absolute car of Yukwai, they have actually managed to pull out a bit of a gap. The R&B Racing Lamborghini is now in third again. And I do believe the EBM Giga Racing Porsche is up to fourth. Indeed it is. Nazim Azman across the line this time by in fourth position. Just a minute behind the absolute racing car in the lead. But the Kraft Bamboo of Jeffrey Lee is not that far back either in fifth position. They've still got plenty of time to make a play in this race. There's still a long, long way to go. Do not count them out. There is 
the car of R&B Racing. Bao Jin Long behind the wheel of the car at the moment. Now, as a result of that pit stop for the Craft Bamboo team, the longest running driver out on the circuit of the top five is now Bao Jin Long, who is in the car. This is his 56th minute in the car. And you're watching Bao Jin Long at the moment, coming close to being in that car for a full hour. They can stretch it out a little bit longer. They might be able to gain some time in the next pit stop. But it's very tough to know who's going to get this right. And when you've got a race that isn't sullied by safety cars and crashes and whatever, when you've got just a pure tactical race, it very much becomes about how do you mastermind the fuel? How do you mastermind the tyre management? How do you look after the general wear and tear of the car through the course of the race? It is fascinating to see how this has played out. 37 seconds separates the two Audis. Another 11 seconds back is the Lamborghini of Baljin Long. Another 10 seconds back is the EVM Giga Porsche of Nazim Asman. And then the Craft Bamboo that's just made its pit stop is only a minute 17 further back. Still anybody's race to win this. We're gonna try and watch to see where the next pit stop is gonna come from. Yukwai completes lap 167. There's the pace difference compared to where they started from. A real shame because we had the AI Motorsports BMW starting on the front row of the grid alongside the Absolute Audi and they've fallen out of the race as is their sister car, the GT3 AM category car of the number 90. But there's still plenty to do. Nazim Asma gets the gap to Baljin Long down to 8.8 .8 seconds. He's just done a fabulous lap. He's just done a 209.4 compared to a 211.4 for the R&B Lamborghini. So Nazim Asman is currently the fastest driver on track. Great work. I tell a lie, I thought he was, but no, it is actually the Ferrari of Alexandra Imperatori. He's the fastest driver of the race contenders, let's say. And Alexandra Imperatori, the Ferrari sadly about four laps adrift. And Imperatori just proving what he could have won, how he could have won. Still, this race rumbles on, and for the absolute racing pair up in front, this is exactly what they wanted to demonstrate. They wanted to showcase that you can't rush these things. You have to get your plan done to a certain degree. You have to make sure that all the correct boxes are ticked in the right order in order to make a race victory come together. An hour and 42 minutes still to go. But it looks so strong. Out of the final turn, there is Yu Kwai in the absolute Audi. He completes lap 168, about 40 seconds roughly, in front of the sister car. And this is exactly where they wanted to be. Andrew Harianto, Yu Kwai, and Marcus Vigelhock in the absolute Audi, going big guns. Still pushing hard. Their fastest lap is a 2.074. Very impressive performance. The fastest car in the entire race. And that's the thing. They've gone fast when they've needed to. They've consolidated when necessary. And despite the fact that they have had to take a 10 second penalty for abusing track limits, they are still right there, ready to make this race come to them. This is not done yet by any means at all. And the absolute racing team really hoping to get the job done here and seal what I believe would be the first victory for the team at the Sepang 12 hours. Had some amazing teams win over the years. Proton, TVR, Jazzery Racing, the G1 Meritus crew, Honda Malaysia Racing, Proton R3, Hong Leong Kincana, Porsche Club Singapore, Petronas Sintium Team, Arrows Racing, Clearwater Racing, Belgian Audi Club WRT, and the Audi Sport Team Phoenix. have all taken wins in the Sepang 12 hours over the years. And it has been a fabulous race to watch. This time, I think probably the most entertaining for a long time because you've got to remember that it's just been so su sublime so supreme every driver has really been on their a-game there have not been any silly rational or irrational moments out there on the course i should say it's just been all about the calm disciplined nature of these drivers but the racing is still very strong there's 39 car and uh, 39 seconds sorry between you quite the man on your screen and Peter Cox, the sister car. 
They're trading lap times at the moment, keeping this 40 second gap favourable. The R&B Lamborghini is only 14 seconds back from Peter Cox, but they are hemorrhaging time to Nazim Asman in the EBM Giga Racing Porsche, who for me is still a very strong favourite to win this race. It's not done yet by any stretch. Here is Peter Cox, the Dutchman, still going strong. And currently, Peter Cox has been in the car for 54 minutes, roughly. Only Baojin Long of the top five drivers has been in the car for longer. Having just gone past the hour now. So Baojin Long still with work to do to try and shake off Nazim Asman. But as you can see, Peter Cox still working hard to catch his teammate Yu Kwai. And the gap has actually opened up rather than decreased. It's now up to 41.5 seconds. Is this the point now when it's time for a fresh set of boots for Peter Cox? Does he need to hand over to one of his stable mates? When you start losing time quite rapidly, that's when you start thinking, you know what, we can actually gain a little bit of time on our upper hand here. Bao Jin Long in the R&B Lamborghini, third position, just 15 seconds back from Peter Cox. And if you look behind us, all of a sudden, Nazim Asman in the EBM Giga Racing Porsche is suddenly looking ominous and threatening for a podium. So we watch the Lamborghini come through. They'll come into sight. Now look in the background because it's not far away, the EBM Giga Racing. There it is. That is Nazib Asman closing in, trying to fight for that third position. And the Malaysian has done a sensational job switching to GT Racing. This has not been an easy transfer for a single-seater specialist. He has taken to this like a duck to water. Car 88, Jeffrey Lee must respect track limits at turn six. That's the first warning for the Craft Bamboo that led at the top of the hour. And they came into the pit stop for their pits work to continue. Their fifth pit stop. Only two teams in the top five have taken five pit stops or five visits to the pits at least. The EBM Giga Racing Porsche and the Kraft Bamboo AMG Mercedes. Everybody else in the top three have all stopped four times. But this boy, Nazim Asman, who you're watching on your screen, really has been the find of the race, I would say. It's been amazing to see what he's been able to produce. He's done a terrific job with it. He keeps the sport very exciting to watch. He's very much risen to the occasion when you've got his teammates, Adrian De Silva and Reed Harker, who know this sport very well. Nazim Asman has been the weak link in the chain just by virtue of the fact he hasn't done GT racing before this. But he has fitted the mould so perfectly. He looks like he's been doing it for years, never mind for hours. It's an excellent performance from Nazim Asman. And he just needs to keep this going for the remainder of his stint. Is he coming into the pits or was that a rare error? That was a rare error for Nazim Asman. But you can see why. He is pushing and charging after Baljin Long. And that gap is now less than two seconds, I would say. There's the proof. 1.6 at the line. So Nazim Asman really pushing hard here to try and figure out a weak spot. There is the crack of Bamboo, that's Jeffrey Lee. They were leading a short while ago, but they've made a pit stop, so they're back down to fifth position again. But such is the close nature of this race and this category. It is still very tough to know who's going to take the victory this time. But the Kraft Bamboo team have not given up on a podium, they've not given up on the overall win. They still have a chance at this. Now we're all waiting to see who's going to need the next of the drivers in the top three to come into the pits. Nazim Asman, they've just made a pit stop, but he's stayed in the car on his stint. An hour and four minutes behind the wheel for Baojin Long. 57 and a half minutes behind the wheel for Peter Cox. 56 minutes behind the wheel for Yu Kwai. Here is the leading car in the AM category. Chen Yin Yu, Piti Birambakti, and Tanat Satyan Tirakul in the AAI BMW, the last remaining one of those three cars that entered. Unfortunately, the other two have now dropped out. But Betty Chen, Piti Birambakti, and Tanati Satyan Tirakul are looking very good indeed to get the result that they deserve. Right, here is the FM Motorsport Silver Rocket, the sole GT Cup car. Chan Sai Wei, 
has come into the pits. He will hand over to either Sean Thong or Lee Jaya. But he's been in the pits for about 35 seconds so far. We're still waiting to see if any of the top cars are going to make their pit stop this lap. By the answer is no. But it can't be too long before Nazim Asman is basically coughing the exhaust fumes of Baljin Long's R&B Lamborghini. They're going to go past the pits this current time by. As the GT Cup class drivers still having a good race of it. Chan Sai Wai having done a good job to bring the car to this point. Nazim Asman must respect track limits at turn six. First warning. I'm not at all surprised. He's pushing hard and the gap has come down. He's got through, in fact. I assumed that he had caught him up, but no, he's caught and passed Baljin Long. So the EBM Giga Porsche is now back into third position. And for my money, back into the lead of the race. The second those Audis come in, he's going to be leading the race. Nazim Asman looking to give Porsche their fifth win in the Sepang 12 hours across the different teams they've worked with. And certainly as a manufacturer, a fifth Porsche win would be pretty spectacular. So the FM Motorsport and Silver Rocket team under absolutely no pressure whatsoever. They just want to try and get this car to the finish. So there are no other GT Cup cars entered for this one. They just want to prove that they can go the distance in this eight-hour race. I know it's called the Subang 12 hours, but due to logistics and various other reasons, too technical and too dull to go into here. We are only eight hours of distance. But if you take into account the pre-practice and the qualifying as well, it works out to about 12 hours on track. The competitors continue to push on. This is the modern Porsche of Christian Kia, the Canadian. A minute ten behind Pitti Bidambakti in the AAI BMW. Still plenty of race to go. An hour and 33 and a half. And these challenges are not dissipating. If anything, it's getting more and more exciting. But the new favourite for me is the EBM Giga Porsche. I think they've got a chance here. An hour and 33 minutes remaining of this epic contest. And still they put pressure on, still they pile it on, still there is a great chance for this race to go down to the wire. And I really think we've got a good battle in the offing here. Some stunning performances from the competitors across all of the classes. The battle is still going strong. Racers are still giving as good as they've got, and it's still very unpredictable indeed. The best kind of race, when you genuinely don't know what's going to happen next. And it's been like that all the way throughout. So through they come. Now, where is the leading gaggle of cars? Because all of them now, all four cars up at the front end are covered by an, a minute and five seconds. This is the AMAC Porsche coming towards us. They've had a lot of television time over the last hour or so. Clearly, the director really wanted to give them some air time. But first and Porter and Heimgardner, third in class, looking for the podium. Could have been leading by this point, but it's not over yet. They are only two minutes down the road from Pitti Bidambakti in the AAI BMW. That's very achievable. All three of these cars still have a really good shot. So it's obviously going to be a really exciting run for everybody. But we are going to have a sensational battle. And it really is going to be an exceptional performance. From the team that takes the win. Here comes the Aston Martin. That is Yasmin Jafar. Bringing the Viper Niza racing car into the pits. He's had a very solid run. Just so unfortunate that both the Aston Martin and Ferrari cars ended up losing so much time earlier on because we could have had a very solid race from them. And what perfect timing for Sean Henshawood to make his way back into the commentary box. We have got five cars in the mix for the victory and there's two minutes separating all five cars. The Audis are very closely matched. The EBM Giga Racing Porsche has got back into third position having caught and passed the R&B Lamborghini for third position. Still no safety cars, still no code 60s, still no yellow flags. This is genuinely the most pure and most entertaining sports car race I've seen for years. Well, what a, what a great way to come back to uh, reinstate the Sepang 12-hour. 
That's perfect. That's just what we wanted to see. So we go into the, the final stanza. I guess we're starting to get towards, I would hazard, it's not quite the last pit stops. There's cars obviously in pit lane now. Certainly the second last pit stops for most of them. One more pit stop to go. We'll see which drivers are in which cars. Quite clearly the rock stars will be in the closing stanza of the race. But wow. You're going to need the rest for this last half hour, I think. Um, it's going to be very interesting, Jake. I'm really looking forward to the way this one plays out. Anything really happen over the last hour? I suppose the most significant factor is that the absolute racing number 26, Peter Cox, has been pushing it again, and they're really starting to flirt with truck limits penalties again. So that's worth keeping an eye on. Certainly in the hunt for the AM class, the AAI BMW has got back into the lead, but both the Moderna and AMAC Porsches are not done yet. They are still giving good pressure. They're still pushing hard. It's not been a significantly thriller second hour, but other than the EBM Giga Racing Porsche getting into third position on pure merit, catching and passing the Lamborghini for third, and for my money, getting into pole position to win this race, because don't forget the two Audis up front have yet to make their fifth pit stop. There's still quite a lot that can play out here. It's not been the most uh, grandstand of hours, but I'll tell you what it has done. It's, it's brought us one step closer to a nail-biting finish. I'm surprised we haven't seen more pit stops, to be perfectly honest, from the lead pack. They really are just stretching it to the absolute maximum of the car, which is getting us up somewhere between, sort of, what, 75 to 80 minutes for a stint. That's quite incredible. I would have thought we'd be six, seven, sort of seven, eight. Uh, pit stops for the full length of the race but that doesn't look like being the case yeah they've been very very clever at uh, being able to let these stretch as long as humanly possible so it's going to be really interesting to see who gets the run of the draw i don't think we've seen everything we're going to see from the audis yet they're first and second at present but i think they're hiding something i think there's something up their sleeve on paper the ebm giga racing porsche is favorite to win this because they have managed to catch and pass uh, the Lamborghini very quickly and they're not that far away they're only a minute behind the leading Audi and only 13 seconds behind Peter Cox in the Be Quick car so on paper they're the ones who could win this but I just wonder can the Audi stretch it without making pit stop number six because if they can then that's what's going to get them to the winning day it's so tough to tell which of these five cars is going to get it but one thing that nobody I think can dispute here Sean the star of the race has got to be Nazim Asman. He's been absolutely meteoric coming into this uh, EBM Giga Racing team for the first time, expecting to deliver, not having driven or raced a GT car at this level before. And he has been as good, if not better, than a lot of the drivers who've been doing this for a decade. It's good news. It's good news, certainly, for, uh, for motorsport in Malaysia to have a driver of that calibre coming through the ranks at such a young age and, and racing still overseas. Is he racing the uh, FIA F3 Championship this year, do you know? I don't think he's managed to get a seat for this year, which is one of the reasons why he's come back to his native Malaysia. But, you know, performances like this are going to get him back on the radar again. It's going to make the sponsors realise, you know, if he can do this with barely any preparation and barely any, you know, opportunities to learn the car and learn the circuit in quite the same, you know, because it's a different circuit when you drive it in a new car. You've got to relearn it all again because he's a single-seater driver, so driving a GT car is very different. So the way he's adapted quickly... That's got to, you know, count in terms of his future aspirations. There's going to be a lot of people taking note of this. Well, the other thing these days, of course, is single-seated drivers tend to be progressing towards F1. Let's face it, that's that's the idea. Or if you don't get that far, maybe IndyCar or Super Formula or something along mm -hmm. those lines. But look at the world of GT racing. There's been a few stop their journey through the early stages of their careers in open wheelers and jump across to GT racing and make a career and a living as factory drivers. So maybe this is a, a bit of an eye-opener for the young Malaysian driver to say, hey, well, maybe here's a different alternative route for your future that could actually be both more profitable and most, uh, more rewarding. So this could be, could be the start of something new. Indeed. So what are you going to get to see, I guess, for the next uh, 56 minutes or so is what strategy are Audi going to employ? Can they extend this to make sure they don't have to pit for a sixth time? They absolutely have to pit for a fifth. Uh, you've got Yu Kwai, who's been out there for an hour and six minutes. Peter Cox has been out there for an hour seven. Uh, Bao Jin Long has got to be a breaking point. He's done an hour 14 in the car now. 
So they're trying to stretch that as long as possible in the R&B. I think all three of those cars are trying to ensure that they do not pit in for a sixth time. They want to make sure that pit stop number five is their last. EBM Giga Racing and Craft Bamboo are not throwing that car. They, they're going to throw pushing and caution to the winds. For me, EBM Giga has the chance to win this on paper, but the Audis can stretch it. They're going to be hard to beat. Over to you. All right, mate. Thank you. Let's take this through for the uh, for the next hour and gets into the exciting part of the race because certainly within the last hour of this race, everybody should have conducted well and truly. All their pit stops should be run and done and just a charge through to the finish line. What do the teams have left? As uh, Jake quite rightly points out, the EBM Giga Racing Team, they've got the, uh, the foundation of racing in this part of the world. They've got the experience and the knowledge of someone like Earl Bamba behind them. They've got the Porsche, which has shown itself more than capable over the last couple of years with this new uh, 992 entry as to just what that car is capable of so they've got all the bits in front of them but they're facing absolute racing one of the most successful teams arguably the most successful team in the asian region they've got two cars in the field that are capable of uh, winning this race outright they've got two factory drivers one apiece christopher harsa marcus winkelhock and then of course you've got um the team from uh, from China, the Chinese-based team of uh, Juan Bo, the R&B Racing Lamborghini with Bao Jin Long currently at the wheel, and you can't discount Craft Bamboo Racing at any stage with the experience that they have with their uh, their current car, which is the Mercedes AMG GT3. So this really will play out very very interestingly over the course of the next hour, and by the time you uh, hear from Jake again. As I've just made myself aware of how Jake got that information about how long the stint's been running, my computer monitor has closed off the last column on the screen of the uh, the timing screen that we have access to, and of course it tells you how long the stint is. So at some stage, very very soon, we should expect to see the two absolute racing Audis come down pit lane. But as uh, Jake said, are they stretching the strategy? We still have an hour twenty to go. If they can manage to eke out maybe five more minutes or perhaps a little bit more, they might just be able to make this run. And currently, as he quite rightly pointed out, Baojin Long's been out there for an hour 17. Pity Baron Barkley's been out there for almost an hour 20. That's 80 minutes in this stint. They can't have much more left in those cars, but with, well, 82 minutes left to go, it is going to be tight, so I reckon within probably three laps, you're going to start to see some of these top teams make their fifth and arguably their, fine, their uh, final stops. Just as I was saying, that uh, car 101 with Lee Jia has just had a uh, track limits warning for, surprise, surprise, turn six. So uh, that is obviously still claiming drivers as they're pushing as hard as they can over the closing stages of this race. Stretched, as we already know, um, it's going to be two hours longer than the original scheduled finishing time because of the delay at the start of the race. There was an incident just prior to the race which saw some damage to the Armco fence on the outside of Turn 1. So uh, that saw us two hours behind the scheduled starting time which therefore meant that with eight hours of this variant of the Sapung 12 hours to uh, run this year that we would finish at uh, what will be midnight uh, KL time as opposed to 10pm. It's a little bit later for the teams as we watch Andrew Harrianto come Continue. Sorry, you Kwai. Andrew Harrianto's done his stint. He's over. That's that's concluded. You Kwai still circulating with a 2096. So he's not hanging around still. That's a pretty fair pace. In fact, last time round, he was second fastest car on track. The 2093. Alex Imperatore is back in the Harmony Racing Ferrari. Sadly for them, now down four laps. So uh, they are not going to be in the outright equation unless of course something quite dramatic happens over the closing stages of this race and finding four laps with uh, what, eight cars in front of you is unlikely. Pity Birenbaki is now in pit lane so 
he has done a bit over 80 minutes and there is now 80 minutes left in this race we expect to see Tanan Sathin Thirikul jump back behind the wheel young tyre driver having started this race and uh, he looks like he may well conclude it now I apologise to Betty Chen if that is the scenario well that's Todd Pitty he's out of the car oh no he's not he is now, and uh, jumping in behind the wheel is, uh, is is his compatriot. It isn't Betty Chen. So Tanat Sathian Thirikul will finish this race for the number 91 Singer Fist Team AAI BMW. So that job's done. By the time they rejoin, they'll have about 78 minutes left in this race. It's still a fair stint for a, uh, a driver to be pushing over the closing stages of this race, but uh, that will certainly highlight where they are. Now, if the BMW can run to 80 minutes, where can the Audis run to? Currently, uh, Peter Cox has done the most laps in an Audi at uh, 74 minutes. Baojin Long's just ticked over 81 minutes in the car. He must be next in. In fact, I think he's just come in pit lane now. Yes, he has. The number four R&B Racing Lambo is now down pit lane. So from Baojin Long's perspective, let's see whether or not they uh, put Ye Hong Lee in the car or whether, in fact, Afik Yazid gets back in for a final stint. We will soon see, provided we keep this vision. A funny feeling that might be Yazid ready to jump back behind the wheel, but we'll soon find out as the uh, number 91, sorry, the number 91, of course, the number 91 entry returns to the circuit. I got thrown by the number 15 entry uh, just as they were rejoining. So you quiet continues to lead just clicked over 74 minutes in his stint I'd expect the next one into pit lane well let's see Christian Char has also done 70 minutes during his stint the modern motorsport Porsche back in position number 7 they are three laps down on the leaders. Jeffrey Lee is in pit lane. And the Craft Bamboo Mercedes. See where this brings them into the equation. There he is just appearing through bottom of screen. Now who will jump into the number 88 entry? I would suggest it's going to be Sandy Stuvik. I think by the look of the helmet, that's exactly who it is. He's certainly got plenty of energy. That was a fair launch. Take up baseball. So the Lambo looks like it's about you back on circuit. So the R&B Racing Lamborghini resumes in position number four. So maybe one of the Porsches with the uh, yellow lights coming down into turn one. An indication of that shortly. So Ye Hong Lee is behind the wheel of the Lamborghini for the last leg. So quite clearly, Afik Yazid has uh, completed his maximum number of laps. It's obviously a minimum for the drivers and a maximum, of course, or maximum's four hours. Um, so he may not have done that much. He may well have done that much. But uh, it certainly looks like Johan Lee is behind the wheel of the Lambo, who's jumped into Craft Bamboo entry. No vision of that at the moment. 
but we'll soon get an update on that front. 76 minutes for Uquai, 78 minutes now for Peter Cox. There is 75 minutes left in this race. Interesting to see how the two factory Audi drivers fare under uh, full speed. Nazim Asman, last lap out at 2.10.0. So he is on a pretty fair pace. Uquai, the race leader at 2.09.9. Holds a lead of 61 seconds. And that is the lead Audi in pit lane, is it not? Yes, it is. No, that's Peter Cox. That's the uh, number three P3 car. Christopher Hasa with his seat in hand. So expect next lap round, you will see you quite into pit lane. And let's just see where it all plays out and where Nazim Asman manages to uh, get himself. We saw earlier, whilst he was locked in a battle with Christopher Hasa, that Hasa wasn't really closing him down all that much. There was only tenths in it. So the young Malaysian driver, as uh, Jake was pointing out earlier, was doing an absolutely stellar job. So there's no guarantee that Christopher Hasa, or for that matter, Marcus Winkelhock, will be able to uh, keep pace with the Porsche. So this is where it's going to get really interesting. This brings us to the end of the pit stops in all likelihood. So Christian Char's in, perhaps Francis Char will take over. So that's the Modern Motorsport entry. And you could see top of screen, just before we change frame, you might see them just pull through in front. Uquai is back in pit lane in the number 18, absolute racing Audi. There he is. Marcus Winkelhock opens the door, gets set to take over course they're effectively a lap up on Peter Cox well, now of course that is Christopher Hasa so Hasa will get out ahead of them he won't make up track position it'll be interesting to see exactly where we are as Nazim Asman comes down pit lane this is interesting, we saw this before. Maybe they're just getting a final top up because he's only been in the car for 14 minutes. Maybe to ensure they're on an equal footing because the two cars that are st sitting in pit lane right now, no, there's a driver change. Okay, so that looks like Reed Harker might be jumping back in already just to take over this final stint or is he making some sort of adjustment there for Asman? No, clearly Asman's out. So this is going to be very, very interesting. So the Porsche will now split the two Audis. You'd expect Winklehock to go out as the new race leader. Depending on how much ground Christopher Hasser can make up in the Be Quick Audi over the course of his outlap, whether he's able to pull in too much ground, but he's likely to become the third driver in this battle for the front. As for Ye Hong Li, he is, uh, he's a fair way behind as it stands at the moment, but with the timing monitors a little bit array because we have cars still in pit lane, it's a little bit difficult at this stage to work out exactly where he'll sit in the equation, but certainly there's definitely a three-way battle between the two absolute racing Audis and the EBM Giga Racing Porsche for outright victory. Whether the Lamborghini and uh, certainly Sandy Stuvik can get himself into the equation in that Kraft Bamboo Mercedes, that will become the question, but I think you will see at least three cars on the lead lap. The number 18 absolute racing Audi of Marcus Winkelhock, who I think has probably left pit lane. Yes, he has. Uh, number 16 EBM Giga Racing Porsche which is still in pit lane and the car on screen no, there it is now just leaving the uh, Harmony Racing Ferrari pulls into pit lane with Alex Imperatore doesn't look like he's getting out of the car so he looks like he's going to go through to the end in fact Imperatore has been in the car for 40, uh, 41 no this is this stint so I've just missed it I thought it said 40 minutes so I'll uh, pull that one back. 
I'm not 100% certain until he gets out of pit lane exactly how long he has been back in, although they're calling him stints now, so I guess that means we won't really know how much time he's done in the car up to this point. And for those of you that were managed to, uh, or had managed to pick that up, you might be across it, but uh, I've missed that one, unfortunately. So Winklehock is shown as race leader from Harker. 58 seconds is the advantage. Christopher Haas are shown as uh, two minutes 22 behind. Of course, they're doing two minute 10 laps on average. So two minute 22 would put him a lap behind. But of course, they've come out of pit lane. They're in out laps mixed in with uh, Haasa, who's a driver who's been out there circulating already and getting tyres up to temperature. We're not quite sure until we conclude this lap exactly where we sit on this front. Torre gets set to head back out with uh, just over, just under rather, 70 minutes left in this race. So Winklehock, Harker, Haasa, Hongli, Stuvik, Porter, Sathian Thirical, Francis Chia, Alex Imperatore and Dominic Ung are the top 10 in the final car that is still running as things stand. Lee Jar in the FM Motorsport by Silver Rocket GTC class Porsche. There is the Mercedes going through turn 15. Sandy Stuvik at the wheel. Now we'll get a little bit of an update. Stuvik's just punched out a 208456, which after, uh, well, near seven hours in this race is the fastest lap that that car has turned. So Stuvik's charging. So there's one. Let's see where we are with Winklehock. Sounded like an Audi going through the final corner. Watts just crossed the line. An update for position. That was the 26th entry of Christopher Hasa. 207.9 last time round. So that's a half a second up on Stuvik. So uh, he's stretching the advantage. And that's showing is just nine seconds now behind Reed Harker, who is actually 41 seconds behind race leader Marcus Winklehock. So it's going to go be uh, game on. As Jake rightly pointed out, this is very much going to be a strategy run. How far the drivers push things, and uh, in the case of Marcus Winklehock, just how much he needs to charge away at the front of the field because, well, look at the way the car's sitting on the circuit and where he is track limits wise. That's the thing that brought them unstuck last time. I'm not sure at this late stage in the race whether leniency is gonna go towards the team and to be a 10 second penalty or whether or not it might actually build to something like a drive through penalty. That would completely destroy the equation of the race for the absolute team, so I'm sure that Ingo Mater and the team have said to Marcus Winklelock before he's jumped in the car, please, please, please keep the wheels within the boundaries so that we are not lumped with another penalty. Because if we get that, all this strategy that's brought us back to the front of the field is effectively straight out the window. I'm still surprised by the decision to bring the uh, EBM Giga racing car in after just 15 minutes of a session for as in Asman, but uh, it may well have been that on uh, on calculation that they couldn't have got the car to the finish from the point that they pit on. And that may well have started all the way back from Adrian De Silva's first stint. We're talking about the race leaders at that very first stop six hours ago. He was the first of the leading cars to hit pit lane and he did a stellar job. He was right up there. Uh, punching out some very, very solid laps, but he pit just after the hour mark. And that might have put the team back enough because we, we're not running safety car interventions. There's been no lack of pace really since the uh, the drop of the green flag. So there's been no real opp opportunity rather to be able to twist the strategy and adjust things based on the safety car intervention, which can often throw the equation completely out the window. So this is the full scenario where you are maximizing the greatest distance that you can get from a fuel tank and a set of tires tires well the control hand cooked rubber has certainly done the job there's no issue there it's really just about how much you can make the driver last in the conditions and how much you can use fuel wise 
as the 51 AMAC team appears back on screen. Position six for Ben Porter. Just cruising on around, leading the GT3 AM category. Sandy Stubing charges along. Well, he's going to get not charging. He's caught up at the moment with uh, Alex Imperatore battling over position. He's two young drivers. Well, Alex isn't as young as he used to be, but still I'll classify him as young, considering I'm an old bloke. He is very much on top of his game and very adaptable as a driver. He's done a lot of miles here. In fact, I think he's still based in China, Alex Imperatore. Certainly was based in Shanghai for quite some time. Great opportunity for a young European driver to come out to, the, out to this part of the world and drive all manner of different equipment at the front of the field, certainly in his early years, but the competition's got a little bit deeper in more recent seasons, and drivers like Sandy Stuvik have really stepped up to have the ability to take the fight to a driver the calibre of Alex Imperatore, so it's not going to be quite as easy for the, uh, the Swiss driver to uh, just drive away from some of these guys now. A little bit of rubber just coming off the car. I hope that was rubber and nothing more sinister. Fastest first sector, well, I think of the race, certainly of that team for Christopher Haaser, 26.97. Reed Harker, by contrast, did a 26.99 that last lap for his first sector. So uh, it's tight and we saw that before. So it's not a foregone conclusion at eight seconds or just under eight seconds between Christopher Haaser and Reed Harker, that uh, this gap is going to be closed down anytime soon. Let's keep, a, keep an eye on the sectors as they punch those out. But certainly this is the way the race is going to unfold. Winklehock leading the field. Last lap, 2087. He is currently 38 seconds ahead of Reed Harker. Last lap, 2078, nine tenths faster. Christopher Haas at last lap, 2.07.4. Less than eight seconds off the tail of the young Kiwi. And in position four, Ye Hong Lee's 2.09.3 last lap. To Sandy Stuvik's 2.09.4. Sandy Stuvik's a good uh, 85 seconds behind the Lamborghini. So they've got an awful lot of work to do if that Craft Bamboo entry is to... Uh, to try and work itself into the equation over the last, well, over the last 63 minutes of this race. So a quick look at where Sandy is on track. Well, he's right with the Ferrari, he's on screen. You can see it there now on down to turn 15, just turning through. And the race leader, car number 16, sorry, car number 18 is, uh, heading between turns three and four. So that would suggest that Sandy and uh, the Ferrari, or certainly Sandy, is a lap down yeah, on the leaders. So they've got uh, plenty of work to do. Christopher Haaser, 207.1, fastest lap of the race so far. 207.1, 207.4 for Winklehock, 207.7 quite likely to uh, to Reed Harker. In fact, it is quite likely to Reed Harker. That's the lap time he turned last time round. So 1.1 seconds, 1.2 seconds rather faster than the race leader. So he's actually closing in on Marcus Winklehock. So whether Winklehock's being told to just conserve fuel a little more, given that uh, he's been in the car, well matter of 40 seconds longer than Reed Harker. But Harker's not hanging around, nor is Christopher Haaser. He's closed the gap down to 7.3 seconds now. He's been in the car longest than he, longer than his rivals, by more than a minute up on Winklehock. I don't think that's going to matter too much. Stuvik now, fastest lap. That faster than Winklehock last time round. So the pace is really starting to heat up. This is getting very, very interesting. Marcus Winklehock on screen. Let's watch the exit of the corner. He's got to be very careful with track limits. Now, we haven't seen any penalties for track limits for a few minutes, which is very, very good news. 
No, we haven't. The last one was back 37, well, that's about oh, 20 minutes ago, which is uh, which is very good, and that was for Lee Jar. Track limits at turn six. So uh, let's hope they manage to maintain this pace without exploring the outer edges of the circuit and that everything follows through just the way the team want to see it happen. 2088 for Winklehock. So he's settled into that comfortable rhythm. Here's Francis Char. Being taken by Ehom Lee at the R&B Racing Lambo. See just how closely matched these GT cars are. The Porsche and the, uh, with the, the flat six versus the naturally aspirated 5.2 litre V10. Very, no, very, very nearly nothing in it in a straight line. Francis Char didn't give much up after that passing move was made. That was all done through the uh, the pace of the Lambo. Now, Hong Lee, last time round, 2.10. We got caught up in traffic. He'd been doing 2.09s and 2.08s, high 2.08s. Francis Char's doing 2.12s. So a good couple of seconds a lap faster for the young Chinese driver. Fastest uh, second sector now for Imperatore, faster of anybody in the field. 28.1 or 28.2 for Haasa. So the uh, Chinese-based Swiss driver in the Harmony Racing 488 Ferrari is turning a very, very nice pace. He, of course, is also in the 207s. Last time around 207.99, so just in the 207s. Reed Harker, 207.9. Haasa, 207.4. Now, the race leader's just gone over the line again, 2.094. So he's losing a second a lap. Now, how much longer can he afford to do that? Well, there's less than 60 minutes to go. That essentially means, say, 26, 27 laps. Second a lap, he loses 26, 27 seconds. He's up by 36 seconds. You only need to uh, to win by a tenth of a second at... at uh, well, probably a thousandth of a second, photo finish, of course, but um, doesn't have to be wholesale time, doesn't have to be by four laps, doesn't have to be by 50 seconds. Maybe this is a calculated move from the Absolute Racing Team just to ensure that nothing goes wrong, there's no additional pre uh, pressure applied to either car or driver, and they're just going to comfortably see this one out. It would be a smart move. This team's done that before. They know how to play the game. Arsa is the one who is really having to push. He made up just a tenth that time round. Harker, 207.9. Arsa, 207.8. The gap, 6.76, or 6.78 seconds, rather. It's very, very close. So the way things are playing out at the moment, it looks very much like Winklehock is comfortable. He's not pushing any harder than he needs to. We know he can get about 80 minutes out of a stint. Well, he jumped in the car and got things going with about, well, like, uh, 71 minutes to go, 72 minutes to go. So he should be comfortable on fuel economy. That shouldn't even be remotely an issue. If he doesn't need to push, then no need to push. Reed Harker, he, he pitted not long after the uh, the two Audis just for a top up. As a man jumped out and uh, put Harker back behind the wheel, the uh, ultimately the faster of the drivers in that team. The young Kiwi is really pushing to make up that deficit and to try and maintain at the very least second ahead of Christopher Haasa, but perhaps just eke into that lead of Marcus Winklehock. Tall ask when you've got uh, an Audi factory driver in front of you and an Audi factory driver behind you, but this is uh, what makes the medal of the driver. This could be a... Uh, crowning moment in the career of young Reed Harker if he can manage to drive this car further forward and uh, maintain that pace and close the gap. You see the time? 11.03, nearly 11.04 p.m. Race finish dead on midnight. So uh, we have just over 56 or just on now, 56 minutes to go in this race. The lead, 34 seconds now. 6.4 seconds, the gap between Reed Harker and Christopher Haasa. 
Yeah, Hong Lee comfortable back there in fourth position at the minute, 33 seconds back. He's got a lead of a minute 22 over Sandy Stuvik. Tanat Sathin Thirikul, well, he's a minute 30 further back from Stuvik, but uh, he's a lap down on the leaders as we go back to a replay of some of the vision through the night. Well and truly full dark. Graham Gartner doing a great job handing over to Ben Porter. And, uh, Christian Schauer handing over to his brother, Francis, for the uh, the last stint in this race. We expect it to be the last stint. And of course, um, we saw the Lamborghini now has Ye Hong Lee back behind the wheel. Porter doing a great job. We expect that from, uh, from the Australian. Yasin Martin still charging around. At the moment, we have uh, Dominic Ang back behind the wheel. The modern Motorsport Porsche. What a fantastic job the veterans have done in that car. Honouring the memory of Wayne Shen. John Shen has been one of the real class performers today in this race. And their return to the Sepang 12 hour quite Audi Sport Asia junior driver, multiple winner in uh, Porsche Carrera Cup Asia a couple of years ago. Very talented young man, he's a great pace and he's brought that, uh, that Audi right into the equations. Great battling here between Sandy Stubik and uh, Alex Imperatore. Very, came very close to, uh, to contact. Fortunately, they got away with that one and we've been, well, we've managed to avoid contact pretty much apart from a couple of minor rubs, certainly in the turn one, two complex, which can happen due to uh, drivers being unsighted. We've really managed to get away with anything nasty right through from paid practice through the two 90 minute practice sessions through the three 15 minute qualifying sessions and into this long, arduous eight hour race. We've uh, been very, very lucky and fortunate uh, retirement of the two AAI Motorsports BMWs has been the only chink in what has been an almost perfect weekend after a seven year sabbatical to see the return of the Sapung 12 hours. So what a great return to competition in this part of the world. And I'm sure David de Gobi and the top speed team will be overjoyed with the end result replay what have we missed Marcus Winklehock and those glowing brakes it's one of the delights of racing under lights the sparks the hot exhaust you can see that glowing in the uh, the engine bay at the back of the Audi R8 it's a magnificent and very successful 5.2 litre V10 naturally aspirated but watch those uh, wheels off Marcus Winklehock seeing any uh, dramas here. Andre Heimgartner's in the number 51 entry. I've missed that, so clearly Ben Porter has hit the pits at some point. The uh, very, very fast and talented Kiwi, Andre Heimgartner, behind the wheel, 208.8 last time round, so he's punching out some pretty serious laps. 18.9 seconds behind Francis Char. And that is to take over position two in the GT3 AM category. And our Sathin Thirikul then is the next step further forward. And uh, he was like, well, I think over a minute ahead. Now oh, there's a warning. Sandy Stuvik's pushing things in the uh, number 88 Craft Bamboo entry. The J-Fly entry shared with Jeffrey Lee. In position number five minute 21 back from Ye Hong Lee in the RMB racing Lamborghini and position wise Francis Cha is a uh, minute 31 behind Tanart Sathin Thirikul so if Andre Heimgartner makes up that ground he's really going to have to hustle with Sathin Thirikul turning out laps in the 209 1s last time round to uh, Heimgartner's 2088 there's not a chance as they would say not a snowflake's chance in hell managing to uh, to breach that gap despite his immense talent and the pace of the car there's just not going to be enough time left but you can never say never in an endurance race certainly when these cars have been running full green from 
seven hours and ten minutes ago to the point we are in the race right now. Anything can still happen, and let's hope it doesn't. Having said anything can still happen, let's go to the weather map. Let's one last check of the radar and see where those uh, small storm cells were. There was some chance it may have impacted the race a little bit earlier. But right now, it is, uh, from what I can see, absolutely clear all around Kuala Lumpur. So um, I don't think the weather is going to play any part in this race, which probably is a good thing. It means we've uh, run all the way through this race to this point. Some wood I can touch for a great superstition. Uh, we have no safety car interventions, which in this day and age in GT racing is a minor miracle. There is Sandy Stuvik still punching out some quick laps. Let's see how this one goes into the books. He has Reed Harker immediately behind him. So Harker ticks off another lap now. 2077 race leader Marcus Winklehock. Well, he's got his skates on. No, that's the best lap, Sean. Wrong column, last lap. Reed Harker, 2081. So only four tenths off their best. Marcus Winklehock still 2091, so he's not got any kind of hustle on at the moment. What's interesting is Hark has actually extended his advantage over Christopher Haas. It got down to about 6.3, 6.4 seconds. It's back out to 6.7. They both did a 2081 last time round. Now, what's interesting is Hark is going to have a little bit of traffic. He's flashing the lights with Sandy Stuvik. Stuvik's just moved over and let him through. That's uh, very gentlemanly because, I mean, what's going to prove at this stage of the race, making life difficult for the Porsche? And, uh, talking Porsche and Craft Bamboo Racing, it wasn't all that long ago that uh, Daryl o. Young and Frank Yu were racing Porsches as part of the Craft Bamboo Racing operation, moved across to Mercedes AMG, been very successful in that transition former Audi uh, regular Jeffrey Lee into the family. And, uh, Jeffrey alongside Sandy and uh, Young Jatong have been part of this team this weekend for the 2023 Sepang 12 hour. And there's Alex Imperatore working into the equation. Dominic Young in his sights. Next one to tick off track. Imperatore is in fact three laps up on the uh, number 65 Viper Nisa Racing Aston Martin. So it's not for position. Well, it's not for position in the overall rankings. It's for position on track. Now here's a drag race and a half. Four litre twin turbo V8 versus well, it's four litre twin turbo V8 to be perfectly honest. Who comes out on top at the end of this one? Pretty sure it'll be the uh, Ferrari by virtue of the fact it's got the inside line into the corner. And I don't think really Dominic Ang was going to close the door and make this any more difficult than it needed to be. Number 101 Porsche, the GDC entry back into pit lane. Lee Jia may well be to hand over to Sean Tong to take them through to the chequered flag. Hoping there's nothing sinister going on there as they make what would be their seventh or eighth stop potentially be their seventh stop in the race. The Ferrari on screen has made eight stops. So too has the uh, Vipanese racing entry of Dominic Ang, Jasmine Jafar, and uh, no, it's not Sean Tong. The hood up again. I wonder whether there's a bit of an issue in the car that they're just keeping tabs on, or they're just maintaining fluids. I'm sure there is no issue. Plenty of time with a full refuel. Not sure whether they've made a tyre change. Ten sets of the control Hankook tyres from uh, qualifying through to the end of the race. Given they've made seven stops, there's uh, every chance they've put a brand new fresh set on for each stop. So that changeover might well have been uh, Simon Chen back in the car. So Lee Jia is jumping out wasn't Sean Tong, unless Sean's had a helmet change for some reason, but I don't think he's had a suit change, nor is his height changed by a couple of inches, so I'm tipping that is uh, Simon Chan. 
jumping in behind the wheel. Here comes the fresh hand-cooked rubber, stickers, appropriately named because they still have the uh, manufacturer's stickers on them. So a set of stickers, fresh green slicks to go on for the final 45 minutes of this Sepang 12-hour race. Up front, the lead now 30.3 seconds, 2093. Marcus Winkelhock, 2088. Reed Harker, uh, he's made a little bit of ground, 2082. So six tenths up for Christopher Harser. He's taken a big chunk out that lap. 6.1 seconds, the gap now between position two and three. And I think this may well go through to the final half hour of this race where we will see what Christopher Harser has for young Reed Harker and whether or not the absolute racing team can manufacture a one-two finish and keep out his recent run of successes here at the Sepang 12 Hour Alive. 2015, 2016 were victories outright to the Audi R8 LMS GT3. And they are looking for a three-peat. And Absolute Racing will be absolutely overjoyed to be the ones to deliver that result. It's been a long time coming, seven years in fact, the sabbatical. It's a long break between drinks here at the Sepang 12 hour. Speaking of drinks, I'm sure there's been plenty of those consumed during the heat and humidity here at Sepang International Circuit over the course of the last eight hours. It's been a, uh, a thirsty job drivers keeping themselves cool in the cars as best they can helmet cooling cool suits in many cases dry ice in some cases some of the asian drivers as we spoke about a little bit earlier choose not to use the cooling they of course have uh, acclimatized having spent a lot of time competing on the circuits of malaysia and thailand and to a lesser extent japan where it can be very very humid Simon Chan takes over the reins of the 101 FIM, sorry, FM Motorsport by Silver Rocket entry. The Hong Kong based team, sorry, the Chinese based team, Hong Kong drivers, two of them, of course. As we get into lap number 194. Here is the race leader coming through turn five. The 16 entry heading through turn two. So that is the split at the moment. The 26 entry coming through turn two. 5.7 seconds the gap now. Reed Hark has just lost a little bit of time that last lap. He's gotten around Sandy Stuvik in the uh, number 88 Craft Bamboo Mercedes. Race leader on screen, Marcus Winkelhock just riding this out comfortably holding that gap at the moment only dropped three tenths to reed harker last time out there's jasmine jafar jumping behind the wheel of the viper Nisa racing entry I did ask way on tan a little earlier via social media what the damage to the left front of the car was i have not heard back and the car is still circulating quite comfortably so clearly it hasn't been any kind of issue it's great to see no kind of issue for the uh, third remaining fist team AAI Singer BMW M4 GT3. Tanat Sathin Thiracle in position six has taken the uh, the lead back again in the GT3 AM category. Francis Char still hanging on to position number two. And he is maintaining pace with... Uh, Andre Heimgartner, who last time around did a 2.10.3, Francis Char a 2.10.6. There's every chance that the uh, the long-standing Porsche veterans are going to be able to hang on to this and carry it through. Oh, OK, I didn't see in the brightness there that the Aston was inside the, the Porsche as well. Winklehock clean, keen to, to dive through. Dominic Gunn has stayed behind the wheel, so Jafar's done his job. Uh, Dominic up to speed of course does a lot of miles alongside Douglas Koo bit of a journeyman Dominic Ang 
He's uh, driven all manner of cars over a long period of time, from prototypes to touring cars to GT cars to, to formula cars. Very experienced campaigner. He shows that in his pace, but not much for them in the position they are currently running back there in position 10 to uh, to prove by going out to uh, to break any kind of record. The car, as we were talking about earlier, pretty badly damaged in the Asian Le Mans series over in Abu Dhabi. It was uh, put in a container after the race, shipped back to Malaysia. Pretty sure the team have a base here at Sepang, just as Absolute Racing do, as Hankook Motorsport Tyres Asia do. A number of teams do have a base at Sepang International Circuit, so dragged it out of the container a little bit earlier this week and rebuilt the front of the car and uh, got that up to a pretty impressive pace. Jafar and uh, Anwar were not too far off the pace of the leading cars. Probably doing sixes, I think, during qualifying, sixes and sevens. We saw Winkle Hock into the low fours. Lap record, James Collado's 203.8. So uh, pretty impressive pace, all things considered. As we look at the race leader, Marcus Winklehock, coming through turn 15, behind him. That is Dominic Ung, we we're just talking about. And what is the lap time this time round for Winklehock? Crosses the line, should get an update. 2099 again. Reed Harker shouldn't be far away from crossing the line. There goes the 101 entry, the 488 entry, and coming to the line right about now. Top of screen is the number 16 EBM Giga Racing Porsche. 2085. So 1.4 seconds taken out of the lead. Next car in line at any time now. Well, he's stretched the lead again slightly. Christopher Haster got it down to 5.8 seconds. It's now up to 5.9 seconds. This is a real seesaw battle. This one really is going to go into the final stages of this race. This will well and truly recharge Jake Sanson and get him fired up into the final stages of this race because there'll be something well worth watching, a battle over position to see whether or not Audi can make it a 1-2 finish. Of course, nothing is guaranteed, but at this stage... Marcus Winklehock with a 27 second lead is looking pretty comfortable and uh, certainly, I believe, more than capable of turning those 209s into 207s and certainly 208s. So he's got some extra pace left in that car, I'm sure. He's just conserving Christopher Haase. Well, he's going toe to toe with Reed Harker. They're well and truly matching lap times. He was out at 6.8 seconds. It's to 5.9 seconds now. That's over about six or seven laps. So he's only making up short gains. So uh, Reed Harker isn't out of this yet. That uh, menacing EBM Giga Racing Porsche could yet spring a surprise. And should anything happen to Winklehock at the front of this field, then uh, they will be there to pounce. The New Zealand inspired team, Bamba Motorsport. A lot of success here at Sepang International Circuit over the years. Earl and his brother Will certainly done a lot of miles. Earl going through to be one of Porsche's favourite sons. Having won Le Mans on a couple of occasions. Now running his own team and they've been very successful in all manner of competition in this part of the world. There he is, Reed Harker on screen. Sun Derby sponsorship. Very impressive livery. Really stands out. I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. See the glowing exhaust system under the rear of the 992 Porsche GT3R. Glowing brakes, glowing headlights. I'm sure the temperature of the drivers is glowing too. As we get into just over half an hour left in this race. 26.6 seconds the margin from P1 to P2, 209.1 to 209.6, 209 dead for Christopher Haase, 5.7 seconds the margin. He's really only making up small digs. That time round it was 143 tenths of a second. So not really enough when you consider he needs to be making up wholesale tenths. Two, three, four, five, six seconds if he can, but I don't think that's going to happen. 
Track-wise, the race leader is coming through turn 11. Ahead of Reed Harker, the 101 Porsche is just up ahead of him here. He should get him on the run down to turn nine, potentially. If not, certainly on the way out of turn nine. There they are, lights flashing. Doesn't need to be held up, least of all by a uh, another uh, car from the same mark. And behind him, that's the car he's concentrating on or trying perhaps not to focus on. No doubt the team are giving him updates and, and telling him to just focus on what he's doing. He's certainly making that run work perfectly for him. Next car in front for Reed Harker is the 488 Harmony Racing Ferrari. Ahead of that is Dominic Arm in the Aston Martin. And ahead of that is race leader Marcus Winklehock, 2093 that time round. The run up to turn 15, the final of 15 corners on this racetrack. The fifth left hand corner in a clockwise rotation of Sepang International Circuit across the line, 209, 209 dead. So another three tenths out of the race lead. What behind him as the uh, clearly the 26 car was caught up. It's behind the 101. I missed that crossing line. 5.2 seconds the margin now. So there's a little bit of lost time perhaps in that move around the Porsche. But what's interesting is now Christopher Haaster has been caught up through the 1-2 complex and on the run through to turn threes just managed to get through on the Porsche now. So whilst he managed to pull in five tenths from Reed Harker, I have every expectation that uh, that time, that deficit between the two drivers, Harker and Harsa, will have extended because I think Harsa has lost a fair chunk coming through that first couple of corners of this lap, getting past Simon Chan. So let's see as we get back to the timing monitor. But with 33 minutes to go, this battle for a second is really heating up. But I think the way things are looking right now, it's a very comfortable Marcus Winklehock on screen, out front, doing what he is paid to do. Drive this Audi R8 LMS GT3 Evo 2 as well as he needs to, to contribute towards another victory for Brand with the four rings. Audi Sport will be very happy with that. Now, was that just a puff of smoke? Did he lock the rears as he went in there? It certainly looks like he's gone a little bit wide. It could have been dust. It could have been anything, really, because the uh, bright lights of the uh, AAI BMW behind him as he turned into the corner. But that looked like a telltale tuft of white smoke as he went through and he did a 210 that lap so I think he may have just locked the rears heading into turn 15 and he's lost about a second as a result of that Reed Harker well also uh, traffic I guess but Reed Harker's pulled in a 2089 so that's another 1.2 seconds out of the race lead behind him as predicted, Haas has lost a little bit of time, but not as much as we may have expected for 2.091. So 5.4 seconds now, the deficit. This is really starting to get interesting as we close into the last half hour of the 2023 Sepang 12 hour here at Sepang International Circuit in Malaysia, 45 kilometers south of the Kuala Lumpur city center. As Francis Char now gets a warning, number one for this stint, Turn six, no real surprise there. As he concentrates on trying to keep that advantage over Andre Heimgartner, it's 9.8 seconds. Last time on round though, 1.4 seconds lost to the Kiwi driver in the AMAC Motorsport Porsche. Of course, both Titan 992 GT3 are GT3 Porsches as opposed to the 101 entry which is a GT3 Cup car also a 992 so there is a uh, distinction between the two there's the 101 car we we're just talking about on screen Simon Chan at the wheel holding position 11 outright but also of course leading the GTC categorization in this field 
So if they can keep this running, there will be a number one trophy for the 101 entry. FM Motorsport by Silver Rocket entry. And we fire through into the final sections. Welcome back, Jake Sanson. You're in for an absolute cracking final half hour. And I think this battle for position two is a long way from done as we just tick over 200 laps. It is absolutely astonishing to consider that the total laps by all participants is now over 2,300. We've had 76 pit stops, 200 laps completed, as you say, zero time under coach 60, zero time under full course yellow, zero time under safety cars. Absolutely fantastic that the race has just been allowed to be a pure organic thrash, exactly what we wanted. And I'm amazed that you've sat back with your uh, time to recover with a calculator to work all of this out. I would have sworn <laughs> you were glued to the television watching the third practice session of the Formula One. Oh, no, I, I always dedicate and I commit to, to the races that are in front of me. It's fa fabulous. I mean, technically on paper, we still have a five horse race. You never know what can happen in the last 30 minutes of a GT race. But considering the fact that Reed Harker is still technically chipping away at Marcus Winkelhock's lead and Christopher Haase is catching him in turn, this is going to go right down to the wire. We could have one of three cars, potentially even one of five cars, taking the victory here. It's absolutely phenomenal. And let's not forget that Andre Heimgartner is desperately trying to catch up to Francis Jar to see if the AMAC Porsche can get into second place in the AM category as well. Well, and, and as you're, you're just talking about that, as you've just said that, Francis Jar has just come across the line with a 2.10.4, the fastest lap for that car, his fastest lap. And I talk about them being veterans. These guys are businessmen, and they're not young young guys compared to a, a number of the guys in this field. And John Shen, Francis Char, and Christian Char have been turning in an absolutely stellar run. I still can't believe how good a job John Shen did considering his, his age and experience in these cars in the opening leg to go a full 83 minutes. Like that was just staggering on its, on its own. But since then, they've all got back into the car and punched out some really competitive laps. So whilst Andre Heimgarten is one of the best drivers in this part of the world down around Australia, New Zealand, he may not catch Francis Char and Francis has got the bit between the teeth. There's 28 minutes left in this race. So even the GT, uh, sorry, the GT3 AM category fight is, is still wide open. I'm going to go and leave you to it because you need to get wound up and build the excitement as we get into the final leg of this race. It's been fantastic calling this with you. I'm going to be interested to see how this plays out. I'll let you run through with it. Great job. Thank you so much. Sean Henshawood, ladies and gentlemen, giving us uh, all of the flavour and the action uh, through the course of the CPANG 12 hours. We have just 28 minutes to run and there are three cars legitimately in the fight for the GT3 victory. Marcus Winkelhock in the absolute Audi, still ploughing away on lap 202, 24.5 seconds ahead of the Kiwi Reed Harker. And Reed Harker in the EBM Giga Racing Porsche, desperately trying to chase them down, but they're only really taking anywhere between a hundredth and half a second per lap out of that lead that they have. So it's not quite going to be enough. Reed Harker really needs to dig deep and find something special to take on Marcus Winkelhock but he's got a bigger problem. Christopher Haase, the German driver in the B Quick Audi, is catching him like stink, taking anything between three tenths and even to up to a second out of the lead that that Porsche has built up. Uh, Ye Hong Lee is not quite done yet in the fight for fourth position because he's got to try and fend off from Sandy Stuvik in the Kraft Bamboo AMG Mercedes. All coming down in the end then, to the cars that were able to only go through the race with five pit stops as opposed to six. Into the pits again comes the F Motorsport Silver Rocket, and this is their ninth trip, uh, sorry, their eighth trip into the pits. Uh, Chan Sai Wai uh, just wanting to bring the car home at this point because obviously they are the only GT Cup car in the race, and it would just be fantastic to see them bring this car to the finish. So they're just finishing off, crossing the T's and dotting the I's, and it looks as though Chan Sai Wai is going to bring that car home, having been in the car already for an hour and uh, still just wanting to uh, finish the job off in fine style. But this is going to be a fascinating end to proceedings. And also, let's not forget that the battle for the AM victory is winding up in style as well. Talent Sutton Thigarakul, the tyre driver in the AAI Motorsports BMW, still running well in front of Francis Jar and Andre Heimgartner, who are dueling away magnificently the two Porsche drivers in the 
and class in the second position fight that he's going to go right the way to the finish line as well. The gap comes down between Winkelhock and Harker to 24 seconds. Half a second taken out then by the Kiwi, Reed Harker. But Christopher Haase takes out a further three tenths of a second himself. This could be really interesting. Reed Harker needs to push like crazy to close up on Marcus Winkelhock after an amazing battle, 25 minutes to go, and there are three cars separated by less than half a minute. And they're all in contention to win the Sepang 12 Hours of 2023. The first race of its kind for seven years. And it really has been an amazing battle. If the EBM Giga Racing car can take the victory from second place, uh, where they currently are, and from way down in seventh on the grid at the start, that would be a magnificent return on their investment. But as a team, they have worked tirelessly and put in an amazing job to work their way further forward. There is the... Mercedes still just trying to bring it home at this stage, uh, having had a great run at the head of the race at one point. But Sandy Stuvik in the Graf Bamboo is looking to bring it home in fifth position now. They had their opportunity, but didn't quite have the same sort of pace and longevity on uh, fuel consumption and engine management that some of their counterparts have done. So it looks like fifth position is all really that we can see for the Graf Bamboo team. Unless something occurs up front, it's not done yet. There's still plenty of time to take this one out. And Andre Heimgartner has got the gap down to 5.8 seconds now in his bid to catch Francis Jar in the modern Porsche as we look to get that race one out. It looks like it's going to be Tanat Sutton Tiraku who will have an almost unchallenged run in the AAI BMW for the AM class. They've managed to work themselves into a good position with a minute and 38 on uh, Francis Jar but second place is definitely up for grabs. And obviously, Alex Sempratori and Dominic Ang are looking to end a very frustrating day for the Harmony Ferrari and Viper Nisa Aston Martin, at least on a high note. Look at how hard Reed Harker is pushing as he comes out of the final turn. The gap comes down to 24, 1, 2, 3. That's good, but it's not enough if they want to keep this fight going all the way through because they need to gain a second per lap now to stand any chance and ultimately Marcus Finkelhock is able to respond to the challenge. This is definitely going to be a great opportunity. Dashed if things keep going the way they are. They need to really find something quite spectacular. When you consider that all of the races that Marcus Finkelhock has won over the years in GT racing, though, if it stays like this, he'll win the Sibang 12 hours for the first time and adding to his incredible collection of race victories in sports car racing. Christopher Haase would dearly love to win it a third time but in order to do that he's got to catch and pass uh, Reed Harker and then go after his teammate he's running out of time to do something about it but our focus is on that hunt for second place Marcus Winkelhock looking relatively safe in the lead provided nothing goes wrong but if it does then all of a sudden it becomes about the Be Quick Absolute versus the EBM Giga and so you cannot afford to back down for a moment you cannot afford to relent you have to keep pushing you have to keep telling yourself this race isn't won, it isn't done. There's still so much to do in these last 23 minutes. So the fight comes down to this to finish us off in majestic fashion. MG Mercedes there, that's Sandy Stuvik, just trying to gain any time possible on Ye Hong Lee up in front. Here is the Aston Martin, Dominic Ang, who will have to wait another year before trying to go for a third Zipang 12 hour victory to match the record. Uh, set over the years by Tommy Lee and Mok Weng Sun. But there are still race battles remaining in this one, and it's going to go to the wire. Reed Harker versus Christopher Haase. The gap comes down to 3.1 seconds at last count. But you can see that the pressure is really mounting on Reed Harker. He's got traffic in front of him. That's going to help him if he can get past it relatively quickly. He's got the Aston Martin side by side with him. He doesn't want to lose too much ground. The Aston Martin slots in behind. Good. That's great news for the ABM Giga Racing team that Reed Harker doesn't have to have too much to worry about for this lap at least. Christopher Haase, though, is going to work incredibly hard to catch up to that Aston Martin and try and do the hard work. If Reed Harker can, for the next 10 minutes or so, just keep a slower car in between him and the Be Quick Audi, they have a chance to sustain and consolidate this second position. I think they've run out of time, realistically to go and get the win because that's 24 seconds with 21 minutes to go. They have to hope that something happens to Marcus Winkelhock up front, which it still could. 
you know, there's still plenty of time. I've seen races fall apart at the seams. Don't forget a couple of years ago in the World Endurance Championship when the battle between Ferrari and Porsche came right down to the final 15 minutes of the season in Bahrain. And they accidentally ended up taking each other off the road. Ferrari victorious that day. Porsche left fuming. This is going to come right to the wire. Look at that. 2.3 seconds now. The gap as Christopher Haase has now got to deal with the Aston Martin up front. And that's going to hold him up for about half a lap. But the main objective now for Reed Harker is that he's got to try and get past the Ferrari up the road in front of him. So it's going to be tight all the way through. The right-hander. And the drop. Reed Harker cannot afford to let a single mistake creep in. It's been a long eight hours. You've got to keep it going. Christopher Haase. Man tasked with bringing this car home to the flag after the great work of Hank Kinks and Peter Cox. But the Be Quick Absolute is charging. They are catching the EBM Giga Racing car. But if there's enough traffic that the Porsche doesn't have to worry too much about Christopher Haase, they can still get this second place. But it will go right to the wire. There is Chris Haase pushing very hard on Reed Harker. He's got past the Aston Martin in good speed. This is now all about Reed Harker catching the car up the road in front and passing. And that is the Harmony Racing Ferrari of Alexandra Imperatore, who is going pretty quickly, actually. Imperatore is doing two minute tens. So about half a second slower than Reed Harker is currently going and about eight tenths of a second slower than Christopher Haase is currently going. So they need to make good use of the space here at EDM Giga. This is the chance to go after the Ferrari. Get past that Ferrari in the next three minutes and second place might just be guaranteed. You just got to keep enough distance between yourself and the third place car, which gets the gap down to two seconds. Chipping away at it little by little. Christopher Haase knows he's got a fast car underneath him knows he's got knowledge of this place better than Reed Harker. He's a double winner of this event. Christopher Haase pushing so hard to try and make this a one-two for the team. Double winner of this event. He won it in 2010 with the Arrows Racing Lamborghini LP560. Sharing that with Peter Cox as well. And then of course he won it last time we raced in 2016 alongside Lawrence Van Tor and Robin Fries. Can he win a third? It's looking unlikely. So he could settle for second. Look at the progress made. Two tenths made up three laps ago. A full second practically made up two laps ago. A lap ago, seven tenths made up. Christopher Haase will not back down from the fight. He's pushing so hard, he's running the ribbon of the curve. Reed Harker has now been given a first warning to respect track limits at turn six. That's what this means to them can't win at least break up the party at absolute as far as EBM Giga are concerned this is going to be a mighty result if they can get second place but it isn't certain Christopher Haase still chipping away they're going to the hairpin and that's a mock up for Reed Harker you cannot afford to throw this away not when you're this close to second position that's a big mistake in the final turn and as they come across the line this time by it's 1.2 seconds that's all there is between them Got to keep this going, boys. Do not overcook it at the first hairpin. Chris Haase locks it up at the first corner slightly. Then kisses the grass in his intensity to get back to the inside apex. Both drivers are absolutely on the ragged edge. Second position is up for grabs. Both pit crews are going to be on their feet. The nails bitten down to the bone on both hands of every mechanic. Desperately trying to close up on the man in second place. 23 seconds up the road is a fairly safe Marcus Winkelhock in the absolute Audi. Who would have thought it would come down to this? An absolute nail biter. 16 and a half minutes to go. Not a single full course yellow, not a single safety car. The race has just been allowed to run in its natural state. And what a finish it's going to be. You couldn't have asked for a more perfect running of a race. Yes, we had a two hour delay to repair barriers, but ever since then, it has been almost the perfect motor race. Reed Harker, 
throwing seven bells at the cars in front, trying to close them down. Christopher Haase, look at how quickly he's eating up the road. And Reed Harker has got to get past this Ferrari quickly, but the Ferrari gets out of the way of one, two cars. This is not what Reed Harker needed. He would have hoped that he could get past at a position where he, the Audi could get held up for a bit. And Alexander Imperatore is a sportsman. He doesn't want to ruin this battle. He wants to let it flow. So now it comes down to the slipstream and Chris Harte is going to be in the slipstream for the back straight. He won't make the move into the hairpin. He'll make it into turn one. And this is going to be about being brave into the braking zone for Reed Harker. Christopher Haase has already done the hard work. He's caught up to the Porsche. Now he's going to be in the slipstream as they come down the straight. 15 and a half minutes to go, but I don't think Chris Haase is going to need all of it. His first big attempt is going to be in a turn one this time by. He's in the slipstream. Where will Reed Harker place the car? He's not close enough yet, but he almost gets close enough in the braking zone. Reed Harker catches him out there. Chris Haase has to roll off the brake. Coaxed the car back in. The move is gone on this occasion, but 15 minutes remain. Christopher Haase is not one to rush these things, but how hard a task is Reed Harker going to make this? No second chances. This is going to be defend or surrender. Reed Harker over the curbs on the exit of four. Through the long flowing left-hander. Chris Haase can just be patient, can just wait, can just eat up the road. Keep it tidy, keep it tidy. Don't overexert the car. Look after the tyres. This is going to be a really interesting situation. As still, the contenders will run through. But Reed Harker just hanging on to this by a thread. Four tenths of a second when they came across the line last time by. It's going to be about that now. Also elsewhere, Andre Heimgartner has closed up to within a second and a half of Francis Jarre for second place in the AM class. So it's not done yet there either. If anything, that battle is just getting started. Can Reed Harker hang on in front of Christopher Haase for the last 14 minutes? It couldn't be a tighter fight. The Porsche versus the Audi, both in the same VAG group stable. Can Chris Haase clench second place away, snatch it from the jaws of victory? He's going to make a big lunge into the braking zone. Reed Harker has to be prepared for that, which he is. He's not going to lose ground anytime soon. They both run a little bit wide out of the final hairpin and across the line again. 13 minutes left. Christopher Haase is going to be in the slipstream. Reed Harker is going to need to defend. Doesn't have to just yet. You know that one of these guys is going to make a big error. And Chris Haase is the first one to drift out a little wide. Catches the grass on the inside curve again. Both drivers absolutely nailing these curves on the apexes. Bringing this race to a crescendo right at the end. An incredible race. I'm just praying it goes the distance without a single yellow flag, without a single code 60, without a single safety car. In which case, this race really would have given us everything we wanted and nothing we were fearing. Through the left, through the right. 209 laps will be completed at the end of this one. Absolutely incredible to see how this has gone. We will have completed over 2,400 laps by the end of this race across all cars. And yet not a single one of those laps has been behind the safety car. They've had a night off here in Malaysia. Look at how hard Chris Haase is pushing. Reed Harker all the way through this. This is what racing's all about. Give it everything you've got. Push the car to its limit. Reed Harker's got to be ultra defensive, but has also got to focus ahead of him, not just behind him. He's got to place the car in all the right places. He's got to make Chris Haase do all the hard work. He's got to read the situation valiantly. Pulls the car to the middle of the road slightly. We're talking a couple of centimetres over the line through the right. And now this is where the opportunity is really going to knock in for Chris Haase. Third attempt. Down the back straight. Follow in pursuit. Has a look. It's only a feint. It's not a proper move. 
But there might be an opportunity as Reed Arger drifts out wide. They're going to get side by side as they come off the turn. And they nearly bang doors. Reed Harker hangs on for one more turn. Down the main straight now. Christopher Haase tries again. Will he go for the move? Reed Harker's going to pull across. Chris Haase's going to go long. Can he get the switcheroo? He has to go long on defense. Both drivers giving it everything they've got. They will not concede a millimeter. Chris Haase gets a good run off too. If he can keep this going, he can get the run up towards turn four. Reed Harker knows he's going to be vulnerable. He tights in. He's going to have to pull the car to the middle of the road to give Chris Haase no option but to go far in. That's exactly what he does. But he can roll the car off the brake. It's going to be up the inside from Chris Haase. And this is going to be an acceleration to the left-hander. Side by side. Can Reed Harker hold on? They go absolutely door to door. What a brilliant battle. And Chris Haase makes it through. An amazing charge between the two cars. But Reed Harker isn't done yet. If he can get back in the slipstream now, he has another attempt into the hairpin. This is all going to be about Chris Haase checking away from the Porsche before he can retaliate. And I think he's done enough. Try as he might. I don't think Reed Harker's going to get another look. Especially considering these next flowing corners are going to suit the Audi better than the ailing Porsche. Chris Haase has done the hard work. He intimidated. He made it stick. He looked for every gap and opportunity. And on the switcheroo, he held it round the left-hander and has been able to take second position away from Reed Harker. That's how good Christopher Haase is. And the Absolute Racing crew are about to write a PR fairy tale. A 1-2 is now the likely outcome. Marcus Winkelhock has just gone into his 211th lap. There's not really a lot that Christopher Haase can do to throw this away now. Reed Harker will throw everything at it. But you watch, Harker has worked the tyres so hard trying to defend and trying to get away that over the course of the next three laps that Porsche will slowly fade Reed Harker is nine tenths of a second back now from the Audi he needed to get through at the hairpin after the pair of rights here's the move again watch this side by side millimeters apart I think they actually lent on each other through the left apex Chris Haase just gets a little blip of the throttle enough to move the car in front Job done. Magic. GT racing at night. Two racers absolutely leaning on each other through the left-hander in the chicane at over 100 miles an hour. That's motorsport at its best. Excellent work from Christopher Haase to bring the Be Quick Absolute car back into the fray in second position. They've had their difficulties, the Absolute Audi team. They have not had this easy at all. Meanwhile, we need to be looking at the Modena and AMAC Porsches in the AM class, because they're only three tenths of a second apart now, those two cars. So we could really do with looking at them as they come across the start finish line now, because they're going to be the next battle on track. Chris Haase has won this fight as far as he's concerned. It looks like Andre Hilgard has already got through. I think Hilgard has already got through into second place. Indeed, he has. The AMAC Porsche has got into second position. The Kiwi has already dealt with Francis Jar. I really hope we can pick up a replay of that manoeuvre if it's been picked up by the camera crew. Because we'll get to see, hopefully, where Andre Heimgartner made the move. But we're going to watch Marcus Winkelhock go into lap 213. Seven minutes remain in the Sepang 12 hours. And that's only, by my math, four laps remaining. An excellent job as Andrew Harianto, Yu Kwai and Marcus Winkelhock are all about to win the Sepang 12 hours for the first time. But the gap has come down to 19.7 all of a sudden. They've lost a second and a half on that last lap. If they do that for the next four laps, which I think is all we're going to have time for, they will still hold on to the win. But it's just a little quiet headache for Marcus Winkelhock and the absolute Audi crew. Marcus Winkelhock pushing very hard there into turn four and getting it slightly crossed up. I wonder if the team have told him, by the way, Chris Haase's got it a second. Gun it. And 
Marcus Finkelhock responding. He's got to be careful, though. He doesn't want to throw it away with only six minutes on the clock. He's got to bring it home. Through comes the Audi number 18, the absolute racing machine. Andrew Harianto, Yu Kwai, and Marcus Finkelhock, who is Mr. All-Rounder. He has literally driven everything pretty much that it is possible to drive in a racing driver's career, up to and including Formula One. What a disappointment that must be for Reed Harker. Sick to his stomach, I'm sure he'll be. The EBM Giga Racing team so close to the win, so close to second. It's all going to fade away at the end, but spare a thought for the man in that car early on in the day. In third position, the brilliant new talent of Nazim Asman, the Malaysian who did a fantastic job in his single seat today. He's in Euro Formula Open, in Spanish and Italian F4, in BRDC F3, and last year for high tech in the FIA Formula 3 Championship on the Formula 1 weekend. And here he is, battling away for a podium in Sepang. He gave it everything, as did the team as a whole. You've got to give them a massive amount of credit for taking the fight to absolute Audi. But strength in numbers is not something to sneer at in GT racing at endurance level. When you've got a whole team of two to three cars to go up against, it is very hard to knock the confidence of a team that is in such a strong position. Speaking of a team in such a strong position, the last remaining Chinese Taipei-based AAI motorsports car, the BMW M4, driven by Tanat Satin Tirakul. A fabulous end to the race for them as they are set to come through for the victory. And I think that is going to be one of, if not the very first, women to take a class victory in the Sepang 12 hours. Betty Chen, alongside Piti Birambakti and Tanari Satantinakul. It's going to be a big moment for Betty Chen. She's absolutely deserved it, as have her teammates, Piti Birambakti and Tanat Satantinakul. There's going to be a lot of jubilation on the podium. And fair play to the Antipodean crew in second place, the AMAC Motorsport Porsche of Messrs McPherson, Porter and Heimgartner. It's a great comeback to finish second in the AM class. And Francis Jaya in the Moderna Motorsports Porsche. Third position for the man from Hong Kong. They're not done yet either. They're only a second back from Andre Heimgartner. If he makes one mistake now, second place is gone. They're trying to stay with him. Reed Harker, meanwhile, as I said, the car was going to fade and it really has. 2.10.8 at the moment by comparison to Christopher Haase on a 2.09.4 but into the penultimate lap we go as the absolute Audi will come through this time by it will be the penultimate lap as we watch the GT Cup winners Chan Sai Wai, Lee Jaya and Sean Thong they were always going to win this because they were the only car in it but only if they finished the race and that hasn't always been certain either they've had their mechanical gremlins they visited the pits eight times, but they are going to come through and finish the job. What an incredible scenario this is. Francis Jaya has actually dropped the gap to Andre Heimgartner to less than a second. Into the penultimate lap we go. Marcus Finkelhock in the absolute racing Audi. Just bringing this car home. He doesn't even need to push. The gap has come down to 17.4 seconds but he's not pushing, he's just keeping it to what he can manage. However, Francis Jaya is pushing for second in the AM class. I really want to see this fight because I don't think Andre Heimgartner is safe in second position in the AMAC Porsche. The Moderna Porsche is all over the back of him. And all it's going to take is one decent run in the slipstream now that they're a second apart from each other. And that could change dramatically in the final couple of moments. But certainly, it's looking good for an absolute one-two for the absolute Audi team. Excellent work. And for all three drivers in this particular car, for Andrew Harianto, for Yu Kwai, and for Marcus Winkelhock, it's going to be their first win in the Sepang 12 hours. And a fantastic performance it is. They'll join some amazing names. Jimmy Lowe, Karamajit Singh, Tommy Lee, Jeffrey Wong, Admi Shahal, Tunku Hamam, Nigel Alban, Eric Yeo, Chin Su Jin, Fahad Moksani, Eddie Liu, Hiroki Kato, Faris Bauzi, Tenku Jan Lei, 
Kenji Hashimoto, Tony Riccadello, Damian French, Fadzilla Lang, Moksani Mahatia, Sven Herberger, Lars Eric Nielsen, Alex Davison, Darrell O'Young, Mok Weng Sun, Tatsuya Katayoka, Manabu Arido, Johan Ajmi, Peter Cox, Christopher Haase, Nobutero Taniguchi, Masataka Yanagida, Dominic Ang, Craig Baird, Hiroshi Hamaguchi, Gian Maria Bruni, Alif Hamdan, Stuart Leonard, Stefan Ortelli, Lawrence Van Tor, and Robin Frines. A very select group of racing drivers have won this. And now three more names are going to be added to the list in about two minutes' time. Out of the final turn comes the number 18, Absolute Audi. And after a long and grueling battle, Marcus Winkelhock, the only Grand Prix driver in history to lead the only race he ever started, is going to come through and win his first Sipang 12 hours victory. He's got to keep it going for the final lap of this race. 16.1 seconds is the gap back to Christopher Haase, who is going to miss out on his third victory in the Sipang 12 hours this time. But what a result for the team. First and second. They're going to have an absolute field day in the press tomorrow. And in this sport, this is very much an Audi opportunity as well here in Malaysia. The sport of GT racing still very much subscribes to the policy of win on Sunday, sell on Monday. They'll be able to promote on Sunday because obviously the race is going to conclude. Well, no, technically speaking, it is going to go midnight. It has just gone midnight. So they will technically win on Sunday and sell on Monday. It's midnight in Kuala Lumpur. And Audi are about to take yet another scalp in the GT3 sports car racing world. Not just the win, but second as well in the rejuvenated, revived Sipang 12 hours. The start of something pretty special. And name me another sports car race that has gone through the motions with five teams legitimately gunning for the victory in the overall class, three teams legitimately going for the victory in the amateur class, all the way through with no code 60s, no yellow flags, no safety cars, no big accidents. That is astonishing. It is a credit to the guys and girls at top speed, a credit to the marshals and the safety teams here at Sepang International Circuit and the sport of endurance racing as a whole. They are the best winners of this incredible, incredible race. And as Marcus Winkerhock gets into the braking zone for the last time in the hairpin, he's going to run out wide, but he's going to enjoy it and savor the moment. Absolute Racing are the absolute winners of the Sepang 12 Hours 2023. An amazing result. Victory goes the way of Absolute Racing. And it's a second place for the Be Quick car as well. They celebrate in style as Christopher Haase charges his way back to second. What a result for the team. It's been a long time coming, the return to Sepang for this incredible race. Boy, was it worth the wait. Congratulations to the EBM Giga Racing team in third. Reed Harker bringing the car home. But full credit to his teammates, Adrian De Silva and Nazim Asman. They have absolutely earned this. What a finish. What a terrific result. And in the AM category, the AAI Motorsports team have taken the victory with the BMW of Tanad Satantirakul coming home for the win. Second place is still being debated on the last lap. But if Andre Heimgartner, the Kiwi, can just hold on on this last lap in front of Francis Jai. It is going to be the AMAC Motorsport team in front of the Moderna Motorsport squad. The Porsches will come home together. But it looks to me as though it's going to be Andre Heimgartner who will bring the Antipodean car home in second position in front of the boys from Hong Kong. We're waiting for them to come through. The anticipation is very eager here on the pit wall. And we can hear them as they come out of the final turn. There is the R&B Racing Lamborghini coming home. In fourth position, that is Ye Hung Lee. Fourth place for the team. Fifth place for the Kraft Bamboo Mercedes. They've already come through. But now here come the Porsches. Second and third, it is Andre Heimgartner who hangs on in front of Francis Jaya. And the final car to cross the finish line is going to be the MFM Motorsport Silver Rocket. The only cup car in the race. 
and they made it. They will stand the podium. What a race. An incredible display. Not a single safety car, not a single code 60, not a single yellow flag, not a single bent axle, not a single wrecked motor car. 2,475 laps by all participants. 77 pit stops, not a single caution. That is great racing. You couldn't script it. It has to happen. And that is just about the best darn organic sports car race you're ever going to get to see. It wasn't delayed. It wasn't sullied by safety cars or silly driving. Everyone was on their A game. I barely saw a driver put a wheel wrong for the entirety of the eight hours of racing. You can rarely say that. What a resounding success. And to cap it all, a fight that came down to the wire as well in both categories. That's exactly what we wanted, exactly what we hoped for. It's very hard to call a race like that the perfect GT sports car race, but it's darn close. The Absolute Racing Team savor the moment. First and second, welcome to the podium, EBM Giga Racing. A great race. Boy, were we spoiled. An epic race, an epic job. And Marcus Winkelhock, Andrew Harianto, and Yu Kwai become the latest winners of the Sepang 12 hours. A lot of hard work has got into that. And it was a tough old race as the two drivers embrace. Christopher Haase just misses out on Sepang 12 hours win number three. But he'll be back in 2024, I'm sure. Absolute Audi can go bananas. That's the headline shot. That'll be in Daily Sports Car tomorrow. They've done it again. Audi Sport have conquered yet another fabulous sports car classic. But it's very rare to come through with a clean sheet. 215 laps completed in eight hours. Absolutely the maximum that could have been achieved. That's a great effort from everybody in the teams, from everybody in the organizational crew, from the sport in general. As much as we love the excitement and the tension and the nervousness of a safety car period here, there and everywhere, it's genuinely nice to see a race not need one. Nassim Asman, Reid Harker and Adrian De Silva can enjoy a podium, hardly fought. Definitely blessed them. There might be a bit of frustration for Reid Harker, but it's jubilation and relief. And for Nazim, Asman and Adrian De Silva, they get to go to the podium after an epic, epic fight. They took the fight right to the wire and they were only 22.2 seconds off the victory. Not a bad return for the efforts. What a race. Especially when you consider you're going up against the likes of Marcus Winkelhock and Christopher Haase, legends of GT racing over the last 20 years. They've won it all. They've won everything there is to win, pretty much. And yet the boys from EBM Giga were just 22 seconds away from beating them after eight hours. That's pretty special. They'll look back over that with an immense amount of pride and achievement. So it's going to be a fabulous podium ceremony. We'll stick around for it so that they can soak in the moment. A terrific performance and a great display. The teams are down there to savour it all. Aline Wang is down there to speak to our winning teams, our winning drivers. It's going to be a lovely moment to savour for the crew. Here is the provisional result for the Sepang 12 hours. It's a 1-2 for the Absolute Racing crew. Andrew Harianto, Yu Kwai and Marcus Winkelhock take the win. Hank Kicks, Peter Cox and Christopher Haase take the second. Nazim Asman, Reid Harker and Adrian De Silva get third for EBM Giga. Ye Hong Lee, Alec Yazid and Bao Jin Long come home fourth for R&B. And Jeffrey Lee, Liang Jitong and Sandy Stubik in the Craft Bamboo, just a lap away from the top spot. The Harmony Ferrari come home sixth. The Viper Aston come home seventh. Sadly, the AAI BMW 
of Krohn, Klingman and Chen did not finish. In the AM class, it is Betty Chen, Tanat Satin Terakul and Pitti Bidambakti for AAI BMW that take the win. McPherson, Porter and Heimgartner in second and Shen Jia and Kaya in third position. A non-finish, sadly, for the other of the AAI motorsport cars. And Chan Sai Wai and Li Jia, along with Sean Thong, brought the car home for the victory after completing 197 laps. So close to the 200. But what a performance from all. No silly crashes, no silly shenanigans out on the course. Just pure racing. After midnight, the boys and girls of the Sepang 12 Hours have let it all hang out. And what a great race it was. JJ Kale would have been very impressed. Some great battles in the last hour. Obviously, it was always going to be about whether the absolute racing team could hang on to it. The leaders didn't have it all their own way. They really had to work through the traffic and through their own shortcomings. It was not easy to navigate and negotiate their way through. But again, great sportsmanship and great reactions from the back markers to not difficulties for the leaders. But the gap came down all the time until Marcus Winkelhoff was just 16 seconds ahead of their closest rivals. But the final hour, very quick Christopher Haase having to work so hard to close up on the Kiwi, Reed Harker. And then knowing that he was always going to find it incredibly tough to get past him. Reed Harker certainly made him work for it. Certainly gave him no reason to suspect he was going to be, have it easy. And despite going through the traffic pretty quickly, the battle really raged. And it was one of the most iconic images that GT racing can ever give you. Side by side, at night in Sepang. Reed Harker and Christopher Haase almost spent half a lap side by side. But the big moment the one that's going to stand in the memory. And if there was a photographer down there, this is going on both drivers' walls. Haase and Harker on the lock stops at the limit. At the Genting curve. That's what racing's all about. They kept it clean, they gave each other room, and they both get to take trophies on the podium. But it's an absolute racing one-two in fantastic fashion. Marcus Finkelhock, Yu Kwai, and Anthony Harrianto will be the men who stand on the top spot here in Sepang. We had to wait seven years for the 12 hours to come back. We love doing so, and so did motorsport. It may be after midnight, it may be late, but sports car racing has absolutely won the day here in Malaysia. And everybody is going to say the same thing, quality over quantity. That is the headline of the Sepang 12 Hours 2023. Victories in the AM category for AAI Motorsports and in the Cup for FM Motorsports Silver Rocket. But what a race. That's the real thing to take away from this. The race couldn't have been any better than it was. We had everything that we wanted and nothing that could have ruined it. Bang 12 hours ends in an absolute racing 1-2 for the Audis and the EBM Giga Porsche in third. But boy, did we have a lot of laughs along the way. Truly great sports car racing and a truly great battle that went down to the wire. Never give up, never say die. Never give anything less than your best because you never know how it's going to end. That's the moral of the Sabang 12 hours 2023. And we are delighted to see how it's all played out. So as I said before, we're going to stick around for the podium ceremony. It's been quite a fantastic night of racing. It took us a little bit of time to get to it. Myself and Sean Henshawood did our best test match special impersonations earlier on. as We had a good hour and a half of waiting for the action to kick off. But even that had its fabulous moments. As we were able to really give you a, a flavour of what it is that has been going on in the region since COVID-19, since the last time the race ran, it's been a lot of hard work from a lot of people, many of whom are not going to get the credit for all of the hard work they've done, but they've been instrumental and influential 
in bringing this race back to Sepang and giving us great entertainment for 215 laps. The absolute maximum that we could have got from this race. Not a single yellow flag, not a single code 60, not a single safety car. I cannot believe it. You wait years and years for what they call in the in, in the business the perfect game. That is exactly what we got tonight. 2,475 laps completed by every car, all collectively. From the 13 cars that started, 77 visits to the pit lane. Betty Chen gets to take a class victory as well. Great to see that once again, sports car racing really does give you an even playing field between men and women. And not a single Code 60 FCY or safety car. Just astonishing. I wouldn't have believed that possible. So it's wonderful that not only has it been possible, but we've done it tonight. The absolute magic race. Sepang 12 Hours 2023 is going to be remembered and talked about a lot by the people who were involved and the people who saw it. Sports car racing in Malaysia is back. And next year, mark my words, it's going to be bigger and better than ever before. Wonderful to see racing at this level returning in fantastic fashion here in Kuala Lumpur. It's gone midnight and still there is a buzz, there is an excitement, there is an anticipation that this is just the beginning of the second Asian motorsport revolution. COVID-19 may have stopped it in its tracks, but we are right back on the railway line, gathering speed. The future is looking pretty rosy. Ask some of the European and American counterparts to put on a race like that without a single interruption by full course yellow or safety car. With the driving standards being as great as they have been, with the racing being as thrilling and exciting and down to the wire as it's been, I dare you, you won't manage it. That's going to go down in history, I think. And to right, every single person that's going to make their way to the podium has absolutely thoroughly deserved it, driven out of their skin and barely put a wheel wrong all day and all night. That's quite a, an amazing thing to be able to say, isn't it? No silly drivers, no stupid mistakes, just an out and out thrash for the win. I genuinely can't remember the last time I saw a race like that. So the pit lane is obviously going to ring out to the sounds of celebration here on the main straight at Kuala Lumpur. Keep an eye on the social media channels for the Sepang 12 hours because I'm sure you'll get plenty of reaction and you'll get plenty of uh, conversations with drivers and teams alike. And of course, there'll be a build up to the 2024 event. And as one journalist rightly coined, this race has been about quality over quantity. We may have only had 13 cars on the grid, but you know what? Every single one of those teams came to fight, came to battle, and gave nothing less than 110%. Wonderful. That's what motorsport should be about, day in, day out. So we're going to move on to the podium ceremony. We'll stick around for that. Thank you very much indeed to all of you for watching, especially those of you who have been with us since the kickoff. It's been an absolutely fabulous race battle. I'm sure you've all enjoyed it as much as we have. Chris Miller says, God bless, awesome race. Too right. Doesn't matter who you were cheering for in this one. It was absolutely sensational. Derek Moe pointing out he was at Sepang Circuit during sunset and as night came down, the M4 GD3 sounded great down the pit lane. Yes, it did. They all did. And this is a sound that many people watching here today may not have been familiar with. I'm hoping there's a brilliant new generation of drivers and race fans that have come and seen this race. And it's hopefully the start of something quite special. Now, we start talking about these sort of things 
in retrospect as you wait for a podium ceremony to get underway. Driver of the day is a subject that comes up a lot. I'm going to put a vote out for Nazim Asnam. Third position in the EBM Giga Racing Porsche. A lot of pressure on his shoulders to let this slip away. And I think a lot of their podium can come down to his exemplary performance this weekend. A home driver stepping out of his comfort zone of single seaters and being expected to deliver. And he and the crew managed to bring the car just 22 seconds away from the win against a dominant force like the Absolute Racing Audi team. That's got a lot of credit written all over it. So I'm going to stick my neck out on the line and say if I could give driver of the day to anybody, it would be to Nazim Asnam. I think a very close second would probably be Betty Chen. All of the pressure of leading the AM class, of guiding and coaxing that team through. And she held her nerve to prove yet again, as so many women are proving over these last four or five seasons, that women are just as good at driving racing cars as men. In some cases, particularly for Betty Chen, they're better. And it's a wonderful result. All round, actually, in both categories, I think the right teams won, but the right teams got to the podium as well. It's a great duel, a great battle throughout. And wonderful to see that the AM category really did go down to the wire for a second. Andre Heimgartner was only a second ahead of Francis Jaya at the finish line. So the Porsches really did push themselves to the absolute limit. So we're going to get to see the podium ceremony. Obviously, there's three classes to come onto the podium, so there's a lot to do. But it's going to be great to welcome everybody onto the rostrum and it will be a wonderful start to the celebrations here in Sepang which will probably go on well into tomorrow for the winning crews and then as motor racing always does it will sleep briefly and then the plans will rock on for 2024 the teams that saw this and went I want a piece of that they'll already be putting their entry together they'll already be ringing drivers we need the best of the best to win in the Sepang 12 hours can you join us? It's going to be a great race next year. And I thoroughly and eagerly anticipate double the cars on the grid and the full length of 12 hours completed. The logistical challenge of bringing this race back, considering what's been hitting this part of the world for the last three years through a worldwide pandemic. There have been so many obstacles to leap through, so many hurdles to jump over so much red tape so much bureaucracy so many difficulties to make a race like this happen people have no idea how hard it is particularly with it being gt endurance racing but this was a win for the sport we did it well, the podium ceremony about to kick off and get underway as the teams are being welcomed out onto the podium. Third position for Adrian De Silva, Nazim Asman, and Reid Harker, the EBM In Giga Racing place, team from Malaysia. Car number 26. Standing on the podium at their home Pancakes, event. Peter Cox and right. Christopher Haas from Be Quick Absolute Racing. Second position. What a fight back. From Big Big Absolute, Hank Kicks, Peter Cox, and Christopher Haase. Not quite win number three, Chris. You're going to have to wait for next year. But what a fight! And back. the winner, car and what number a 18. mammoth charge to get Andrew back in his second Hakanto, position. Marcus, but the winners Absolute of the 2023 Sepang 12 Hours step forward: Yuquai, Andrew Harrianto, and Marcus Minkelhock. Yet and another trophy to add to the collection for Marcus. And just the first of many for Kwai and Andrew. A great result for the team. And we will hear the national anthem of the winning crew.
The national anthem of Hong Kong rings out over the Sepang 12 hours podium. And now we ask our dignitaries to come forward. John Hong Sik, the managing director of HK Motorsport, presents the trophy to third position. Fabulous day for this fabulous team that really took the fight to the big boys. EBM Giga Racing, enjoying the moment. And a fabulous, fabulous display, a great performance. And hopefully the first of many for them in 2023. And now the Chief Marketing Officer of Moto Asia Pacific, Mr. Carlo Savoca, will come forward to give the trophy to the second place crew at Be Quick Absolute Racing for Chris, Henk, and of course Peter. What a great performance from the three men. Had a great result. And finally, on this podium, we invite Tan Sri Asman Yaya, the chairman of the Sepang International Circuit, who will Asman present Asman the trophy the to the winners to and the team the representatives. And team representative. Great to welcome Tan Sri Asman Yaya, chairman of SIC. And a very fitting end to the weekend to present the winning trophy to the winning crew and their winning team manager. To Andrew, to Kwai, and to Marcus, the kings of Sepang. A brilliant result, a fabulous end to a terrific weekend, and the Sepang 12 hours really gave us so many thrills. It was wonderful to see how it played out. And there is your confirmation. Arianto, you and Winkelhock. Guys. Kicks Cox and Haza, and Asmund de Silva and Harker. And now the boys get to celebrate in style on the podium and get busy with a busy. What a way to bow out. Here at the bank. The party will begin long into the night here at the bank. We'll stick around for the podium ceremony for the GT3 Am and the GT Cup as well. They deserve just as much credit as the overall winners. Fabulous, fabulous work. And Audi 1-2, Porsche in third. As Audi come home with their third victory in the Sepang 12 hours. To become the second most successful manufacturer ever to do so. They won in 2015, they won in 2016, and they win in 2023. Their third consecutive win at this event, despite a seven-year absence. They are still the kings of Sepang. Can anybody beat them in 2024? You'll have to tune in next time to find out. Okay, okay, okay. But there will be plenty of cars and teams to try and take them on next year for sure. What a terrific performance. And what a great battle. 22.214 seconds covered the top three cars after eight hours. Beat that, universe. A terrific end to a fabulous weekend in the GT3 category. But we will now welcome the podium ceremony for the GT3 AM category as well. And it's been a very successful time for them. Three great teams. Covered at the end by a minute and 45 seconds. But a great battle all the way to the line. Just as worthy of respect and appreciation as in the overall category. So once again, the podium ceremony will ring out over this fabulous circuit at Sepang. And three more crews will make their way forward. The three crews that gave us so much entertainment... And after eight hours, again, they all finished on the same lap. That is absolutely astonishing. Now let's welcome the top three winners of GT3. Terrific racing, Plus. fantastic battles In all the way through. Is car number two, and now we get to soak up the John moment Shen, with those three Chia crews as well. Christian Chia representing Modena Motorsports. Third position.
John Shen, Christian Kaya, and Francis Jaya. The Moderna Porsche. A brilliant battle for the crew from Hong Kong. They led in the early stages. They had their chance to win, but they gave as good as they got all the way to the finish line. In second place, car number 51. Andrew Here McPherson, comes the Antipodeans. Andrew, Andrew Henry Henry Heimgart, 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 representing Ben Porter and Andrew McPherson. Bringing it right the way through to the end. McPherson, Porter and Heimgartner, second position in the Sepang 12 hours. He's going for the champagne early by the look of it. And the winner from but what a fabulous result. As we welcome Chen, to the podium the team from Chinese Taipei. Representing AI. Donat Sutton Trakal, Piti Berambati and Chen Yinyu. Fabulous result. As Betty Chen will take her way to the top step of the podium and we will hear a national anthem you don't hear too much in the international world of motorsport Chinese Taipei will ring out over the podium here in Sepang Coming through to take the victory. Very much in the spirit of the recent Chinese movie, Chi Zha Feng Yun, where the fabulous Taiwanese actress Hannah Quinlevin played the lead role and showcased women being as fast as men in the world of sports car racing. So our dignitaries return to the podium once again. Mr. Carlos Savoca, the Chief Marketing Officer for Motor Asia Pacific, presenting the trophy to the third place crew. John Hong Sik, the Managing Director of HK Motorsport, presenting the trophy to the crew in second position. A fabulous performance from the two crews that took it right to the line in the battle for B2. The two Porsche crews doing a great job. And now we get to invite Ajahn Shaframan Hanif, the Chief Executive Officer of Sepang International Circuit to present the trophy to the three winners of a fantastic race here. Piti Birambakti, Donat Satyan Tirakul, and Betty Chen. The crew from Chinese Taipei soak up the spoils here in Sepang 12 hours. It's a big moment in Chen Yin Yu's career. Likewise for Piti and Tanart. Everybody look here, please. And this is going to go down in history. BMW triumphs in the AM category in front of the two Porsche crews. And they get to savor this in style, Sipang style. Let the party begin on the podium in the AM category now as the team celebrate the spoils of victory. A great performance, a great result. And I'm sure they'll all be back in 2024 to do it all over again. A great end to a fabulous fight. A magnificent end in Sepang. 12 hours was always going to be a tough race. It was always going to be an epic battle. But the crews really have entertained us royally in, I can't believe I'm saying this, the perfect eight-hour sports car race with no safety cars, no full-course yellows, no code 60s, not even a proper spin or an accident. They just got on with the job of racing. The perfect, flawless sports car race. Well done, top speed. 
Well done to all 13 crews. Well done to the Sepang International Circuit. I doubt that's ever going to be replicated in quite that manner ever again. The perfect motor race. I would have thought it was absolutely impossible. And that's exactly what we got. And with that, you would think, well, if there were no spins, there were no incidents, there were no crashes, there were no safety cars, and there were only 13 cars on the grid, it would have been a dull race. Not even close. Properly exciting all the way through. And a nail-biting finish where the top three crews in the pro category were separated by less than 25 seconds. And in the AM category, second place went down to the wire. Absolutely unbelievable. There's just going to be one presentation left, and that is for the Seoul GT Cup crew. But they deserve the accolades. It is a class. It is a category of racing. They brought their car to get to the finish. All they had to do to win was bring it to the finish. And that looked pretty shaky at times, I can tell you. The car had it stood up several times. But never give up is the motto of racing. And for Chan Sai Wai, Li Jia and Sean Tong, the crew from China, managed to come through with a victory. And in deference to the team, we will hear the Chinese national anthem. So to finish us off, Mr. Davide de Gobi, the general manager of Top Speed Shanghai Limited, will present the trophies to our winning crew in the GT Cup class. What a fantastic end to a brilliant day of racing here in the Sepang 12 hours. The motorsport fans of Malaysia have waited seven years for this race to return. Who would have thought that not only would we have such a competitive, such an exciting, such a spellbinding battle despite the low numbers. Quality over quantity reigns supreme here. And we had a fabulous day at the races. A third victory for Audi, a class win for BMW, a lady winner in the AM category as well. And a nail biting finish between the three crews in the pro category that gave us three cars across the line in the space of 25 seconds. The Sepang 12 hours 2023 has been a resounding success. They fought back from the tyranny and the trials of COVID-19. Motorsport in Malaysia is back, it's big, and it's brash. Next year is going to be better still, and we can't wait for it. My congratulations to all of the winning crews. A massive thank you to CTVS, who have been fantastic at providing the coverage as always. To my co-commentator and partner in crime here, Sean Henshawood, and for myself, Jake Sanson, we hope you've enjoyed the coverage of the Sepang 12 Hours 2023. Can we do it all again next year, please? I hope so. Bye for now. <laughs>